my lovely, lovely imps, today we are doing a very special debate review. We are going to be debating a, wait, we are going to be reviewing a debate, the great start. We are going to be reviewing a debate between two friends of the channel, Vosh and TJ Kirk. As you all know, I am friends with Vosh and I am friends with TJ Kirk. I like both of them quite a lot. However, both of them got involved in an incredibly, incredibly intense debate. Now, I saw only some of this debate, um, and I was very distracted when it was on. So I basically, in my mind, was like, I need to watch this with my chat. And part of the reason why we need to watch it is because the Biden voting discussion is going to be dominating our lives next year. And I'm not looking forward to it. I really, really am not. But it's better to get ourselves familiarized with the concept and the arguments in advance so that it can be easier on all of us. Also, a lot of you are likely to have similar conversations with your family members over the upcoming holidays. So why don't we uh, take some time thinking about this in the, while having a good time? This debate does indeed get silly at points. However, I think that a lot of it is fairly emblematic of the type of debates you can expect to be having in the coming year. Election year 2024 is going to be a nightmare, okay? I need you all to recognize that and acknowledge that in advance. Um, it is uh, undeniably going to be uh, anxiety-inducing because in all likelihood it's going to be Biden versus Trump again, and it's going to be a Trump that uh, is basically in Joker mode. And by that, I mean that um, he is being chased by a whole bunch of uh, criminal and civil lawsuits because of the behavior that he has undertaken through the entire rest of his life. Um, and he basically wants to take over the presidency, the presidency so badly because then he'll be able to more or less pardon himself of the things that he's in trouble for. And of course... Uh, Republicans have not been doing particularly well electorally, so they are desperate to take control of a uh, executive position because they are uh, suffering right now in the legislature. They are suffering um, everywhere except for red stronghold states, and even in red stronghold states, they are struggling to maintain their power. Um, so they're desperate. What they want is a... A Trump victory so that they can use his executive power to screw up a bunch of stuff all over again. And what that means is that um, the, the Democratic Party is unlikely to consider anybody except for the one who they believe has the highest likelihood of winning, which is Joe Biden, who's an incumbent. And as we all know, Joe Biden is currently not performing particularly well in the polls. It's also possible that that continues to be the case going into 2024. All of that considered, 2024 is going to be a nightmare. We, being politically involved people, need to be prepared. So without any further ado, let us enjoy, as best as we can, a review of the debate between TJ Kirk and Vosh and see what we can pull out of it together. All right? If you're ready for this, make sure that you slam the like button down below, whether you're watching live right with me now or watching this as a video in the future. Thank you for watching. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, I better update the text, huh? Vosh versus the amazing atheist TJ Kirk. It's funny that some people still know him so much as the Amazing Atheist and other people know him primarily as TJ Kirk now. I think that's kind of fascinating. Let's continue. For them. Want the world to get better, you do the work between the elections and during the election you make the best choice and then you get your ass back to work. You, like me, spend a- Oh yeah, um, Paul's ego is also uh, deeply involved in this debate as we are going to find out. I should have mentioned that. Um, but uh, I don't know Paul's ego as well. And also, look, we'll find out when we get there, okay? Paul's ego's in here. It's not really him debating TJ. Remember how I said at the beginning of this 
that I only watched part of the debate? Well, the part that I watched was mostly him debating with TJ and then a little bit of him debating Paul's ego. So a lot of this is going to be fresh to me. And if I have to change it, then we'll change it to Paul's ego. Let's continue. A lot of our time whining online, that's our jobs. But the difference between you and me is that I don't think I'm special for my abstentiousness from the process that other people have lived and died and bled for, trying to build a world comfortable enough that we could be dipshits in a computer chair. Woo! Rapti, thank you so much. Sorry for missing that. Rapti, thank you for the two gifted tier one subs. Deeply appreciate that. I will check that out when I can. Thank you so much. Deeply appreciate that. Let's go. I try to keep my nose out of drama unless I'm directly implicated in it. And I keep hearing people sort of like foretelling, you know, like the, the yeah. church bell tolls. What's what's happening here? What's going so on? So I've, I've done a lot of introspection over the last couple of days because I've been I've been I've been accused of having a real bad case of the VDS. So this is Paul's ego talking. That's the voice you're hearing right now. But and I, I do. think, well, you, here's the thing. That's, that's I, here's the thing. I think what I actually have is VFDS. I've got Vosh fan base derangement <laughs> syndrome, which uh, I think is- Oh, I've got that too. That's a whole <laughs> different ball of wax. You know uh -oh. what I mean? Fortnite says, I think this includes a conversation that isn't really a debate for the first 30 minutes or so. That's okay. That's all right. We'll listen to it. Because, you know, you and I haven't talked in like two years or something. And every f show I do, there are still people reminding me that you handed me my ass two years ago, Vosh. You grabbed my ass, put it on a silver platter, flipped it around and handed it right to me. Two years later. But the people in my in. audience really like Biden, okay? It's it's Wait, they're, they're, they they're fanboys. What did they debate on two years ago? Does anybody know? Uncle Gumball says, speaking of which, have another talk with TJ. I am looking forward to that. I hope that I will be able to. I will be uh, probably reaching out to TJ in uh, once past, past the holidays because I would love to sit down and have a talk with TJ. Oh, specifically about electoralism, the same topic. Oh, boy. Wow, Hannah, thank you so much. Hannah gave a $20 super chat. Dono on behalf of Ron's KFC. If there's a charity they would prefer, I can send money there too. I had an inherited windfall. That's wonderful. Congratulations, Hannah, and thank you for sharing a little bit of it with us. Deeply appreciate Not even a little bit, a decent amount. Thank you so much. Their previous debate was whether Biden was worth voting for. Paul claimed Biden would never pull out of Afghanistan, if I remember correctly. Wah, wah, wah. All right, let's continue. It's not even for me, okay? They're just running around proselytizing. Didn't even give you a reach around, Paul. Dumb, man. How it goes, though. That's how it goes. By the way, um, it's hard for me to tell how the audio balance is, so if my voice is, like, too quiet and the debate is too loud, please tell me so I can fix it earlier rather than later. Thank you. Um, I think it boils down to the same old song and dance, honestly. To be, to be, to be, uh you know to to set aside the jokes i think it's the vote blue no matter who thing i think it's uh the kind of making uh apologies for biden thing i think it's the that that kind of angle i think is probably our sharpest disagreement well the real base position is not making apologies for his bad behavior but then arguing you have to vote for him anyway right that's like that's the that's the real like electoralism pilled there is no way out this is what we live with uh attitude to take towards the situation yeah i don't like that either um i i i don't i don't like the idea of us just eternally settling for a shitty neoconservative and neoliberal clothing i don't like that i don't think that gets us anywhere nice i think it might stave off some of the worst shit for a couple more years but I think we end up in the same toilet. No. I I stand by the logic. Fundamentally, nothing has really changed. If there are only two possible options, you have to go with the better of the two. Obviously, like, rhetorically speaking, I'm not exactly thrilled to be doing anything that even... So... 
I am, I think right off the bat that that, that argument right there is fairly straightforwardly obvious. Now, I'm interested to see exactly where Paul's ego is going to take this. Because again, I listen for mostly to the part with TJ Kirk. Something that I encounter a lot in electoralism debates is, um, interestingly, that people, oops, that people get trapped in the electoral frame. And me being somebody who is an anti-electoralist, not anti-voting, but an anti-electoralist, meaning that I don't think that you should make the center of your politics elections, that I think that's a very foolish uh, position to take, um, I would argue that, uh, yes, fundamentally, you only really have two options, and it is rational, if, it, if you can, to reduce the harm by voting for the lesser of two evils. Um, and when electoralist people respond by saying, well, don't you mean that's going to get us stuck with the neoliberal every single time if you're always willing to vote for them? My response is always, you're stuck with them anyway. That's not changing. Until you break out of electoralism as a center, as a centerpiece of your politics, you will, you will never be able to begin considering how we can change that particular situation. And the reason for that is that um, the political machines that power America, they they don't rely on uh, your you personally participating in the electoral process, um, except in that they just need people to be to be convinced to participate. But the Democratic Party has no problem finding volunteers. The Republican Party has no problem finding volunteers. So those machines are chugging away whether or not you personally decide to vote or not. Um, you deciding not to vote for that um, is meaningless, more or less. What bugged me about this discussion, uh, self-loathing egomaniac says, what, what, what bugged me about this discussion and every discussion like this is no discussion of politics outside of the electoral system. Well, let's find out if that happens. Sounds like defending Biden right now because of what he's doing with regards to the genocide in, um, in, uh, in, in Palestine. Right. So it's not, this isn't exactly like a period of time during which I'm going to go out there and, and proselytize and wave banners around and, you know, shoot t-shirt cannons with Biden's face on it into the crowd. Uh, not the time for that. Okay, a uh, small thing that I have to say. I felt really, I, I, <laughs> I felt a, a moment of like secondhand cringe when like Vosh made this little video on Twitter where he got, he got, he ironically got one of those, uh, those, uh, color changing dark Brandon mugs where when you put the hot water in, uh, you know, Biden turns into dark Brandon, which come on. Okay. That's kind of funny. Listen, I can get appreciating the meme. Um, and then he, he posted it as like an ironic giga support of Biden. And it was going around like right before, uh, like, and I, I even saw it like, right before all this shit went down with Biden. And oh man, it looks, it, it must feel so embarrassing in retrospect. I mean, I'm sure it's not a big deal, but like still I felt like, oh man, if I did like, imagine if I did like an ironic pro Biden thing right before the whole Israel Palestine, oh, it's just oof, bad timing. Oh, I know it's like, it was actually, I think it actually happened a little earlier, but still, still. More probably going to focus on tearing down the GOP, you know, but ultimately, like, isn't it, isn't it time now, isn't it time now more than ever to do that though? I mean, Biden's numbers are tanking, right? Uh, yeah, he's, he's pulled up even and, and is a lot of polls is losing to Trump. He's losing horribly to generic Democrat, which is like one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my lifetime. <laughs> it, the polling's not good. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people think it is because everyone who is going to vote for Trump thinks positively of him, at least most do. Whereas there are lots of people who don't very much like this Biden is a, who still vote This for is an him. unusual election for the reason that both of these guys are a known quantity, right? And both like rather unpopular. Had a, a helping of both of these dudes as president. So this is an unusual election because we've not been in a situation where we have a choice between real, I mean, America has. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I, I apologize. I didn't even realize there were subtitles. I ha will add them fixed. Thank you. But like in my lifetime, never had a situation where it's like 
hey, do you want this guy who was president or this guy who was just president? It's like, which one do you want a second helping of? And the fact that so many Americans are just like, hey, I'll take a second helping of Trump, please. Seems pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's no getting over there's the, the sheer lack of intelligence of your average voter. I mean, that's definitely sort of an ongoing uh, problem we have to deal with. I mean, in, in, in materially speaking. Also, it's not just a lack of intelligence. It's a lack of um, of of impact and care. Um, most people cannot, for the life of them, um, figure out why they should care about voting. This is a problem all across the country. Um, America has shockingly low voter participation rates, like really low. Like I wonder what it was for the last election. Let's see, let me see if I can find out. Um, in, uh, okay, so this is from Pew Research for 2020 about two thirds of the voting eligible population turned out for the 2020 presidential election, which is was considered a fairly high amount. That means a third of the population just does not care. And that's for a presidential election. It gets even worse for local elections. We're talking like a third of the country just does not care. Um, and part of the reason for that is not just, it's not just stupidity, it's that, um, um, I mean, that is definitely a part of it. There are definitely a lot of people who just don't ever think about like the world that they live in, but a lot of people are just, they're, they're not able to parse any of it. They don't have any access to someone who can make politics make sense to them. They don't know at all how the decisions that they make will impact them. And they feel like they can't know. And I want you to think about this. A lot of us here are particularly invested in politics. Um, but I want you to think about about what it might be like for somebody who's like devoted their life to something else, like somebody who spends all their time working at their job um, and they have to think about that job all the time. And they maybe get politically involved one time and a po politician says, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And then the politician doesn't end up doing any of those things. Or maybe they do, but they never actually hear about it. So they don't know what actually happens. They never feel the impact on their life. It's a huge problem. Um, like disinterested voters is a massive, massive issue. Uh, I just wanted to say that because I think that um, it's a recurring issue that we've been talking about. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. Being like obviously Biden's presidency has been a lot better than Trump's. Um, the the big the big stickler in that has been this business with the genocide of the Palestinian people that he aids and abets, which I mean, there's no defending that. Obviously, Trump would have done the same thing. Trump I mean, has there, been even more loud in the. Uh, hmm? There's been more sticklers, right, than just. Oh yeah, I may have gotten the I may have gotten the stats slightly wrong there, Kiljoy. I apologize. Compulsory voting. I don't know that compulsory voting will help anything, um, especially in a country where we don't have. A, Voting where you can't get time off your work for voting, you would just be penalizing the poorest people. Palestine. Uh, well, that's definitely the main one. But apart from that, it's his presidency has definitely been better than I expected it to be. Certainly not perfect, but you know, from what you get with neoliberal candidates, he's definitely exceeded in some critical areas, mostly with regards to union stuff. I mean, he was doing so well with that, and then we have this. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did get excited uh, with his NLRB, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, protecting unions in a way that we haven't had since the 80s, um, you know, uh, preventing uh, companies from union busting before the union is even ratified. I think that that's a huge deal. Uh, I gave him props for that, for sure. But outside of that, I find very little to crow about when it comes to the Biden presidency. You want to list off some of the wonderful things biden has done i mean he's done a good number of good things mostly because there are good things that are just sensible governance but it's really just a matter of whether or not he's done better than trump which i think is pretty What's easy that? to make the case for considering it's a low bar as well i'm sorry it's a low bar as well yeah it can be all the way down in hell the math doesn't change um 
but yeah, I mean, he he's a competent politician, right? In the sense that he actually cares about governing in, in, a, in a way that Trump and the Republicans don't. So a lot of the stuff that he does that's good is going to be like very baseline stuff. Like, you know, not like keeping the country funded and not gutting the administrative state, like really, really basic stuff like that. But the bar keeps going lower. I mean, with Project, what is it, Project 2025, the, the Republicans just openly admitting they plan on like gutting the democracy from the... Uh, from Kiljoy says, yeah, it's 94% of registered voters turned out in 2020, but we only have about 62% of, of people actually registered. And the number one thing that you can do to flip most states is automatic registration. Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, that was the, the stat that I was pulling from. I wasn't really considering the total registration uh, numbers. I was looking at the number of like eligible voters overall, which is people, which includes people who could have, who could have registered, but didn't. Um, so voter registration is a really complicated topic in the United States, particularly because a lot of states deliberately put, put roadblocks in the way of registering, even though there's no real reason to do that. Um, we've had the technology to cross-reference votes for a very, very long time, making sure that you can't basically double vote. It's very, very difficult. It's extremely difficult to successfully do voter fraud in the United States. Very difficult. Um, and uh, yet some states, for some reason or another, still make it very difficult to... Um, uh, to change your registration or to update it. Some states don't notify you when, it, when you've... Um, when you've uh ex when your registration has expired or if they do they they notify you only by snail mail which you may not have updated with the state so the mail might go to a previous location and a lot of states get this a lot of states in the united states don't have same day voter registration so imagine this you live in a state where um you only get notified by snail mail um that your voter registration expired it goes to your old address. You show up to go vote. Your state doesn't allow same-day voter registration. You wanted to vote. You have the right to vote, but you showed up, and because of a, a bureaucratic, uh, a series of silly but very common bureaucratic errors, you are disenfranchised from your vote. That's an incredibly common occurrence in, in America. Um, and it has two effects. One, that person's vote is not counted. And two, they're discouraged from ever participating in the process in the future because it's an enraging and arbitrarily frustrating experience. Arachnoid points out a lot of places purge voter rolls, making people have to re-register without them knowing the registration changed. Yep, and if you don't have same-day registrations, you're screwed. Thank you. Okay, hold on one second. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to check this. Dan Folk with the $10 super chat. Thank you so much. I just got home, so I'm going to spend some time with my husband, but I'll watch this review later. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good time. Let's continue. From the administrative state, once they get the chance to, in, in yeah, the face of stuff like nation. that. Yeah. That's not new though. I mean, they've been they, they've been talking about that since I was a boy. That's like their 900 page manifesto of like, hey, uh, everything you know. Yeah, that's the don't show up to the administrative state tomorrow. Um, you you've been cool. Don't show up. Uh, manifesto that they wrote. Yeah, I mean they they've always threatened to do stuff like this. Bitched about the administrative state. Seems like they've been a lot more aggressive about it lately. But no sense in giving them the opportunity to prove to us whether or not they mean it this time. Um. I do have kind of an inch, uh, a hypothetical question I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's a little bit out there, but um, maybe it's not too crazy because uh, we've seen some polls where um, RFK Jr. is polling at like 22% in one poll. Most polls is like 10, 12%. So obviously you could be at that, uh, you know, you could be at 20% and still not get a single electoral college vote. Right. But um I wondered if if there was a point where his candidacy became um, like he had an actual path. Um, would you then have to look at uh, this three way race and pick the lesser of three evils, or are you still just automatically for Biden? Well, I mean, if if RFK Jr. was better than Biden, he's not. I mean, he's 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 I terrible. Mean, I, I think but... it's arguable because I mean, I think RFK Jr. is a crazy lunatic anti-vaxxer just as just as pro-israel as the rest of them 
So he's got a lot of, you know, severe issues. But there's also some stuff that, I, I mean, he's, like, pretty based on. So I don't know. Um, I'd have to kind of weigh it out. Well, like what? What What could he, what is he better on than Biden? Um, Let me just pull up his uh, page, I guess. Like he oh, his web page sucks. It's really funny. RFK's um, RFK's website directly contradicts things that he said um, on basically every public appearance that he's ever had. But let's continue. He says stuff like that, but a lot of the stuff that he said... Um... <laughs> Bisadu says, RFK Jr. said uh, that COVID was a bioweapon. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. It's ridiculous. Hilarious. Um, yeah, RFK is a giant joke. Um, yeah. Uh, like at rallies and when talking to people publicly, has well, wildly I mean, differed every, from his... That's every his vaccine policy is going is right. to be about the same as Trump's, or worse. You, you could say the so, same about Biden, too. I mean, Biden well, Biden ran on a $15 minimum wage. Biden ran on a bunch of, you know, uh, ending the border crisis. Those I think there's a, talking a, a points of pretty his critical difference where, like, there's lots of, like, every politician will well, say you know they'll what? do things. Let's just... Uh, RFK Jr. is not really important. Let's just take him out of it. Let's just say there was a, but there's a, there's a third party person that rises to the level where they could win. Would it then be lesser of three evils? That's yeah, if they had a shot at winning, I suppose. The, I mean, the problem is because we don't we, we don't have ranked choice voting, so it, sure. it's insanely risky. Even if there was a really really good shot um, of trying to push a third party candidate, because obviously if the third party candidate's good enough to me that I would consider voting for them, they'd have to be a left leaning, which means they'd cipher. This is a circumstance that actually led to my home state of Maine to adopt ranked choice voting. Um, there was an independent um, candidate uh, who was incredibly successful, and he was poised. He, he was polling um, such that it looked like he was going to win the election. And basically a month or so before, um, before the election happened, um the 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 democrat uh the the sort of mainstream democrat who was running uh had basically put all of his team towards contacting all of the sponsors for the independent candidate and ba basically being like oh you guys if you guys don't back me if you guys keep backing this independent you're going to get stuck with the republican and he's going to damage your business interests here in the state and he did that to basically all of um all of his uh his his sponsors and all of his backers to the degree that he poached really bad now um that democrat uh ended up barely squeaking out a victory over the republican and then ended up ultimately failing in the long run against the republican and the independent got burned so bad that he basically devoted his entire life to campaigning for uh, a change to uh, ranked choice voting and there were enough people who were so pissed off by that because he was a popular candidate um, that uh, the state ended up uh, successfully putting in ranked choice voting. However, that is a very, very, very unlikely outcome given the way that national elections work. We have never seen a third party candidate come close to the popularity of either of the two of the big of the two major parties. So it's kind of a, a, a fantasy scenario. We have never been able to see that happen. No one's been able to been able to pull it off. Even really, really popular candidates haven't been able to pull it off. It might now what I think might happen is that if enough states implement ranked choice voting, the the literacy about what ranked choice voting is might spread throughout the United States and might make for a possible change uh uh to the the national elections but i feel like we're a ways away from that and in the meantime we have to deal with the playing field as it is more votes from the dems um i i feel like in this system it's almost impossible to get an outcome like that but i guess hypothetically if the math worked out that would probably be preferable to just like touting the two-party thing don't you feel like there's like a um like a certain risk in creating a standard for democrats no higher than just like be better than the opposition um like long term don't you think that produces worse and worse candidates and hurts the party in the long run well i think the problem is that it it really hasn't produced worse and worse candidates we've been a two-party system for centuries effectively with very minor exceptions 
And uh, the trends that have dictated like better or worse governorship don't seem to be like, it, it doesn't seem to be just like a downward plummet. I don't, I don't actually think that like, the, I don't think the politicians are that motivated by the prospect of winning. Like non-participation doesn't seem to motivate Democrats in the ways that we want it to. If left-leaning people indicate that we're not reliable voters, they'll just move to the right to pick up more moderate voters, which is historic. Which is what they do anyway. Um, that's not a result even of the left. Like you can't even blame the left for that. Um, um, the Democrats have a vested interest to do that because... Um, a lot of rich people happen to be right leaning and there are some rich people who are center right and the democratic party wants to scoop them by basically appealing to them um even when it's uh, dangerous to their own votes and so what they do is they make a gamble they go ooh well we'll do we'll do like center right politics so that we can get all of the the campaign donations and we know that because it's a two party system the lefties will have to vote for us no matter what um, again, electoralism will never be your answer because it's a, uh, uh, the electoral, uh, gameplay is cucked out of the favor of anybody who doesn't want to just continually perpetuate right-leaning politics. ...what they've done. When they feel like they don't have any chance of capturing the more active populist left-wing crowd, they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll never please those guys, when, to be fair, we are pretty unpleasable. So we're going to try and, like, pull over the centrist voters, the moderate voters. So you get, like, like Clinton, for example, right? Where after, um, after, after Reagan and, and, uh, Bush Sr., they're like, okay... Oh, well man, Chad, what the fuck? Holy shit, Chad is already ripping each other just sh shreds. Okay... First off, um, this is a contentious topic. Don't be psychotic. Secondly, if you're going to put your opinion in chat, there's a likelihood that your opinion is going to get responded to, and there might be people who have different opinions than you. So keep that in mind. Can you guys fucking... Can you guys fucking keep it real? Realize there's other people fucking watching, too? Nuts says, I was accused of stalking because I pushed back. Okay, well, that's a little crazy. All right, that's a little much, okay? That's a little much. This has been going on for maybe 15 minutes. That's because, you motherfuckers. That's what you mean. What do you it's mean? 15 minutes. We haven't even been watching this for 15 minutes. Okay, actually, we have. Um. All right, all right. Oh, okay. All right. It started a bit before you started it, though. Okay, that's fair. All right, let's fucking continue this, or else we're going to be here all night. Let's go. I'm literally doing timestamps. You can't lie to me about the time. All right, true. It has been a while. All right. Continue, continue te tearing each other to shreds, but do it in a slightly more polite way. Way okay, let's go. Well, you know the the anti-war advocacy movement has basically died down. The boomers are all in like middle management corporate jobs. There isn't an active engaged. Puerto Rican musician says every time I come in here, they harass me without engaging. Literally every time, and I ask them to stop. What is that true? Mods. Okay, here's the rule: you two don't engage with each other. For the rest of the stream okay you two just you two specifically all right mods uh anybody who's here and in mods uh bring up their chat logs and find out if that's the case if that's the case uh then then i'll then you can send that to me in the discord mod casual but uh until then just don't talk to each other now let's continue left to appeal to the cold war is like ending so there's not there's not even that so like who do we appeal to to win and clinton was like oh well we'll we'll just do reagan's economic policies but you know we'll smile about it and we'll be like slightly less homophobic and racist but and that we know works a, we know there's a, a ton of like very like there are things where the america uh, the american people are not lockstep with the american left but like there's a lot of very populist leftist economic policies that poll well that Bernie Sanders was taking advantage of in, during his campaigns to tremendous effect. So I think there is ways to bring people in, but it it seems to involve, you know, doing more actual- Wait, Bernie is a perfect example of, of, of what I was talking about though. Bernie, he did, Bernie did everything right and they still indicted him. Bernie was in the Democratic Party 
and rep and had incredible popularity within the Democratic Party. But the Democratic Party machinery moved to t to take him out because Bernie threatened the Democratic Party's current status quo, which is that they're able to get a lot of money from people who don't support Bernie's policies. There are a lot of rich people who donate to the Democratic Party because they find the Republicans mildly icky. Um, and the, the Democratic Party, there are a lot of people in the Democratic Party who have entire jobs that are predicated on how much money is coming into the party. Uh, in fact, I could, you could argue that's the entirety of the political machine. It is a money-moving thing because we are in a capitalist country. So when Bernie, someone who threatened some of that income, uh, uh, even though his politics were popular, even though he had a massive support on the ground, even though he was polling well against Donald Trump, they couldn't have that because he would endanger the income stream for the party itself. Um, this is the problem that you're always going to run into with the current status quo in the United States. And uh, it's not solved. You cannot solve it uh, in an electoral fashion. There is no electoral answer to fixing that problem because the party machinery is, uh, is configured against that change ever happening. The party itself, which is gigantic and represents one of two parties, um, is designed to self-enrich. It is designed to uh, self-empower in that particular way. You have to think outside of that particular box um, or else you won't solve the problem at all. Stuff for people instead a, of just being like, hey, hey here's a little t few tokenistic gestures, competent governance, but no real change, TJ, except in, for very incrementally. In the state you and I have lived in for a long time, Louisiana, we don't live there anymore. I mean, there was, there, it, we, we normally have a open, basically an open sort of party thing. So, like, basically, if you if you don't get fifty percent, then we go, we we go from a primary, then we go to our, an actual election. We, this mm -hmm. was I was actually avoided this year because Jeff Landry, a horrible conservative, won the state easily. He, he got over fifty percent of the vote and wasn't even competitive because if you actually looked at the voter turnout and the in the race, it was twenty nine percent. So, I mean, the Democratic Party in this state is a f joke. They're, they're not even really trying to run anyone credibly. When this is a state, they probably actually could be competitive in and there's a lot of states like that but they're not competitive there's like that's a red state that's a blue state and it's like almost like neither party even gives a shit or tries with that louisiana governor you're talking about well the soon to be uh, governor well I yeah the, the the governor elect he uh he wants to withhold funds for new orleans uh water infrastructure he does until women who seek abortions are prosecuted Yep. So basically holding the infrastructure of a city hostage. Oh, it's far right. His, He's a his far, far right, right social agenda is enacted against I watched his victory women who speech, seek abortions. And the first thing that's mentioned is God. It's like, we're doing this for God. Then family and some other stuff comes later. So yeah, that's going to be the agenda. And New Orleans obviously is a horribly placed city. If you don't know, it's between Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi River. And it's basically a giant bowl. So if those, and the sewage and water problems, I mean, they have pumps. They have to pump water out of the city constantly. So withholding that infrastructure is going to make sure more people suffer and more people don't get adequate. By the way, that right there is the type of problem that you can't solve with electoralism, no matter what, no matter how hard you try. The fact that there is a guy who is in a position now to severely damage the life and health of, uh, of a bunch of people in order to force through a particular uh, religious agenda, that problem is bigger than an electoral question. Um, there might be electoral things you can take, steps you can take that can help you fix that problem, but that is so much bigger. That is a problem that has to be fought for on numerous fronts. Yeah. Yeah, Killjoy access to sanitation they need what if biden dies how who becomes the democratic nominee maybe vosh would know this would that just be would that just fall instantly to kamala harris or yeah i, I guess would have to i mean that, i assume they've been talking about that behind the scenes because it's not I mean, like... it has to be a subject of discussion with his age by the way remember everyone when we had the nightmare on stream the live nightmare together when we thought about the worst possible situation that could happen in 2024 Oh boy, whoo boy, we might get that.
Just remember, it's not ruled out. A year is a long time, especially when you're uh, Joe Biden's age. Can you imagine? Just, just real quick, just one more, one more thing. Can you imagine what it would be like to have Kamala running against? Uh, against uh, fucking Donald Trump for 2024. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they, you know, and there's a bunch of people crossing their fingers that he can make it across the finish line again. Um, yeah, no, it's it's pretty bad there. H Kamala Harris will have an even worse chance against Donald Trump than Biden by a pretty wide margin. And considering yeah, I how agree bad with you there. For Biden, um, uh, Paul was saying uh, that he thinks that... um. Yeah, like uh, there's not going to be any debates this debate season. Um, he thinks that Hemorrhoid King with the tier one gifted sub says, holy Mac, everybody take some time to like the stream. Indeed, we have nearly 800 people watching right now. Please press like. And if you're watching this in the video form, press like on the video so that more people get to see this awesome debate review. Let's go. Not, neither one of these uh, guys is going to want to do a debate. And so they're both going to just find ways out of it. I don't know if Paul's still there. If you wanted to, like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Revolve. I mean, I, I don't know for absolutely certain that that's what's going to go down, but I have a feeling that, uh, specifically Trump's kind of move dodging debates and stuff has set a precedent where it's like, I know for a fact that Joe Biden's handlers are shitting their britches about the idea of Joe Biden having to speak extemporaneously for a f hour and a half like that. That's oh, got to right. make people break out of the cold sweats in the Biden camp. Same goes for Trump. I mean, both of these guys are demented as fuck, off the rails as fuck, and I don't know that it's going to do them any favors to engage in the fucking, uh, kind of American tradition of debate. And so I wouldn't be shocked if there just aren't debates this year, you know? I think there's a decent chance that, yeah. A lot of the, um, I think... Donald Trump has... Um, has refused a lot of debates uh in recent memory so um i don't know if there's going to be debates which is really weird to think about just just the state of affairs in the united states is at the point where there's a good chance that there just might not be presidential debates at all which is really 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 fucking weird really fucking weird right now i think the person who's shitting their pants more is probably trump in large part because um He's he's declined very rapidly in the past year. That is true. Donald Trump is in rare form. He's always been really weird, but Donald Trump always had like a he had a twinkle in his eye, so to say. Even when he was being um, nonsensical and rambling, he was rambling with confidence. There has been a number of moments this year alone, or like this latter half of the year alone, where Donald Trump has gone to, to talk about something, and it's been actually impossible to know what he's talking about. Where even the crowd seems confused to know whether they're supposed to clap or be angry because they don't know what he's talking about. He's been a, yeah, his mental state has been questionable. Or so. Uh, I, I think a lot of it is just the court cases. Like, he has to keep jumping around between different courthouses in different states. Like, he's lost his business license. He's losing money. He's he's hemorrhaging money. Um, he the, the GOP was giving him money to pay for legal fees, but they've stopped doing that since. Like, the actual coffers of the GOP were open to him for a time, but now that's closed. He has people flipping on him. Like, Rudy Giuliani could, couldn't even afford a bus ticket home and he's like potentially someone who could flip on trump like he's under an amount of stress that i legitimately think would probably break most people and he the fact that he at his age is even still doing any of this is if nothing else indicative of like demonic constitution but i i think it is starting to take its toll i i don't even know if he's going to make it all the way i my money would be more on trump dying than biden because biden if nothing else you know the presidency is a stressful job but is it more stressful than what trump is doing right now i actually don't know what percentage of americans would uh would think that trump had been assassinated if he were to die of a heart attack or right. something like i don't know the, the exact number of people who are going to vote oh it would be bad yeah that is true if donald trump dies um the yeah it would actually that actually might be a bolstering event for like the 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 for like certain aspects of the maga movement from probably like literally 100 percent of one day he will die yeah but i mean before the election perspective trump voters would be like yep that was the cia 100 percent and then we would i don't think trump has picked his vp 
I don't even think he's mentioned it, has he? Yeah. It looks like people are people are theorizing Christy Noam, Carrie Lake, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley. Oh man, Nikki Haley would be crazy. VP picks don't typically happen until the president secures the nomination. Yeah, which is also strange in and of itself. That's true, though. God, Nikki Haley would be crazy. Have, like, Marjorie Taylor Greene pretending to be anti-CAA for a bit, the way she was anti-FBI to cover for Trump. Um, so, yeah, I guess that'll be fun. There's not really any easy way through this, right? Like, even the best possible outcome still involves half the country adopting new radical conspiracy theories to explain their loss. Yeah, but, you know, I am uh, one of the few reasons that I would I would say that uh, one of the few things I would think of is like, hey, this is a an interesting reason to vote for Biden, which I have, you know, not even clung close to deciding I want to do. But um, I was thinking about uh, the fact that maybe if the Democrats win enough elections, the the far right wingers would be like, it's so rigged, there's no point in even doing it. Glad you're saying, <laughs> you know, just Jay totally Rasmus. disenfranchise the right wing. Just like, oh shit! I think we've actually kind of been against us. No nasty? point in doing it, boys. Let's just stay home and I, then drink beer. I think we've been seeing that a little bit because we've had uh, the elections in 2022 and the ones we just had uh, a week ago. In yeah, both Democrats cases, Democrats do seem to be beating polling. Uh, yeah, yeah, candidates. consistently. So Republicans are answering their phones and saying, "Yeah, you know, we Biden is Charlie Crist part two. Not again." says more retro with the two dollar super chat thank you very much i really appreciate that also that's your first super so many people are willing to give me their first super chat ever that is so flattering thank you so much more retro i really appreciate that i i don't know enough about charlie christ i'd have to look into him we want this we want republicans yeah blah, blah. but then when it comes to actually going out there the whole 2020 election fiasco was basically the entire gop screaming our elections are rigged nothing you do matters and i think as a consequence of that there are a lot of like boomer you know like geriatric republicans sitting at their couch thinking like well what does it matter anyway this country is going to hell in a handbasket you know i hope the rapture comes soon and and they're actually f themselves over a little bit uh, which is which is really funny and one of the reasons why I'm so consistent with the Biden thing because it really shows what um, Faltering in electoral consistency can do for an entire party when people feel hopeless Yeah, I mean uh, there's there's uh, certainly a huge swath of America that is and I and I kind of uh, Have always felt like those people the people in the middle that d don't vote uh, get maligned as lazy or non-participatory. I think there's just a lot of people that don't see a point anymore. And uh, That's true. I'm sorry to say that from an echo. That's kind of what I was talking about, um, which is that, like, I don't think he's entirely wrong here. There, But also, it's not just, it's not that they don't feel see a point anymore. It's that they never saw a point at all. Um, there are a lot of people who severely struggle to translate our incredibly chaotic and confusing political system um, into um, into like how this affects their lives and why they should be invested. Um, and that's especially true um, because, uh, well, let's just say we don't have incredibly uh, consistent um, like opportunities for political learning around the country. Um, you know, I, I know that this is gonna sound, okay, this I, I promise you, I'm not trying to sound I'm not trying to be egotistical or overinflate my own value here. Um, because this is as terrifying to me as it should be to everyone else. But I genuinely think that YouTubers like myself, Bosch, Amazing Atheist, a lot of influencers right now are remarkably, remarkably impactful um on convincing people to even think about politics at all. Now, I'm a little bit different because I am specifically built around politics, but if I continue as I have over time to move beyond politics, my audience is going to reflect that. Um, and as, as many of these other creators aren't purely politics streamers or creators, um, their, their audiences, um, might, they might be the only person that, that, that uh, members of their audience have to get them to think about politics at all. It's, 
America's a really weird place right now. More, uh, more retro with the a two dollar second super chat says Char uh, Charlie Crist was put against DeSantis in twenty two, not Nikki. Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't see that. Economic standpoint, especially, which is really what people vote on. Uh, you know, social issues are great and they can motivate voters. But I think that ultimately people vote their wallets and Joe Biden has been horrible for American wallets. You know what I mean? That he's been horrible economically speaking. Now, the economy has been bad to be sure. I don't I don't think he's done much exceptional <laughs> oh, that's in either direction Nasty. when it comes to economic management. I mean, he the Inflation Reduction Act worked, so that was good. And you know, he he significantly reduced uh, child poverty for that time with the the, the the infrastructure bill. There have been like big steps he's taken forward. It seems like the, a big part of the problem is that there's not really that much infrastructure for a president to do much positive with the economy without some kind of like transformative action that I don't. Coconuts Julius says Joe Biden is not personally responsible for the economy. Um, yeah, but your average person does not know that they don't like i'm see i ha i had that exact conversation with a relative um they were basically like hasn't biden been really bad for the economy everything's expensive right now um and people just do that first of all the republican uh, republican biased news sources are constantly messaging on that they're basically perpetually messaging that uh, whatever Democrat is in charge is destroying the economy. So a lot of people pick it up by um, by osmosis. Um, and it's also really hard to explain to people why the president is not like a good, uh, is not actually that great of a determiner of the economy um, most of the time, but in some cases might be. It's actually really difficult to tackle that conversation with people. So a lot of people just, proceed through life with the assumption that if the economy is bad, it must be the president's fault. And um, I don't know how, like, I think that's really hard for most people to tackle. And that generally falls on the president to message otherwise. An example of this, okay, I, I don't mean to, to, to spend too much time on this issue, but Donald Trump was really good at, do, at doing this. As president, he basically just constantly highlighted everything that he did that he thought was good for the economy. Always. Biden is not very good at this, nor is Biden's team. Donald Trump, every time he appeared, he's like, we're doing amazingly perfect jobs everywhere. Jobs as far as the eye can see. You're feeling good, aren't you? You probably just bought a new Xbox, right? Enjoying the games? You can thank me for that, buddy. And it's bullshit, but... People believed him because they hear the president going, look at me, I'm the guy in charge, economy feels good, right? And um, yeah, so uh, it's kind of, it's something that's like beyond, like if it's beyond the average political uh, uh, talking head's ability to do um, be without lying. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's complicated. Talking about the economy and teaching people about how the economy works is really hard to do, okay? The Shy Doomer with the, oh my god, incredibly generous $50 super chat. If you don't bl vote blue, remember, I'm in your walls. This is a threat. I don't got anything to worry about. Let's go. I don't expect from Biden because... Thank you massively. I can't remember if I said that before. I did say, oh my god, $50, but explicitly, thank you very much for the unbelievably generous $50 super chat. That means the world to me. You will vote for Chenk? Well, obviously, because Chenk is going to be the Democratic nominee. He's obviously, Chenk is going to, Chenk is going to, what's going to happen with Chenk is uh, Joe Biden, it's going to be the primaries, which definitely are going to happen. And Joe Biden's going to get up on the stage and he's going to be like, now listen up, Jack. I'm tired. And then Chenk is going to be like, you're a pussy! You're a fucking pussy, Joe Biden! If you don't get the fuck out of here, I'm gonna freak out! And then everyone's gonna vote for Chenk. Biden will literally just obliterate into dust. He's just a liberal, right? But like conceptually, I think you would you would have to reach really far out there with like some, some kind of insane like price control deal or like direct negotiation.
Hey, Joe, wake up! With corporations or like something like that, you know? Did you UBI. see that they trotted uh, Obama out there now to pimp the UBI to people? He, he spoke in favor of UBI? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, Obama, they've been quietly kind of trotting Obama out at these little events and stuff, talking talking up UBI. Fucking hate Obama. Automation is uh, bad. You need a UBI. He's teacher. basically doing the exact pitch that Andrew Yang was doing a few years ago nah. before he decided he was going to do his stupid forward forward, <laughs> forward, forward party, party. Nice into irrelevancy yeah, yeah then tank in the right. uh, mayoral election in, in new york city i mean yeah. if you're going to start a third party uh, like it should probably have i don't know backing <laughs> like, and like we never even watched the chank hassan debate but i really wish we had maybe we'll go back and we'll do a throwback debate review because i feel like the chank hassan debate was so telling anyway let's get back to the debate review let's go orders ideas and it's like things you actually take positions you see, how, on. you see how cornell west like announced his candidacy went with the people's party which is like the jimmy door grift wagon then hopped from that to the green party and then hopped from that over to being an independent in like no time at all really serious stuff here on the uh third party yeah, i don't know why he's popped type. around so much i saw jill stein's announcement video i wasn't super impressed yeah. with that i just put out a video about that so this argument of mine gets pay, uh, painted as emotional, and I'll, I'll admit there is definitely an emotional component to it. We, we'll talk about it. Um, but what do you say to the argument that I find it utterly unconscionable to vote for Joe Biden, given what he is? A uh, total vampire, liberal. crony capitalist, uh destroyer of the environment exploiter of the third world fascist when it comes to his border policy uh completely and utterly feckless when it comes to his uh foreign policy um <laughs> just absolutely and utterly unconscionable racist author of the f crime bill that put a generation of black men behind bars i mean the list goes on right i could continue I mean, and and this is and this is uh, you know what I'm being asked as a leftist to mobilize for, and really what I feel like is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like people with your position are arguing against like, let's get let's give up let's let's uh, seed the argument that we're ever going to have something to vote for again, and let's just vote against, and that's not a that's not a great motivator for me. I have. As much as I'm painted as a doomer, I have high hopes for the future of humanity. And I think that humanity could do so much better and that people could be so much better off. And when I'm served up two options, which in, in which there's no chance for that happening, I feel completely and utterly disenfranchised. And I really find Cause I got high, high hopes for the living. Da -da 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 Cause that guy, it's, it's fucking Buddha Judge. He's gonna win. Buddha Judge is gonna win. I find it hard to see, a, to see the point. And morally, I find it hard to reconcile going and doing it. I mean, I, I think that like. We need that Jeb map, but it's with Buddha Judge and the little high, high hopes dance. At the end of the day, Bear one good pee. things is fine and all, but aspirations have to be tempered by an understanding of how to get there. It's like being a doctor at a triage and only having a, a limited supplies and you can only heal 10 people for every 100 and, and, and throwing your hands up because, you know, you're, you're engaging in a system where you don't get enough medicine to heal all 100 people. I, I don't, I, I, I just, it's, I feel like impulses like this, though well motivated, are ultimately designed to shut us out of power if not by you then like broadly in the ways they're enforced and sort of yes. um suggested and and incentivized because by the standards you've set we would never vote for any president really maybe like i don't know maybe carter first like there there, there are some presidents maybe who wouldn't fit the specific set of parameters that you've said are unacceptable to you and that's fine but they're all bad power is bad and as long as we shut ourselves out to the means to influence it you know, we we hamper our ability to make real change down the line. It's yeah, if if casting a vote for president is a moral act, uh, then you are like you are basically uh, everybody screwed. Um, and that's because I, I don't I have never bought the idea that like who you vote for is like a meaningful moral act. Um, outside of like 
I, I guess how you feel about it. Um, like it's just, it's just a, it's just not like a, if you vote for, for Joe Biden over Donald Trump, because you feel that Joe Biden will do less harm. You're not you're not personally endorsing every action that Joe Biden didn't take because not voting would have like choosing to abstain entirely from your vote would also um would like just mean that like there's one more there's one less vote for the lesser evil. It it's it's I understand why people come to that conclusion. And there is an aspect of uh, like manufactured consent in in democratic societies generally. Um, in fact, we've seen this in the Israel-Palestine situation, right? Where it's like, um, oh, well, Hamas is in charge of Palestine and Hamas won an election in 2006. We're going to ignore the fact that most of the population was not a, was not able to vote or many of them weren't even alive in 2006, but they did. So, well, you know, you voted for them. That, and that is a, like a, a bigger problem than like whether or not each vote is like a moral endorsement of all behaviors. You're trapped in a machine. Everyone from the moment that they're born, if you're born in the United States, you are trapped in a machine abstaining from voting is not like some grand moral act now you could argue that there is a form of of like abstaining from things that could arguably uh like be a moral act like for example if you're sickened by society and you decide to like withdraw from it and say no i won't be a part of this i'm going to go live in the woods and pursue a peaceful existence to the best of my ability, that could be. But abstaining from voting, of all things, you're not taking some grand sacrifice by not voting. It's not that, it's not a big enough act to even, to even register. And by voting, by refusing to vote, you're sort of uh, just uh, giving up one small, uh, tiny, tiny, tiny smidgen of ability that you have to nudge things in the right direction. But even still, even if you choose not to vote, I still don't even think it's that big of a deal. I think there are much bigger questions at hand that need to be dealt with. I hope that all made sense. Um, I just, I just, I've never understood this argument of basically like, over, like, and I don't think it's, I, I never get the feeling that it's really genuine. I don't think that anybody feels a true moral quandary um, that like, oh, I voted for Obama because I didn't want Mitt Romney to win and Obama did bad things. I have blood on my hands. When it's like, you probably drive a car every day. You probably are a meat eater. You probably pay taxes. You probably live in a town that's on native land. Like the moral the moral faults that you have just by existing, by being born into the, into the, the machine prison of America, uh, is worse than voting. You're just making a big deal and hyper intellectualizing an incredibly minor act. Does that make sense? That's a good point. Puerto Rican musician says also there are millions of, of felons uh, and uh, that cannot vote, Puerto Ricans that aren't allowed to vote in the national elections, and also people that are purged from the logs. We already talked about uh, people that are purged from logs and that issue. But yeah, there are people who are disenfranchised or who are legally uh, prevented in one way or another from voting. And those people aren't like committing some massive moral failure by not upturning their lives to try and find a way to be able to vote. Um, I think that you should feel worse about other things before you feel bad about voting. Hope that makes sense.
Let's continue. We got to continue. This is going to be seems like nothing is changing, but that's not true. Like it feels that way sometimes because we pay attention to politics. So we're on the treadmill, but like little decisions day by day do genuinely add up. Like with Donald Trump, you know, we see how quickly things can backslide. One Republican presidency gave them three Supreme Court judges, and that just taints right. the Supreme Court for for an entire generation. You know, trans people being banned from the military, DACA recipients being threatened to kick out of the country, Muslim ban. There's so many things that it's like, and and those differences are meaningful. I feel like the big problem with liberals isn't that there aren't better than the Republicans. It's that they're not good enough at proving to others how much better their ideas are. Because if you just laid out like difference by difference, every plan or every idea they have on every single issue, right? Republicans want to just flat out not have trans or gay people in the country. Democrats vary from being accepting to openly like promoting their existence. When it comes what to- What do you think- I'm I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I could have rambled forever. Please interrupt me. <laughs> uh, with uh, with with trans people, do you not think like? And I genuinely hey, think me. this. With all of the bullshit that trans people and LGBTQ people in general get, and racial minorities and cultural minorities, lump them all. With the amount of shit that they get, I don't think that there's anybody. See, you talked about so, and and I assume you mean mostly social issues have progressed. So. Uh, you know, legalizing. Change the stars says, hi, Demon Mama. I just watched your videos on Boogie and I'm in love with your whole style. I just subscribed and I am ready to enter a weird parasocial relationship with you and watch all of your backlist. Please enjoy my backlist. And I'm glad you enjoyed that. But can we, can we, can we not do the weird, par let's not do the parasocial part. Let's skip that part. Let's do a healthy relationship. Okay. Let's do a healthy online relationship, but please enjoy my backlist. And I'm glad you enjoyed my previous videos. Welcome to being an imp. It's a based existence, okay? It's great. Fantastic. A new imp is born indeed. Gay marriage, anti-discrimination policies have... Uh, Thank you, Posadas John. I will look over it and we'll make a decision. Uh, flourished and proliferated in my lifetime. We've definitely made progress in that arena. But we've made reverse. We've regressed economically. We are worse off economically than we were back in the old racist homophobic days. And if that's not addressed, aren't you hurting the very self-same people that you're trying to advocate for? But how does, how does letting Trump win help that? It seems like the economic downturn has been a product of a bunch of really complicated factors. It doesn't yeah, seem it like is. there's a, a I, correlation. Between... It really isn't all that complicated. I mean, yes, it is. You could sit for days and write a million thousand page doctoral theses on what's happened in the last 40 years in the American economy. But really, honestly, it is something that you can put in layman's terms and be really 100% spot on about. But it's not a dichotomy. There's no relationship between the advancement of social rights and the economic downturn. The economic downturn has been happening as a product of decades and decades of austerity and pro-corporate policies and a bunch of complicated globalization stuff that we can't fully control but only some will control and then on the other side of things you have like the social benefits we can get the social benefits we just have to vote them like that does it but as for the economic stuff it's not like we're trading that away i don't think that that i don't think that's uh i, I want to be charitable and say that he's oversimplifying here for the purpose of addressing the question i don't think that just voting dem gets you social change uh, in the way that you want. Um, and the case in point for that is the fact that, um, that, uh, Hillary and Obama, uh, both were, uh, were, were, uh, anti-gay marriage way, way longer than they needed to be. Uh, I, I think that that hyper simplifies there, the, the, the social changes that, that are grudgingly accepted by the democratic party are the result of tons and tons of people constantly pushing, but, I'm going to be charitable and, and say that I think he was probably just trying to keep it within the scope of the question, because obviously being somewhat familiar with Vosh's views, I know that he doesn't like, I know that he believes in agitating, but I should just be clear. It did. It, it isn't true. The Dems are, have been traditionally incredibly reluctant to accept, uh, 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 lefty social positions and have had to basically be pushed constantly, uh, by, lots and lots of social agitation for a bad economy with biden the bad economy would have happened if trump had won in 2020 it could potentially be worse the the um the malaise and the sort of malevolence that exists in 
the Republican Party today is not just Trump, right? I mean, it's the entire party. Uh, that's been demonstrated by the Project 2025 thing, the fact that so many Republicans were willing to back Trump's little uh, attempted coup, um, all that stuff. So eventually these people are going to get in power, right? Well, like the Republican to. Party, it, it, maybe it won't be this time. Maybe it won't be next time. I mean, historically speaking, boss, you, have, you have to admit, gonna institute you, you have to admit you, you see the so, don't we want back and forth, right? You have I to just admit. feel like we need a stronger Democratic Party to go against. Like, I would think that defeating these people, less important election by election than it is to ultimately defeat them. And to ultimately defeat them, I feel like we need something stronger than the Democratic Party in its current incarnation. And I don't see how we're going to get that if the only standard we have for them is just be better than that. Like, I mean, if it, you can be 99% Hitler, I don't see how 99% Hitler saves the day. It, it, at this point, like, we don't even know if we get another election after the Republicans put forward theirs. Like, they've made it pretty clear that they intend on dismantling the democratic system in a way that was not the case back in 2016 when Donald Trump won. A lot of people initially thought he would just be another bad president, and he was. But it's pretty clear at this point, like, the writing's on the wall. The Republicans just don't want the democracy. Like, they, they, they want to bypass They it. really don't want democracy. Uh, the Repu the state of Republicans is like the most bla blatantly anti-democratic that it's ever been um, in a long time. Republicans right now are just, they're so blatantly anti-democratic, it's insane. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, and also, I don't agree with the idea that it's inevitable that the Republicans will get back into power. I do think it's possible to actually choke out the Republican Party such that they are forced to um, functionally gut themselves out and rebuild and rebuild themselves as something else. It's happened before. Um, like keep in mind that the um, uh, uh, keep in mind that the um, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party had a switch, um, you know, uh, uh, in the past because of something very similar to that, where basically the current state of the 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 then democratic party was um was no longer viable the post um the post civil war democratic party um was so set in its ways that it simply could not function and it had to completely gut itself out and reinvent itself completely as something new which we call the the switch you know where the republican party went from being like the progressive party uh, to being the more, uh, 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 you know, regressive party. Now that's a hyper simplification, but I hope you'll understand what I'm saying. I'm not trying to do a history dive into the party switch. What I'm trying to say is that it is possible and there is historical precedent for basically making a, a, a party so um, electorally irrelevant that they are forced to radically reinvent themselves. No, I meant post civil war. Post civil war, the uh, the Democratic Party um, in the post civil war area, the the Democratic Party was um, was dominated by uh, by uh, Dixiecrats, um, by by Southern Democrats, um, and uh, it took a very 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 public um, resignation. I think it was. Hold on, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, yeah, um, hold on. Let me make sure that I'm remembering this correctly. I, I think it was Joshua Chamberlain, right? Am I misremembering? Wasn't it Joshua Chamberlain who like really loudly, um, resigned? Yeah, um, he was a Democrat. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here we are. Yeah, Joshua Chamberlain. He was a pre-Civil War Democrat, and after the Civil War, he was so disgusted with the state of the Democratic Party that he very publicly resigned and became a Republican. And it was so big of a deal that it basically de demolished the Democratic the Democrats' ability to continue to organize the way that they were. It resulted in the restructuring of the Democrat. It was the first of many things that resulted uh, in the restructuring of the Democratic Party and the purging of the Dixiecrats. Again, that's kind of that's kind of a a, a a simplification, but 
Yeah. Dixiecrats were still a thing in the 1990s. Yes, that's true, but, but yeah. Obviously, there are still Dix there are still, r r r you know, conservative Democrats. All right, let's continue. Let's continue this. Let's continue this entirely well, not in I, any kind the, of euphemistic way they will just flat out deconstruct they're openly admitting to it at this point this is not new though well, this no, is no, not no this new. this is we've had republican presidencies before the specific willful intent to just eradicate the democratic oh you mean like when george w bush completely and utterly dismantled the right to privacy in this country so no no, uh, no. so i i don't like the false equivalencies okay there are Definitely anti-democratic trends that have persisted throughout the elections we've had in our lifetimes before our lifetimes This is different if you can't see the difference then you're muddying you're 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 you're, you're obscuring detail I, George I W. Bush I George W. Bush the Patriot Act uh, what happened in Florida with the uh, butterfly ballots there are things to criticize I have to use the restroom continue watching I'm gonna pull a quick Hassan because I've given a ton of commentary so far and I don't mind with that. Let's go. Criticized. Keep watching. Very, Enjoy. very bad right things to criticize. But none of them are, and you're really lacking perspective if you disagree with this, the eradication of our democracy. The, the difference between America pre and post George Bush was significant, but it was not like us turning into Turkmenistan. Like it, there is a s incredible like threat, a, a, a weapon still on the table here. And at this point, considering the fact that they seem fully willing to use it, I mean, they're shouting from the rooftops, they want to use it. It's not really a matter of strategy. We just can't let them win. Even if the Democratic Party remains weak, enfeebled, crippled, uh, uh, ineffective, the, the hypocritical, is, inconsistent. The problem is knowing that that's their ambition. Aren't we just pushing a time bomb a little further out? If like, it further out is better than it now. Further out, a lot of I mean, stuff could that, happen. The Republican Party could collapse in on itself. Right now, it's having massive not. fun. It's having massive funding issues. Uh, it's getting clearer and clearer with the past two elections, the midterms in 2023, that Republicans are doing worse on social issues than they used to. Over time, the Republican Party might it's collapse. Probably just funding strengthening issues. their resolve to get rid of democracy. Though, well, right? uh, well, if they can have sure. as much resolve as they want. If they lose their elections, they can keep their resolve and take it back to the losers' field. But as, they're not going to lose forever. Is the problem? I mean, we've no, seen that Americans. You, see, you can't. Whatever talk, goes on. Americans seem to go back and forth. I mean, right now, even after seeing that Trump does have these ambitions, a considerable amount of Americans are still considering voting for him. You can't keep appealing to inevitability while also saying you hope for a better future. You can't, those two things well, that's the thing is like, exist well, I'm simultaneously. Appealing, I'm appealing but, but to what I'm saying is I think that if we're going to ensure that better future, we have to be more aggressive against them. And I'm appealing to like, it can't just be the the tepid messaging of Joe Biden that's like, hey, Jack, I'm going to restore democracy and I'm basically the most milquetoast politician you could conceive of. And I'm not aggressive against these policies and I'm doing so unimpressively that America actually you're almost wants saying the like, helping of Donald Trump. I think I get what you're saying. You're saying like, if, if we're talking about elections, what if they just say, well, f having an election even before they get into power? I think it's what you're saying. Like, so if it's inevitable that they're trying to push the country towards like a fascistic state or something, or totalitarian state or whatever, that if it's too weak to manage to stop it at the polls, I mean, like maybe maybe you can have that. Maybe you have a weak Democratic Party, but that just gets overthrown. I don't. I so what you're essentially arguing is like let the fascists win because they're going to win anyway, and I just don't think that's true. Well, you, wait, no, you, I, 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 I no, 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 wait, please, 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 no, 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 please, 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 or that they uh we don't vote for them we possible? vote for something else under what like under what circumstance exactly do the republicans not win ever under your scenario i mean th there's no scenario in either world where they, where they don't win ever i mean yeah statistically no but i you, you talked earlier about appealing to inevitability there's a couple of points that that you made that i want to talk about but appealing to an i appeal to inevitability if we continue doing the zero sum dance of lesser of two evilism at the polls but it's not zero sum we things just, have gotten better and things have gotten worse the, okay the, you keep referring to like the state <laughs> yes. of the economy the state yes. of the economy is not a product of deliberate policy decisions that you can trace to this administration we're not sacrificing some I can't. good for, please let me know 
What has Joe Biden done that has led to the current state of affairs economically? Um, uh, I mean, the the infrastructure package was a giant giveaway to corporations. It was a compromise on the compromise. It was basically Joe Manchin's infrastructure yeah, package. He couldn't get anything better put through. Are you suggesting he Republicans can't, he would can't, have done better? He can't. See, this is this is what I reject. I reject this politics of defeatism. No, 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 stop, no, no. This is this this it's it's nonsensical. You you he can't could. just you can't just argue well, that because you can't because we're you expected can't to believe just that Joe argue. Biden is powerless in the presidency, you, but Donald Trump will have infinite power no, no, no. in the presidency. You can't just argue. No, it's that it's not that it's not that Joe Biden is powerless in the presidency. It's that they choose what they do with their power, and we don't control them. There is no mechanism by which you and I, everyday random people, can control people or can control the president. You guys have heard me say this many times, right? Like, I know that, like, um, you know, this is this is the anarchoid take that people get mad at me for when people go, well, yeah, but, you know, what's your policy? If, like, you were president. I'm like, I'm not fucking president. I don't have a real way for me personally to uh to make a policy i don't i don't have that i will likely never have that even if i fought for my entire life and devoted my entire life to pursuing political power there is still a very good chance that i would never have the power to put that into place instead uh my position in the world is a different calculation and so is that for most people um and and it's a functional it's a serious issue we have to grapple with you, a lot of people basically want to get like um they basically get into um they basically get into like hearts of iron 4 or civilization brain or stellaris brain or 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 warcraft brain whatever strategy game you want to imagine people get their minds in it that they're like that when they're thinking about politics they're supposed to think about it as if they personally were in control of the entire machine but the reality is that we're not and we waste our own time if we constantly think about politics as if we control the seat of power when we don't and when the seat of power is designed to be resistant to anybody who doesn't basically seek it uh, to use it to preserve the status quo. We have to think bigger than that. We have to think more complicated than that. We have to think about strategies that allow us to influence the world um, without being in control of the seat of power or in ways that we can undermine that seat of power from being able to do things that harm us. Um, those types of political questions are more important than a sort of mental game in which you imagine yourself as the president of the world uh, uh, and, and then work backwards from there because that's not reality. You're not engaging with reality. Even if you come up with interesting uh, conclusions, I mean, I'm not going to say it can't, it's not a, it's not always a useless endeavor to think about that. It can be helpful for, for considering certain moral and political considerations, but it can't be your default state of operation. We have to live an existence where most of us, by definition, the, the majority of the world will never be president. They will never have that power. We have to act and think about politics and build power from a position of not being allowed to be uh, enabled by the machine because the, ma the machine is self-perpetuating. Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense to everybody what I'm talking about. It's a thing that I think a lot of people struggle with with politics is that um, especially American politics asks you to basically... Um, to, to spend all of your time basically empathizing with somebody who you will never be and never think about politics from your actual position. Never think about politics from the position that you and everyone you know is actually engaging in. Uh, and this is why I find questions um, uh, like, what the fuck do you do if you've been, uh, if you've been neglected by your government so important? because that is the experience that most people have. A lot of people in America have experienced their government failing them, sometimes very acutely. Like for example, when I've talked about in the past, uh, people who are in wildfire areas and the state just doesn't 
isn't able to help them. And they're just left there fending for themselves against a natural disaster that is heavily influenced by the government that is now abandoning them. Those are real political questions that everyday people might actually have to grapple with. Everyday people will, by definition, never be president. And that, like I said, that doesn't mean there aren't things to talk about, but you have to be very careful in politics to, to, to not spend all your time pretending that you're going to be the president or pretending that the guy that you put in the presidency is going to do what you want. You are going to, as a matter of your life, most of your life is going to be spent looking at a guy with unbelievable power who ha who will be ignoring you completely. Do you guys think that anybody who uh, who voted for Obama got the hope and change they were they were hoping for, or did they get a guy into office who promptly pr proceeded to not actually do basically anything that he promised? It may have given them some good things, but those things were watered down versions of what they were promised. We all know the answer to that question. The answer is that life, if you build your politics around hoping that the guy that you voted for is going to do everything you want, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And also, you're going to be wasting your time. What I'm trying to say is we need to challenge people to think about politics beyond just a purely theoretical, what would I do if I was king of the planet? Because you're not the king of the planet. You have to live your life for what it is. And you have to organize with other people from their position. And you have to think about political solutions that help you survive and live a better life from the position you're actually in. Let's continue. Let's continue. That because you don't like a thing that happened, that it could have been better. We all saw how long and grueling and painful the process was of getting literally any kind of economic reform put through Manchin with the Senate majority being what it was. We all saw if there was some like super like Hadouken special trick that could have been pulled off there to make that better. And I'm not saying it went perfectly, but the idea that it was some Brian kind of like <laughs> abstaining. Like, how about fucking showing up and being like, hey, Manchin, vote our way. Or we're so, gonna no, vote. This, yeah. is, this is like this vote. is a very simplistic understanding of how these political processes work. Sometimes no, this is. No, historical it, understanding no, of is. all these political it, no know, it is you, 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 you are literally how... you are literally saying that a good thing that happened that had to be squeezed through with the greatest amount of compromise possible that could have mm -hmm. just been done better if only biden had just what threatened mansion yeah why not yeah. okay well, what how about a because the kind of wait even if even if it's true that biden could have just threatened mansion how do you make him do that how do you make him do that? How would you make Biden do what you want? That's a different question than, you know, vo than voting can answer. It's not just voting. Voting can't alone can't do that. What? Uh for the next uh oh you should have 10 years ago made sure that every election in the country went that went your way so that there would be uh, 20 members of the squad instead of four members of the squad? Let's continue. Let's continue. People who are hardliners for Biden and his progressive policies are not the kind of people who are voted for Manchin. B, Manchin is the only Democrat who could win in his section of, uh, of, 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 of West Virginia. C, Manchin already seems to be on his way out with regards to direct collaboration with the Democratic Party. And D, it would have been optically horrible if Manchin, who would not have been threatened in his electoral viability as a consequence of this, would have just come out and say he was threatened and bullied by the president into accepting his anti-coal big government and agenda. And people would have called him a pussy. No, that's be, maybe on Twitter. In real life, that's yeah. not how these things happen. Why why would Manchin ever cede to these? What can Biden actually offer Manchin? Okay, so let me let me give you an example. Non broken kneecap. And I'm and that, by but the like way, a I, real answer I, though. Let me give you uh, yeah, okay. That is, that that is, is my let, real answer. That's not a real answer. My ans my it's answer not, no, is No, it's not this you can't disengage from how politics functions, then get in And what we're starting to see in this particular uh, segment is people coming up against the line of what can actually even be effectively discussed on YouTube. And it is a limitation of YouTube, which I discussed with, um, we discussed this in our, in our coverage of Sisyphus's video, which is that the platforms are, do limit what can be discussed. Um, political violence is a topic that 
uh, basically cannot be discussed on any of these for-profit platforms. It just can't be. Um, you can't even necessarily, there's a lot of like, like universities where you can't even talk about it in the theoretical without finding yourself in trouble. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, that sort of thing is, is suppressed. And, um, yeah, it kind of makes sense why it would be suppressed because, uh, state powers don't want you talking about, um, being able to reply to them, even if they're doing violence, even in a theoretical. So remember the TOS, don't fed post. Um, but also, uh, the idea that, um, I, 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 the idea that Joe Biden would be the way that you would, you would apply pressure to somebody like Joe Manchin, uh, is very silly. Voting Biden, but shaking my head the whole time. So everyone knows I don't like it. I mean, Listen, I think that's a fairly uh, decent thing to do. If you vote for Biden and you vocally, uh, uh, you vocally explain why you don't want to do that, but you're forced into doing it, I think that's a fairly a viable path. Um, people vote for Biden because the alternative is bad. It's that simple. The calculus is that simple. Um, this is something I've talked about for a very long time, despite being a uh, very, very left. I have been, I am an open, I am openly critical all the time of electoralism. And yet for me, it's still very simple. The calculus is simple. You want the most favorable ground for you to act on. And the most favorable ground is not Donald Trump. You do not win anything by ceding an election to Donald Trump. The, the, it, think of it this way. The battle is, if, if your goal is to get somebody better than Joe Biden, into office, that battle was lost a long time ago. You lost that battle years in the past. You are stuck in the world where it's Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, and you only get to choose whether it's Joe Biden or Trump that you're going to be being political under in the coming years. That's basically it. There just isn't any other path at the moment. It's that simple. Now, uh, if you want to start talking bigger politics, if you want to get bigger brained about it, if you want to exit the electoral sphere and start talking about politics more generally, there is so much more to discuss, but it doesn't take the uh, shape of arguing about who to vote for necessarily. Sometimes it does. Sometimes local elections can be incredibly, incredibly pivotal, but most of the time it's, uh, it's really, it's a lot more complicated things. How do we address the needs of my of this community that I'm a part of? How do I connect with communities that have needs? How do we organize these multiple communities so that they can act in a way together that increases their interests? There's a lot of answers to that question and a lot of it depends on the context around those communities, but it is not as simple of a conversation as, well, who are we voting for? And that's why a lot of this conversation just ends up being hung up on, well, who do we vote for forever? Because it's an easy question to ask and um, the, the, it benefits the status quo to only ever think about that question. If you spend the rest of your life arguing about whether you should vote for Donald Trump or B Joe Biden or Joe Biden 2 and Donald Trump 2 or Joe Biden 3 and Donald Trump 3, if you spend all of your energy and all of your time organizing and thinking around those questions, the status quo wins. That's all they have to do. They just have to make you waste your time on the least important question you've ever asked ignorant when the outcomes that you arrive at aren't what you wanted. Complicated politics remain complicated even if you approach them with a hammer. We're dealing with a difficult situation nationwide. This is like a very um, complicated time to be involved in politics. We can't do this like, uh, well, I want things to be better, so like, you know, whatever, they're going to win anyway. The Democrats are weak, so the Republicans are going to win anyway. Like, we, we have is, to be very uh, thoughtful and considerate. in politics? I'm sorry? Name for me a simple time in American politics. Compared to what we're dealing with right now, where there's like massive breaking news almost every other day with stuff like felony charges against the former president or like an ongoing genocide or like um, the, the fentanyl crisis. There are so many things now that are more 
escalated seem, than they were before. That does seem actually pretty standard issue. I mean, other than compared the to like the Clinton presidency charges. or even the Bush presidency, things are moving so quickly these days. We're at a breaking point. We're at the cusp of a decision that this country is going to have to make about whether or not we accept imperfect democracy or fascism. And at the moment, right now, as a consequence of failures within the GOP, people are trending towards us. They're doing worse with every successive election. We can't give up now. Maybe if we draw things out a little further, maybe the Dems stay annoying, but maybe the Republicans realize they can no longer win elections if they continue. Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. Nikki says, good commentary, Demon Mama. I'm trying to go down this crazy MAGA fascist oh. road and they have to dial things back a bit and maybe the, the the threat level gets toned down the heat gets turned down and we have the room to breathe again to make demands and concessions without the fear that our democracy could literally be broken in half with one wrong election result I mean wouldn't I, that rely on the republic well I don't know okay so uh, so here's a place where I differ from Vosh I don't have the same hopefulness in outcome as he does about Joe Biden. I think that this is this that that we I agree with him that we are in an unprecedentedly dangerous time, but I don't think those dangerous times are going to go away anytime soon. Um and in fact, I think we're going to continue uh sitting on the edge of this crisis and that um it is going to be a continual struggle uh to buy as much time as possible to fix things in the hopes that we can like more or less def deflate the crises oh my god my ear is ringing so bad right now oh man it's annoying me so much holy shit my my ear is ringing so bad fuck getting like the worst tinnitus ever right now in the middle of my rant god damn it um yeah no uh what i'm trying to say is is that like America has huge pieces that have crumbled and that are not easy to fix. Uh, Donald Trump did damage to our, our democracy. So did George Bush. There have been massive, massive, horrific steps that have been take, taken and they are not easy to fix. Donald Trump put, uh, put the Supreme Court in a terrible position, which means we are going to have certain types of threats that are going to be ongoing. This is something we have to acknowledge about the future, that the American uh, system uh, never really was as stable as it was made out to be, but is currently operating in an incredibly dangerous position and may always, for the, for the foreseeable future, be on the cusp of fascism. Um, however, where I do come back to agreeing with Vosh again is that I do think that the conditions are favorable under Biden that we have more opportunities to improve things and take victories under Biden than we do under Trump. But I don't think it means we can rest because I don't think that um, like Trump is going to be the last uh, American fascist, not even close. In fact, I think that the right is going to continue to find ways to churn out fascists um, uh, ongoing into the future. There is a, 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 a clash of uh of 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 culture uh that i don't mean just a culture war in the term in like the 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 way it's used online i mean that a lot of the right are christian nationalists their vision of the future of the country is one in which christian law and christians are the supreme people that they get to rule supreme over other people and the rest of us have to reckon that reckon with that fact that that is what these people are pushing for, and they are they are very convinced of it. Um, I don't think we're going to beat that faction in a single election, so I think it's going to continue to threaten. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't look at the Biden victory as like letting us have like a real good time. I just think it's a less bad time. And I think that we need to acknowledge that, like, a Biden victory is un is is not going to stop the fascist uh, movement or settle us into um, like imperfect democracy for a predictable future. However, uh, it might do some damage. It might buy us some time. Can party fundamentally becoming a different party than it is now? It, it has in the past 20 years. It went from neocon to fascist. If it can go from neocon to fascist, I think we can break them back into being neocons. At the best. I mean, maybe, maybe. we can make better.
I mean, it's happened, so when, it's so wait, happened so several so times. We can in expect US more of a Democrat once change, the Republican really. Party is pushed for back from fascism to neocons again. I mean, it would be a lot easier, I think, to do the whole "I'm going to threaten to vote for a third party" because thing. I because I I still heard all these arguments when it was still. Tomino's Pizza says, nowhere does it say anywhere, nor is there any evidence or statistical data that suggests fascism will be quelled if we go on stream and moan about the Dems not being good enough for the quadrillionth time. Um, I don't, I don't know about that. I think it depends on how you do it, right? If you're just complaining about the Dems being shitty, then no. Um, but I do think that, I mean, right now, on this stream... There are 700 people watching me have a very in-depth conversation about how to take, about challenging people to take their politics to a deeper level. And I am complaining about the Dems a lot. I think the Dems fucking suck, but I think that you can't just stop there. You have to go, okay, the Dems suck and we have been disempowered. How do we win power for ourselves? How do we think about the world in a way that lets us make decisions that are empowering to us and our communities and the people we care about? Yeah. You're welcome, Uncle Gumball. You're very welcome. So I do think that complaining about the Dems can be effective, but you gotta do it in the right way. Still just a neocon party. It, they're still true. You should still vote for the lesser evil, to be sure. I don't think so, that abstaining there's with no your vote... when we can actually hold the Democrats to a higher standard. You, you can't, you can't, is the thing. You have dreams of doing this, but you can't. Life is suffering, mostly this. There has never been a point in human history defeatism. where it hasn't been and suffering. And they call Paul the dumber, Jesus. I know. No, no, that's, <laughs> totally no you, you have to find joy in it. There will always be the terrible choice the you whip. have to make. Yes, yes, life is yeah. the whip. Love At it. no point in human history. Well, I for, don't ever want please, to hear that I'm a f doomer again. For, Vosh masochist arc? Just kidding. Vosh has always had a uh, a masochistic politics. Um, I don't know. I don't want to over psychoanalyze or over philosoph philosophically analyze the life is suffering thing. Um. It's kind of a uh, existentialist uh, a view, um, which I am not. I'm, I I I have a soft spot in my heart for existentialists. It's also kind of a stoic view, which there is some overlap between stoicism and existentialism. Um, but um, I don't know. I don't know that I. I don't agree with the idea that life is suffering. I think life is multivariate. I do think that suffering is an is a part of life. There, like, there is no way to live a life without suffering, um, and there is a lot of suffering in our lives that we have to learn to cope with. But I don't know if I agree with this. I don't know with the, if I agree with this entire argument. But romanticizing suffering is not good. Um, I don't think he's romanticizing suffering. Really, I think he's just. Uh, again, I think it's more of like an existentialist type thing where it's like, you know, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. Um, like it's the thing that you're like, you're stuck rolling the rock. You best find beauty despite rolling the rock, right? How can one not be an existentialist unless religious? Um... I'd have to think about that particular question. Yeah, no, I I, this isn't hear. this isn't being a doomer. This is being realistic. There has been no oh. point in human history where Said people have had the ever. luxury <laughs> of just Mother Mere set with the incredibly generous five dollars reminds me of a line from Princess Bride. Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. choosing the political option that made them happy for most of human history like 95 percent of it and for a majority of people alive today they oh, don't yeah by the way if you're here and enjoying this incredibly fun debate review press like on the stream or the video if you're watching in the future and make sure that you're subscribed to demon mama tonight has been an incredibly incredibly wonderful night we've had 700 people here for a very long time and that's really exciting i would love to uh, have you come back in the future and also for you to check out my backlog. So press subscribe.
get a choice. And yeah, for the I very think... small portion of people historically that have gotten a choice, it's usually a choice between two lesser evils. And by usually, I mean always. We will never have the luxury to not vote for the lesser evil because electoralism is ultimately about that final say, that final choice. How about a far lesser lesser evil? If you sure, for that? then do the groundwork, the media work, the the advocacy to popularize those people. And stop, well, it depends stop. on your democratic system too, because not everyone has the American sure. system. Bernie Sanders nearly won in the primaries in both 2016 and 2020 as a consequence of a lot of work for decades to legitimize progressive perspectives politically. Now, and he lost and, as, a, okay, as a direct I'm, result of the DNC being not uh, everything up and allowed to run roughshod over the will of the voters. Not. Every that should teach you not to overinvest in electoralism. Not that should not teach you to completely abstain from casting a vote towards the lesser of two evils. That should teach you that you are disempowered. You and many other people are deliberately cut out of the levers of power and that they have put uh, gates in the way to make sure that you and people like you can't get close to power which means you have to rethink the equation, find ways of seizing power of your own volition that are beyond the channels that you are being tempted into. That should be the conclusion. Not, not the idea, not the conclusion that, oh, we just need to play electoralism harder, but in a different direction. No, because you're not. You, you, it's like, um, it it would be like if you're a you're a human being, okay, and you're you're fighting against a shark, and uh, you're you're in the water, you draw you jump in the water, and the shark bites you, and you manage to escape and get out of the water, and you're standing out of the water, and you're like, yeah, what I gotta do is jump back into the water. I just gotta fight a little better this time, and it's like, no, dude, don't get in the water. The shark is going to kick your ass in the water. The fact of the matter is, unless you have a political machine behind you that can rival the Democratic Party, unless you have a real path to build a political machine that can rival the Democratic Party, they're going to win if you get in a political machine off. Which means that if you want to be serious about politics, if you want to find a way to improve the world, you got to start thinking outside of machine politics because you are not in the machine. You are not allowed inside to be able to pull levers. You are being worked on by the machine. You're being squeezed by the machine. You're being milked by the machine. Let's go. Everything happens perfectly and right when you want it. The difference between Bernie Sanders being a front runner contender in the primaries and what the Democratic Party was like just 20 years before that is massive. It, the, the difference that the like people are like, well, he didn't win. OK, and I'm and, and, and we're not all rich. We don't have unicorns, you know. Bernie Sanders would have been nice if he had won, but the difference between the Clinton years in terms of what was acceptable, what progressive policies could be put forward, what you could say on TV, and 16 years later with Bernie Sanders, remarkable. Uh, but but when you talk over that, when you say, ah, well, he didn't win, you're, you're, you're stamping on that legacy. Real progress takes work. Thousands of people, broken bodies, blood, effort, sweat, tears, Botnight says anti-voting anarchists are more useful than than this than this position put forward by Paul. Unironically, I agree. Even though I don't agree with anti-voting anarchists, uh, and they call me a liberal for that, which hurts very badly. Everybody calls me a liberal. Um, stupid. But even though I don't agree with the fact that you should abstain from voting, because I think that's a useless and frivolous act. If you have the right to vote, if you're enfranchised, you should just throw the vote in the direction that makes the playing field better if possible. But even though I don't agree with them, the fact of the matter is that most non-anti-voting anarchist types are actually doing other things. They say, I'm not fucking voting. I'm going to go do my own fucking shit. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go volunteer for Food Not Bombs. I'm going to go volunteer at a local uh, book club and teach people about politics on a deeper level. They're doing something that's more politically impactful than the vote. So them saying, I'm not going to vote, uh, just is meaningless in comparison to other actions. It's so easy to outweigh a vote. It's so easy. You outweigh a vote, Anytime you do any political action, 
that impacts the world and impacts a real person, you have already outweighed your vote. Votes, your your vote is so minimal. It's so small. It's so tiny and meaningless. It's such a distraction from everything that matters in the world. So yeah, I agree with you is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of suffering, but eventually, maybe you get it. And the victory is worth all the suffering before, all the work that it takes to end slavery or to legalize gay marriage. And it takes decades and a lot of people's misery. But when you get there, it's worth it. Union workers died to give us the weekend. Maybe yeah, we die yeah, to give 2050 a better Democrat. But we we've kind of have silently... to work. Let's talk about. I, I hope that's not the case. I hope that if people are going to die, they'll do it for a better win than a better Democrat. But, uh, yeah. Workers for a f second. It's also we crazy, too, um, invoking, um, I invoking unions here. Unions are like the most, one of the most obvious and open examples of, out of, of extra electoral action in the United States. Unions, they don't. Union's power wasn't because they all got together and voted for the Democrat, although they've certainly been able to do that at various points. Union power is that they all got together and said, fuck this. We're not going to we're not going to work. We're all going to get together and we're going to sit down on the job and not move things. And that can cause economic damage enough that it sends ripples through politics, that they can win victories from workplaces it has nothing to do with electoralism nothing it's the it's the in america it's like one of the most uh shining examples of of super electoral action or or what's the better that's not super ex electoral action action that can be taken beyond that can have massive shake ground shaking impacts on politics that has nothing to do with whether you cast a vote towards any candidate although interestingly unions do also uh, provide a a group that can disseminate voting uh, voting pressure. Just saying. The greatest lie the state ever told is that your vote is the most powerful political act. I don't know if that's the greatest lie they ever told, but it's definitely one of them. It's definitely one of the strongest ones. Fresh Pup USA says, yes, but voting can protect union rights. I'm sure you know how bad it is. Uh, it used to be. Well, of course. Absolutely, uh, voting can help protect that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, but saying that voting can help protect union rights doesn't matter if nobody's fucking actually participating in the unions, if nobody's organizing with unions um, or other similar structures. There are other things that can do the same things that unions do. Oh, fresh poop poop. Fresh pupusa. Okay. Let's continue. Keep silently in, in repayment for the blood, sweat, and tears that workers shed on the line. We've kind of silently, fecklessly, with a, with a just uh, insurmountably cringy shrug, shrugged off the economic degradation that's happened in this country. All of their hard-won gains in the labor space have been given back Okay, but that's true whether or not you abstain from a vote. Even if you decide to vote, that is still true. Even if you choose to abstain from a vote, that is still true. Because guess what? Voting has nothing, nothing, literally nothing to do with, uh, the, with that problem. There's just nothing. There's almost no overlap. The ways in which people have shrugged off uh, the winds of, of labor movements of the past has nothing to do with whether people vote for Biden or not. It's the fact that people have have uh, simult have have one of two things: either become incredibly apathetic and and stopped giving a shit about it, or uh, have actively fought against it. Or I guess there's three options. I should be fair. There's three options. They've either shrugged and become apathetic so that they don't, they don't care about these issues at all. Two, they've joined the far right and have act, are actively um, fighting against labor wins. Or three, they've been oppressed out of being able to have them at all. For example, via union busting. That's something that we uh, that's a, would be valuable to discuss here. That uh, Republicans throughout the, um, the 80s especially uh, aggressively 
aggressively uh, fought against unions, not just electorally either. Keep in mind that part of the reason why um, why unions no longer uh, don't have as big of a presence in the United States as they used to is because, interestingly, not on an electoral re uh, not on an electoral front, but because Republican business owners organized together and told each other and taught each other how to, to propagandize to their workplaces, how to suppress the formation of unions, how to misinform their workers. That wasn't anything to do with voting. That was a bunch of Republican business owners with shared interests coming together and going, yeah, yeah, we should make it so that every single month we have an anti-union meeting where we make all of our employees in the company sit down for 30 minutes and we'll even pay them for it so that they'll all be incentivized to show up and we'll make them watch a video that was anti-union. Let me tell you a quick story. When I used to work at Best Buy, because I used to work at Best Buy, that literally happened. It wasn't every month. It was more like every two to three months, there would be a store meeting and they would have from corporate, there would be a DVD sent from corporate that everybody had to, it was like a school assembly, except with all employees. Every employee in the big box store would be called in 30 minutes to an hour before the store opened and you would have a little get together and they would do little like, yeah, everybody, we're meeting our sales goals. Okay, everybody, let's watch the video from co from corporate. And every single one of those meetings, every single time without fail, there was an anti-union message in the DVD that would say, be careful, be suspicious of union members. If you see people handing out pamphlets, make sure to let your boss know because they might be trying to trick you into, uh, uh, into undermining your own pay. And then they would give you a bunch of bullshit um, stats about uh, about unions because they're doing propaganda. That has been something that I've experienced at every major workplace that I've worked at. Um, when I used to work for an, a major airline, there were anti-union uh, uh, pamphlets stocked regularly at the at the location in, where where all of your other employee information is. There's just a giant anti-union propaganda pamphlet right there among with among everything else. None of that had to do with voting for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. It was, it was, it was beyond the electoral scale. The sad thing is that uh, Republicans are super, super, super ready to engage in extra electoral action. And they do constantly. In fact, Republican power often flows through churches, which you don't vote for your church. Company Town is back. The robber baron is back. The unaccountable giant faceless multinational is back, Vosh. We've given it all back in favor of this weak, limp-wristed, feckless, defeatist shit. What, what are you like, referring you know, to, Reagan? Ever, what, I, what do you mean, what am I referring you, you, to? I'm you referring say to this Reagan weak, and feckless... every president after him. Okay, so I agree that labor rights have gone down with time. Right now, they're seeing a resurgence in large part because we have a president who's not entirely hostile to workers' rights. Because we have an umbrella of safety, Biden's presidency, union organizers, the people who work at the NLRB, the Department of Labor, they've had the ability to go out there and make changes that have meaningfully improved the lives of millions of workers with the potential to do even more down the line. But just as the victory of Biden has given us space for our worker victories, Trump's victory victory back in 2016 has given them space for their defeats because the Supreme Court has, in that same time period, using their power that they were given by Trump's presidency, waged a war against workers, ruling time and time again against their rights, their efforts, their advocacy. The difference is clear. In the systems where Democrats rule, we at least have space to speak. In the systems where Republicans rule, we don't even have that. The difference is meaningful. It doesn't mean we're ever going to stop fighting, but we can at least tilt the back. Gayfesh says, when a company that I worked at lost its contract and another one took over and hired the original staff, we went from non-union to union. I resisted because I had been raised hearing all sorts of anti-union pro propaganda. And then we had our first contract renegotiation two months into working in the new place and we all immediately got 10% raises. That shit will turn you towards unions real quick. Yes. And again, just to, to slam the point home, none of that had anything to do with electing. None of that had anything to do with electoralism. That was a union flexing its ability to bring you the bread. As it turns out, people's politics can be 
and people's personal power can be heavily impacted by your willingness to move your political frame beyond a bat and never a never ending back and forth about whether you should vote for a uh, blue or red battlefield to our side uh yeah i think that we need more than a tilt then but i really don't like the downplaying of the importance of the vote i'm not downplaying the importance of the vote the importance of the vote is very fucking small it is fucking small your vote is fucking tiny your vote is one out of hundreds of thousands and millions okay that's not saying as i always say that's not to say that you shouldn't put your vote in the direction that could potentially help you get a better outcome it's just delusional to act otherwise your vote should be the smallest consideration of your politics the smallest okay on the national level this obviously changes a little bit when you're on the local level depending on where you live if you live in a low population area your vote is inflated in its value in that area so obviously you have to do the calculation based on the math of the area but the fact of the matter is that your vote should be the smallest part of your politics the tiniest because it is it's the smallest part of your politics your politics is your energy is more usefully put elsewhere which is why i'm doing this right now you'll notice i chose specifically to review this conversation and my messaging on this has a very specific end, which is to get people to stop being cucked by the question. It impacts power the most directly, though? No, it does not. No, it fucking doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. If you vote in an election, and if you vote in an election, and there is a... Let's look. Hold on. Let's get the numbers. Hold on. Hold on, wait, hold on. Wait. Let me just get this real quick. I want to see just exactly uh, the popular vote. Let's take a look here. Can we get the numbers? Can we get the numbers? Joe Biden got 81,282,916 votes. Donald Trump got 74,223,369 votes. Um, that means that there was a span of over 5 million in difference between those two. Um, you are one out of 5 million on a battle between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. That's not to say that you shouldn't probably get involved, but my entire chat right now could decide not to vote Biden and it wouldn't even register. It wouldn't even fucking register. So no, it is not your most direct say at power. The most direct say at power uh, is one of thousands of other actions you could do. If you tomorrow, if tomorrow you decided to go and feed someone with your, with your own hands, you went and worked, at a um at a at a, a local food kitchen and you made sure that someone got their meal for the next day that would have more impact than a single vote by a long shot because you have no idea you just sustained a life or potentially multiple lives who could go on to change the world in unknowable ways whereas your vote is one out of five fucking million but millions of votes do matter motherfucker are you the are you are you sorry no i'm so sorry i'm so sorry you are you're you're arguing for my position i shouldn't get mad i got i got confused as to who said that i i i, I no you're right you're right boon of tyrants i i thought i thought that was fresh pup pupsa pupusa poopsa pupusa i'm sorry i didn't mean to fly off the handle i'm i'm not trying to get heated i'm just a fan and i worry this rhetoric will be discouraging it's not i have been so consistent on my messaging every single person in my audience in fact right now hold on i have to go to the bathroom again because i drank a giant soda a giant tea and half of a gigantic thing of water which was a huge mistake but here's what i want you to do what i'm going to do real quick 
my fans explain what uh, just in chat type up your summary of my position on voting real quick if you if you're a regular viewer of me and then i'll come back and i'll review cuberry shortcake demon mama's position on voting to the best of my memory you should do it and you should vote in the way that keeps the bad people out of power that being said voting is not political activism it's the participation trophy of political activism correct Mama's position is that we should not, we should vote, but also understand that it's not the end all be all of political activity. Doing things like volunteering at a soup kitchen, food bank, or homeless shelter are just as, if not more important, depending on where you live. Correct. Damn, everybody's got my position. See, my consistency is unbelievable. Okay? Unbelievable. My consistency has been four years of this exact same messaging. I down I do not downplay the value of a vote. I believe that I give votes the rational the rational value that they have. I believe most people overplay the value of a vote, usually to virtue signal. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. There it, you you don't get a t you can't keep rejecting reality in favor of an imaginary hypothetical better alternative that doesn't exist. Then why even be a socialist? Just be a Democrat. Because socialists are the ones who make <laughs> Democrats do. Ooh, we lost almost a hundred viewers. One bathroom break, negative a hundred viewers. See, this is why Hassan does the. Uh, see, this is why Hassan just does a chair stream. Next time I'm doing a chair stream. Damn. Damn, that hurts. This is what the viewers demand the occasional good things that they do by doing by doing what by putting forth wild ideas that are improbable at the time that slowly but surely become common wisdom and right? how do you get those ideas realized you fight, you fight. for them you yeah, fight right. yes but you don't just turn your back on the entire political process bernie sanders single-handedly hold, hold on yeah but i'm tired of you saying that that is my position i don't know who you're arguing against but my position is not to say fuck it to the political process. My position is to say fuck it to the duopoly. That's the political process. But fucking, but saying fuck it to the duopoly is not, it cannot be done by abstaining your vote. Even by abstaining your vote loudly does not fuck the duopoly. It actually just leaves the duopoly exactly as is. It'd be like saying, I am picking up, I am picking up this lens cap and I am squeezing this lens cap in defiance of the duopoly i'm also doing it in front of 600 people formerly nearly 700 people wow process right in your mind that's all the politicking that can be done no i'm arguing the opposite you're the one who's saying this is the venue through which you have to make your change i'm the one who's saying your vote every four years should be simple and thoughtless. The actual work is in the advocacy you do between those elections. That's where I think change happens. That's where it does happen. You're the one who's arguing that you have to make this big grandstanding ideological defiance of the two-party duopoly at the polls. And I don't think, I mean, you can, I don't think anything good comes from it. In fact, I think it makes work harder for the people who actually do that work for the past four years. Because you don't oh. provide them that space, that umbrella. All the people doing that... NL yeah, Vosh is basically making a very similar argument to mine right here. Um, he doesn't... He sometimes goes for... He goes sometimes further in support of voting than I would. But this is very similar to my argument. RB work, they couldn't do it if Trump had won in 2020. They're only able to do these positive things because they were given that space. So we we, we build the umbrella, we, we build the shield, but the real work, the difficult work, it is a lot of suffering. A lot of people spend their entire lives doing local politics in like fringe Midwestern towns and they die without seeing any positive change. Very knifey duck says, confession time, I was internally pushing back against your argument about how much a vote counts until I realized that I also agree with the argument that refusing to vote has no real effect on the system. I was literally doing a double think. Progress has been made. That's based. Always improving your thought processes is good, and I'm glad that I could help. But that's the nature of, of politics. That's just living, right? I mean, that's that's always how it has been. If anything, it's better now than it used to be because it used to be that the people who dared to speak up against the current regime were just... Oh, was I in Vosh chat at this point? I think I did pop in at one point. I see Conyer. Was there me? I don't think... I don't know if I actually popped in in the stream. Like I said... Oh, no! No! Left and right. Threatening people. Oh, shit. Where were we? Fuck. 
I hate that so much. How do I save this? Hold on. How do I do this? Wait, I know how to do this. Hold on. I can watch my own stream real quick. 4649. 40, okay, there we go. Okay, all right. I saved it. 4649. That's where we were. 4649. Wait a minute. Wait, no, wait. That's where I am now. God damn it. That was too live. Here we go. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay, we're pretty close. 4144. That's where we were. We were pretty close to this. Here we go. Ideas that are improbable at the time that slowly but surely become common wisdom. And right? how do you get those ideas realized? You fight, you fight. for them. You yeah, fight, right. yes, but you don't just turn your back on we're the entire now. political process. Bernie Sanders single handedly oh, kicked off. Yeah, but I'm tired of you saying that that is my position. I don't know who you're arguing against, but my position is not to say fuck it to the political process. My position is to say fuck it to the duopoly. That's the political process. Right. In your mind, that's all the politicking that can be done. No, I'm arguing the opposite. You're the one who's saying this is the venue through which you have to make your change. I'm the one who's saying... Your vote every four years should be simple and thoughtless. The yeah. actual work is in the advocacy you do between okay, I remember this part now. We're caught back those up. elections. That's where I think change happens. That's where it does happen. You're the one who's arguing that you have to make this big grandstanding ideological defiance of the two-party duopoly at the polls. And I don't think, I mean, you can. I don't think anything good comes from it. In fact, very knifey duck with the $5 says, thanks for helping me overcome a thought error. You are based and cool. Appreciated. Thank you for the support. Thanks for being here. I think it makes work harder for the people who actually do that work for the past four years because you don't provide them that space, that umbrella. All the people doing that NLRB work, they couldn't do it if Trump had won in 2020. They're only able to do these positive things because they were given that space. So we, we, we build the umbrella, we, we build the shield, but the real work, the difficult work, it is a lot of suffering. A lot of people spend their entire lives doing local politics in like fringe Midwestern towns and they die without seeing any positive change. But that's the nature of- That's really unfortunate. Um... And I think we should try to avoid that outcome. I don't think that type of outcomes should be valorized. Um, I think that should be seen as the failure uh, uh, that it is, that our democratic system, despite people being able to devote their lives towards fighting for important changes that they can't get the changes done because their voice is never heard. I think that should be seen as uh, cautionary and not something to be celebrated. Of politics that's just living right i mean that's that's always how it has been if anything it's better now than it used to be because it used to be that the people who dared to speak up against the current regime were just offhandedly killed at least now people oh yeah metroplex asylum says this makes me think of the movie rogue one listen this entire conversation has my entire brain constantly going vibrating in andor uh if by the way this is a perfect moment if you haven't seen uh star wars andor you should go watch it it should be the next thing that you watch and i mean that i can't you you know how i am about star wars you guys saw my reviews about star wars you guys saw the whole star wars arc you guys saw me uh tap out in the middle of the clone wars because i couldn't handle the cringe so you guys know i'm not exactly a uh i'm not exactly like a star wars r2d2 r2d2 oh an at at that i'm very critical of star wars but star wars andor is star wars andor is such an incredibly good analysis of political change it is remarkable. This whole conversation just makes me go, go watch Andor, go watch Andor, go watch Andor. It is, and, and I always, I say this, but I want to avoid, I don't want people to, to, to watch Andor because I think it's super politically based. I think Andor is unironically a piece of fiction that is helpful specifically for American lefties. Not because it's like, oh yeah, lefty politics is good, but rather because it forces lefties to think about 
uh, what their politics actually mean and how their politics operate in a very, very similar a, a portrayal of a situation that's very similar to our own. It is a show about how you do politics under empire. That is what the show is really about. It is about how the fuck do you live under empire and actually live with reason. Incredible. You know what? You're right, Gayfesh. I'm gonna read it, but it's okay. You gotta read this bit from Nemec's manifesto. I will. Freedom is a pure idea. It occurs spontaneously and without instruction. Random acts of insurrection are occurring constantly throughout the galaxy. There are whole armies, battalions that have no idea that they have already enlisted in the cause. Ooh, goosebumps, banger, okay? But you don't know why that is so important until you've watched Andor, okay? I'm done now, we gotta get back to it. We gotta get back to it. I'm serious, it's so good, it's so good. It's so relevant to this conversation. Go. Get to live through their ineffectiveness, and sometimes we actually do get positive outcomes. I, I, I think there's a lot of value to fight for here. I'm not doomer about it. I just think that in the specific venue of like the electoral system and the leader you choose at the end of the process, there's not that much wiggle room. In this case, there's none because of the whole um, fascism bit. Yeah, um, I think that uh, we need to immediately divest ourselves from the two-party system and immediately come up with a better way of doing things, a third party. Oh, God damn it. I was literally, I couldn't pause fast enough. I was literally just about to say beast, but then he ruined it immediately. We need to divest from the two-party system and immediately come up with a better fit, bit, way of doing things. True! A third party. No! God damn it. A thir the third party is, it's, it's structurally limited from functioning. Do you not realize that third parties have functionally, have almost never, there's been incredibly rare, and most of them were like, what, I don't even know, over a hundred years ago? Uh, the third party path is not the one. Yes, you do need to divest from the two party system by doing, by changing your politics to be beyond electoralism, radically beyond electoralism. He is only ineffectual because, uh, largely because the people that, whose votes would help it believe that, oh, uh, you know, there's no point in doing it, so whatever. And that kind of seems like what you're preaching here. You're the like, one oh, making that argument wait. for voting well, for Biden. Let's not waste uh, any of our time trying to create a new uh, workers' party in this country because it's just pointless anyway. Or just More Retro with the $2 Super Chat says, I'm down to one bottle of wine. How long do you go? Well, we're going to finish this debate, so we got a ways to go. You got plenty of time. They, we're, trying, we're just even just trying to push the Democratic Party left from where it is. They, well, that's or not even necessarily left, but just like, hey, these things you guys promise, why don't you actually try to do them? That's happening. And why don't you... I mean, very ineffectually, in my opinion. Yeah, be because you you have to pay attention to the details. Recently, the White House has been flustering on a position with regards to Israel's support of the genocide going on in the Gaza Strip because they've been I mean, Reagan surprised. ended that shit with a phone call in his administration. Biden could do the same. Yeah, I'm you aware. Prop up Israel. I'm All not... Biden would have to do is be like, yes, he could. And will he? The answer is no. How are you going to make him? Do you are you are you secretly like sitting in the room next to Joe Biden? No. Who can put the pressure on him? The squad can't even effectively pressure Biden most of the time. And those are people who have been elected to office, who were able to raise the money and, and get elected for office. Our position has to be one different. We have to engage. Those of us who are outside of that electoral world, we have to engage differently. Hey, knock that shit off, and I'm, they would stop. I'm not arguing that Biden is doing great here. I'm saying that real work is being well, done this is not at about every Biden. level. This is about the complexity issue, because I think you say I'm oversimplifying. I think you're overcomplicating, because I think that, yeah, a f tire iron can do the job sometimes. More retro said, no, I downed a couple bottles of wine. Oh, damn. Well, thank you for supporting the show. I hope that you'll get your you'll be able to last comfortably through the rest of the stream. No, no, nobody is tire ironing. Go to Joe Mansion and threaten his ass. No, you can't do that. Like, hey, 
fuck you. Do like what you're, guy, spe you're speaking you got, out of frustration. Look how quickly, look how quickly Joe Manchin folded, dude. Look how quickly he folded. The minute a Republican challenger rose up, Joe Manchin's like, ah, I'm not going to bother seeking reelection. And then we're told, like, oh, he was uh, a valuable Democrat. Yeah. Because no Who Democrat else is get could elected with a D next to their name there. It's like, well, it doesn't matter if he's got a D next to his name if when he's needed the most, he just says, well, sayonara, motherfucker. See ya. Yeah, I'm not saying that Joe Manchin is a great ally, but what you're suggesting, I assume, is to literally like threaten him into being a better Democrat. I, it doesn't. Can I give you two no, historical no, examples? Just threaten him you can't. You do way not way go. Give you two, do not go back 100. If you no no no. If you genuinely uh -huh. believe that the solution to like a gridlock in the Senate would have been the actual literal threatening of someone there, you would create impeachment and presidential scandals that would blanket the remainder of the presidency and lock uh, the ineffective. I don't think if you went about it right. I don't think if you went about it right. right. Yeah, pretty, pretty sure a lot of presidents have used their muscle in some interesting me, ways. So what if he doesn't have any leverage? Hold on, hold on. Let me give you two historical examples where this very tactic has been used and worked lincoln used it he had a whole bunch of operatives who were paying off people left and right threatening people with investigation promising promotions within his administration and he managed to he managed to get slavery abolished what do you think okay well there was a civil war Martian Whale says it's kind of frustrating that it feels like Paul and TJ are super jokey and nonchalant about this while Vosh is actually taking it seriously. Well, I mean, I think there's some truth to that, that like, I think that they're a little bit less invested in politics generally than Vosh is. Uh, I know TJ is fairly invested in politics, but like his approach is generally roasting right wingers. Uh, Vosh is fairly invested in, in discussing electoral politics, but also it's just kind of a stylistic difference. Um, TJ and Paul's ego, uh, they do that stuff a lot more than Vosh does these days. I mean, he still does it a lot, but, you know, when he's in debate mode, Vosh tends to take debates very seriously, uh, unless he's debating a Nazi, at which point he goofs on them. Yeah. There as well. What do you think he could have offered Manchin? Okay, so let me give you the second example, because that's kind of the answer. LBJ. Now, I don't want anybody saying that I'm making excuses for the Johnson administration. He was a piece of shit. He's got the blood of Southeast Asia up to his elbows on his hands. You can't rehabilitate his image. But one thing you can say about LBJ was he knew how to strong arm a mother. He got on the phone with the FBI and said, hey, I want you to look into and I want you to just imagine a world where Joe Biden did this. Hey, yeah, that's great. I can imagine a world where Joe Biden did that, too. How do you make Joe Biden do it? That's not Joe Biden's politics. Joe Biden is not interested in doing that. He's fine with things going the way they are. Hey, I want you to look into Joe Manson, Manchin's uh, business practices. I want you to take a nice, hard look at what he's done. I want you to find some tax evasion. I want you to find some unfair hiring practices. I want you to find some illegal uh, offshoring. I want you to find the dirt on Manchin. Okay, do you and think then you get, and then hold on. Imagine that it's not a weak, feckless dementia patient sitting in the in the chair, but a, a actual politician. You... And he looks Joe Manchin in the eye and he says, hey, mother, I'm going to I'm about to bring you up on five federal tax charges. Guess what? Guess how you're going to vote. That's a good idea. More retro. Uh, I'll try and check that out. That's a good idea. I know Bo's done some pretty good videos on Florida elections, and I think that's a pretty good idea. It, what is Joe Manchin going to do? Is he going to run to the uh, is he going to run to the uh, the media and say, like, oh, I've been dodging taxes for 20 years and, and Biden threatened me. Killjoy says, do you think part of the problem is that Paul and TJ are Gen X disaffected libs and, and Vosh is a bright eyed, bushy tailed millennial who isn't willing to just smash up the system and hope there's a replacement system on the other side after that system is kneecapped by the tire iron they keep bringing up? No, I just think that they that the tire iron sounds strong and uh, like a strong argument, even though they don't actually wield the tire iron. None of them are wielding a, wielding a tire iron against anybody. They're not wielding against Manchin. They're not wielding against Joe Biden. No one has the tire iron here. You, no one has, uh, right now in this conversation, no one has a meaningful power that they can wield against Joe Biden. Unless, unless anyone in this conversation can convincingly swing 5 million people to vote, based, this is, of course, based off of the last election, Unless you can swing that, you can't fucking wield anything over Joe Biden. You are cucked.
We're all sitting in the cuck chair, okay? That's the that's the that's the horrible, sickening, disgusting, infuriating, blood boiling bullshit about modern society is that we're all fucking slammed down into the cuck chair. And until you find a way to amass power that either insulates you, makes you invisible to, or one of many other paths, you will not wield raw power over the president of the United States. You will not, in all likelihood, wield raw power over a, even a local politician. Uh, chances are you have to come up with different ways to influence the world. Yeah, no one has the tire iron. Do, <laughs> do you, there's, there's so many things wrong with what you're suggesting here that I don't even want to go into all of them. Okay. I'm not no arguing disagree. against the strong arming of people when necessary, but first of all, what you're describing, if found out, and it would be found out because it's pretty difficult to keep secrets these days, would be one of the largest presidential scandals in history. It would also give the Republicans legitimate ammunition to attack Biden, not only on impeachment grounds, but also on the idea that he doesn't actually believe in the diversity of thought within his own party because he's willing to go after people who are supposedly moderate like Joe Manchin. This would uh, does, 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 Didn't Trump, Trump, didn't Trump's it, administration kind of demonstrate that you can get away with a lot if you just brazen more retro with the two dollars thank you very very much says that's right that's it i have biden and trump's dave and buster bucks oh god that'll get them and ballsy about it yes but the difference is the kinds of people who vote for trump are trump voters and the kinds of people who vote for biden aren't trump voters you can yeah, be, well, you, you can get away with fascist shit when you're a fascist. president that does stuff like that no no you can get away with doing fascist shit when you're a fascist with voters who will vote for you for being a fascist. When you're a milk toast liberal moderate like Joe Biden, you're Which, your room that's of what I'm permissible. Saying. I'm saying I don't want that. <laughs> that's that and, that's, and that's tough. So, so fight for 50 more years and maybe we die having seen something better. No, like, thanks. I'd, I'd rather have it sooner than 50. Right. That, that's because you're, you're impetuous like a child. You don't understand yeah. how yes. not listen. Everything good, the true. air you breathe true. and the water you drink, everything, the regulations that allow us to drink clean water, unleaded gasoline, none of this happens as quickly as anyone wants it to. People have died seeing their dreams gone unachieved and then had other people of the next generation take up the cause and also fail and then continue from that point. The very first abolitionists were in the 1600s. There were people who died in the Revolutionary War. Before that, actually, but war on the assumption the slaves would be freed after the British were yeah, kicked and I'm sure out. Every, here's the thing. I'm sure a lot of those abolitionists were impetuous assholes that wanted slavery done now. You're arguing so that your, your that argument kind of would be for them to give up. Maybe you shoot for the moon to even just like get a get a like you know a uh, uh, 10 pointer you know your argument is or that they point, should have divested themselves from the political term, process. Now wouldn't you believe it there is a different position Little man named John Brown had some things to say to both of these arguments. No, um, uh, I, I, I only partially jest. Um, what I should say here, though, uh, is that um, one of the reasons why I find um, anarchist philosophy and political uh, theory so interesting is because a lot of anarchist, especially modern anarchist thought, um, is it is it is pointed at how the fuck do a bunch of us random uh, disempowered uh, 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 prisoners of a system that we don't like? How do we actually change things? How do we find a way to live outside of that? The reason why I find. Um, so much interest and value in people who uh, uh, look at systems differently. For example, uh, something that Doe has introduced me to so completely introduced me to that I was unfamiliar with before is Deleuze. Um, Deleuze and his discussion of uh, his political analysis of nomads, and how nomads are historically um, uh, uh, politically disempowered groups that nonetheless managed to cause unbelievable distress to massive state societies. Uh, nomadic groups, random nomads have, have caused genuine nightmares for uh, massive world superpowers. 
And um, and I find that interesting because it, it makes you go, wait a minute, for like, how how is that possible? How is it possible that people who seemingly have no power are able to find a way to leverage power? And that's why I find this stuff interesting. And let me tell you something, okay? I am no expert. Okay, I don't know all the answers. Doe knows way more than I do about that particular thing. But what I can tell you is that the answer isn't whether you vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump in 2024. That is not going to be the answer to to uh, putting you really any closer uh, uh, to uh, finding a way to politically empower yourself from a highly uh, disempowered position. I'm just I, I'm I'm just saying. Let's continue. Like they fought legislatively for the abolition of slavery for decades and decades without success. Through your argument, it would be like, oh, I've been at this for I don't know ten years and it hasn't worked out. I should just give up. But it was only because I of the. I'm not, I'm not saying give up at all. I'm saying yeah, push I, as I, hard I, as you I, I fucking keep, possibly can. Keep, it's the exact keep, opposite of give up. I think your position is more akin to give you up. You are and literally just, yeah, letting the way they are the fascist win, even though his victory will make it more difficult for the actual advocates to do what they need to do to make the world a better place. How am I letting the fascist win? If you don't vote for Biden, that's one less vote for Biden. I live in California. Biden. I could vote for f Mickey Mouse. It, uh, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I live in unless, a deep red state where my vote also really doesn't matter. Unless you're, in, yeah, about, unless you're in about eight states and certain districts within those states are quote-unquote fragile, uh, uh, flawed democracy, your vote doesn't Count Florida anyway. used to be a swing state, and people giving up because they're already majority in a state is how you lose solid blue states. And we'll never get you complain. How can you complain about the Democrat? I think this is the. I have to criticize Vosh here. I think this is the wrong answer to this argument. I do think that Vosh has overall held pretty strong, and I do overall agree with Vosh's position here. As you guys know, I have criticized both of their positions repeatedly throughout here, despite overall leaning closer to Vosh's position. I think this is the wrong response. Um, I think when people say, I am in a deep red state, my vote really doesn't matter that much, or I am in a deep blue state, my vote doesn't really matter that much, I think the, the argument to make here is then you should be spending your time engaging in politics elsewhere. If, it, if, you, are, if you are that disempowered, then your vote doesn't really matter that much. Okay, cast your vote or don't, but take but whatever you do. Make sure that you are engaging in politics in some way that does impact the world. If your vote has been disempowered, find a place to use your energy to make the world a better place elsewhere. But see, the thing that's happening here is that they're not actually doing that. They're not doing that argument. They're saying, I should, de I should deliberately not vote because that will show them. But that's not the argument that's not the answer and the answer isn't you should vote anyway the answer is hey are you disempowered did you know that you have rights so call saul goodman no uh better call saul no it's just it's literally it's it's are you disempowered has democracy left you behind it's time for us to get real about finding ways to leverage political power that doesn't have to do with whether or not your meaningless vote goes anywhere. And they're not wrong. If you're in a deep red area because of the electoral college, if you're in a deep red area, your vote isn't as impactful. If you know within a, a st statistical cer certainty that your area is going to uh, give all of its electoral college votes to the, to the Republican candidate, there's not much you can do about that. Same thing goes if you're in a democratic state. Your vote probably doesn't matter that much, but you know what does? Your fucking energy. Your energy can go really far. And I and I I always bring up a, the simple example of a of a soup kitchen. Because imagine putting your vote value at higher than making sure, helping to make sure that somebody their their body is sustained for another day. This is why I get so angry at American politics and why I, every time we talk about electoral politics, I try so hard to focus on how we can actually build a politics of material impact. And again, the votes flow with it. When, uh, during the pandemic, when I volunteered with a local mutual aid collective, 
um, those those guys were also advocating to, to, to vote in certain directions while helping people get their food that they needed. And those people remember that. The people who are fed by, an, a, by a lefty mutual aid collective going out of their way to completely cover people's food bills and make sure that they get food with no cost. And then they go, what's this group really about? And they go to that group's webpage and that group just fed them. And they read that group on that group's webpage. They read them say, we are for this. We are for this. We are for this. They vote that way because they go, that group fed me when I needed it. And they're advocating. And I trust that they're advocating to make sure I get my food because they showed that they would feed me. being bad in Louisiana when you're saying oh it doesn't matter if I vote for Dems here I'm in a far red state that's what they think they think oh I'll give up in it because they're far right you're saying well, oh uh, who cares I'm not because in it's far well, right well yeah that's oh, not well, him okay. and I'm still in a red state I, I, and I, I did vote by the way okay so just so you know so yeah so the, <laughs> the logic is the same this isn't about like we're talking about one day of work not even work Bizadu says the sheriff of my local friend's town in Louisiana just flipped Democrat in a Republican majority state by a single vote. These people are still under the watch of a sheriff for capital, but at least it's not one who advocates for fascism. That's not good, but it is better than the alternative. Yes. As I've said over and over again, I'll repeat myself again, there are local elections where your vote might be very, very, very important. If you live in a super rural area and there's a sheriff election and there's one guy who's a giga asshole, a super racist asshole, and there's another guy who's an asshole but not racist, you should probably consider voting in that election because your vote probably does matter. Um, but again, the context of this conversation is mostly national electoralism. Just remember that. Uh, every four years, you, you, you show up. It doesn't matter whether or not you think it does anything. It's a very yeah, simple civic process. I, I, let me just, uh, I want to just clarify this really quick. Uh, I, I, I have every intention to vote. I'm all for making fun of Brits because I live here, but Americans always make fun of the Brits in the least accurate way possible. You want to know what's really offensive about the Brits? Here, I'm going to hit you with a real fucking shocker, okay? Is that British people, British people are convinced that they're better than Americans. They're convinced that, they're, that their country is like, uh, is like more civilized than the rest of the world, and especially than Americans, while they sit in the seat of the most debauched and and disgusting empire that's ever existed it's that it's that image um uh, from seinfeld where it's like i'm not ashamed of my heritage and then it flips over and it says that's the problem you should be it's that that is like one of the biggest problems i have with british people and it even it even creeps into british lefties where they're like thank god we're not america and then you're like you're britain do you not remember what you were, that you are like the reason that the, that America even was able to exist, that like the oppression and starvation and mass murder that your people carried across the globe? Don't fucking get any, don't, don't, you should be the least patriotic person ever. You should be ashamed to call yourself British. At every moment you should be like, I divest myself from Britain. I am a free, I am a, I, I, I disavow Britain at all times. It's like, I believe in I believe in white guilt, but specifically for British people. There you have it. That's my actual take. In the election. I just don't know if I'm going to vote for Biden. Who would you vote for if not Biden? I don't know. I'm undecided. Well, it's either Trump or throwing the vote away. So I guess between those two options. I guess options, I might choose to throw my, to quote unquote throw my vote away then. Which is like not voting as far as I'm concerned. Third party <laughs> votes are not voting as far as I'm Your concerned. voting isn't voting, TJ. No true cool. voting. Yeah, f that, dude. I mean, I that we, we it's a two party system. I didn't make it that way. It is that way. We have More retro says them in Spain. True. And France, let's not forget France. You're not getting away out of this fucking French bastards. You have to acknowledge you, you kind of that. Are that perpetuating that though. Yeah, it's it's that way because of the complacency of people Domino's Pizza says, but the problem with this conversation is that both, both nations do this and assume we all voted for the terrible shit that happened in the history of the country, but we assume the same thing about Americans. Yeah, that's true, obviously, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that even British lefties who are like, uh, you know, who, who are able to acknowledge that they don't like support their country sometimes get a superiority complex over America and over other countries as if they didn't do, they didn't like rule 
over uh, as if the country didn't rule over a colonial empire for like three times the length of the existence of America, you know? So just, you know, let's, when, when it comes to like ancestral guilt and whatever, Britain's like pretty much on the top of the world when it comes to that. People like you. No, it is that way because for, for, mathematically, for yeah. the yeah, there you go. See, Thamino's Pizza, there you go. Right there, that's the way to do it. I'm fucking Scottish. You just did it. There you go, now you're free. See, now you don't have to worry about it. Never identify yourself as British. That's the secret. If you never identify yourself as British, you win automatically. There you go. But see, that's the thing. Like I said, the British lefties, they sometimes forget system we have incentivizes that there's outcome. actually other countries that don't use first past the post that still have robust third and fourth parties and fifth and sixth you and mean they do use first past yeah, the coalition post? you're talking about coalition yeah there are different uh rules for voting uh in different countries that procure different outcomes when it comes to what you actually have to deal with mind you the absence of a two-party system has not made things any less in england like i agree with that yeah it's like so there sure. the problems that we're facing here like I mean, the, they are the two party duopoly in england right they've got a national no health... they're, they're wow perfect timing how hilarious they're pretty fun right now <laughs> they're pretty yeah, they, i mean not not if they they're get trying cancer. to cut they're trying to privatize healthcare. if i if i get a cancer diagnosis i'd rather be yeah, over there than that's, over that's, here uh, sure that's that's in the process of being rolled back. In so. the process, but isn't it, it, let's let's it's not like, be they have some good stuff our level that's here. like a, a holdover from a bygone era. Like the current political climate of of the UK is horrible. Incidentally, the reason the NHS is getting privatized is because people let the Tories win too many times. So as a consequence, even though yeah, they've won a lot of elections over there. Yeah, even though the Labour Party is not the glorious socialist vanguard party that might have once been 120 <laughs> years ago, there's still a meaningful difference between allowing conservatives to tear apart your systems and allowing liberals to preside over them competently see i mean but the problem is that if conservatives are running better campaigns and getting more people to vote for them then that's just that's how it is like why do why don't the why is it why more retro with the two dollar super chat says no scottish did this in new caledonia and joined in i don't know about that why is the onus always on i'll have to look into it but thank you for supporting the show seriously like the non-voter or the third party voter to fix the problems for the democratic, like bail us out again, bail us out again. It's like, do something for me then. Do they, they anything do. for me and I will. If Joe Biden did one f thing. But see that, it, that position is so silly. This is the position that buys into, the, into American demo democratic uh, propaganda. The idea that your vote is actually valuable, that your vote is act that you that your vote can allow you to flex pressure in anything but the most rural niche election between two guys in a town is like, dude, that's like it's a it's a fantasy. That's a fantasy. You, you don't unless you have five hundred unless you have five million other people voting alongside you you can't meaningfully even come close to threatening biden unless you and five million people are all like sell to us bitch then he might get scared and that's a might even still that i actually was impressed by an rb and sorry not to immediately pause but that's what i'm saying about i think most people over inflate the value of the vote i don't think that i D devalue votes. I think most people overinflate the value of a vote. Let's continue. Rulings was that I'd not vote for him? With the, the NLRB rulings was that not the Inflation Reduction? I got him a little bit of the way there. The the Inflation Reduction. We gave him props. We were on our show saying, yeah, yeah good job. I am going you know, to the like, uh, UAW. That's why my chances of voting for Biden currently mm -hmm. sit at two percent? Okay, because of that. So if he so. The, the reason they need money is because you need... So either they take money from citizens or they take money from corporate donors. I mean, you can decide which one you think is less um, concerning with regards to where the money's coming from to the Dems. Upholding, or like, with, withholding civilian donations and having them rely more on corporate donations will not make the Dems more amicable to proletarian interests, for one. But for two, like the only thing they need to do to be a better candidate for vote... Danny says... Danny Fallon says, so we have to win local elections and state elections. We need to organize around that. But here's the problem. We are going to have a fascist eventually put back in charge, be it in 2024, 2032, whenever. The next Republican candidate is probably going to destroy what remains of our democracy. 
So I don't know that there's a good answer in how we defeat them other than building coalitions locally and trying to make sure individual states hold protections. My opinion, this is a humble opinion, but my opinion is that we need to start now. And this is why I talk about this so frequently on my show. Now, before the fascist is in charge, we need to start building networks of survival, networks of resilience, networks of local and interconnected political power, uh, whether those take the form of, um, of unions, whether those take the form of social groups, whether those take the form of, uh, of, of political, uh, of, of reading clubs that communicate with one another and have strong social connections, whether those take the shape of communities of highly politically active streamers, whatever they are, we need to start building roads and connections that will be able to help people fight, survive, and resist. Because I agree, I do think that it's inevitable. I think that the state of American uh, of, of of America is rapidly trending towards uh, some type of fascistic power. That the democratic institutions are corrupt are crumbling. That many institutions generally that have provided a certain type and flavor of 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 stability uh, have begun to crumble. That the the uh, milieu is changing. And if we want to be able to survive and thrive in changing times under potential extreme hostility, we need to start building structures now that can keep us going. And I and and the answer is not always clean. It's not about necessarily always voting for one person or another person. There's no single answer. It's a it is a mentality of an approach of everyone using their talents organizing together, connecting together, and keeping an eye on this shit, educating one another, making one another resilient and strong, building up uh, 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 backups in case uh, things that we rely on now no longer work. That's a really good idea, Killjoy. I hope that uh, builds off of what you said. Let's continue voting than the Republicans is to be better than the Republicans. You don't have to donate. I don't think I've ever donated to the Dems broadly. I've donated to a few candidates specifically. I've donated to Bernie Sanders. And I know a lot of his yeah. coffers were emptied I out in the Bernie. DNC. Uh... More retro with the $2 says, can we look up acts of union causes after this? Uh, probably not tonight, but uh, it probably could be something valuable for the future. Thank you for supporting the show. Yeah, even I gave money to Bernie. Yeah. So a lot of so my money that I gave to Bernie, I think some of it did end up going to... Uh, to the Democratic Party. money in politics. Citizens United was a disastrous decision. Oh, a good, a good chunk of what people like us donated to Bernie ended up in Joe Biden's pocket and Hillary Clinton's pocket, respectively. Of course, so, yeah, it did. Gotta love that DNC. We can't withhold because things aren't as nice as we want them to be. Bernie winning still would have been a significant Isn't that the whole point, though? Like, I mean, look, I mean, here's the thing. You think I'm not fundamental. I don't know about Paul's position on this. I don't want to be conflated every time. Yeah, watch yourself. And I'm sure he doesn't want to either because our positions are unique from each other's. But um, as really. far as I'm concerned, like I'm, I don't think vote lesser of two evils is fundamentally faulty. But I, I just want there to be a little bit, like I guess for me it's a matter of degrees. Like if it's Hitler and 99% Hitler, I honestly don't give a fuck. If it's Hitler and 60% Hitler, okay, maybe we're getting somewhere. Do you really not think that compared to Donald Trump, Joe Biden is at least 60% Hitler <laughs> or less. Um, what would a Palestinian say? You know, I, I, I'd have to go issue. I'd have to really sit down and put it down issue by issue. Look at the cultural impact both ways. Look at the long, like the. I think you should do that. I think you should spend a little bit of time doing that. And you'll realize, uh, I think that Joe Biden is as much as I dislike Joe Biden, a significant improvement over Trump, especially if you truly do believe um, in, uh, in uh, politics that are greater than voting. Because keep in mind, one of the things that was most dangerous about Trump was Trump's willingness to crack down on protest. Donald Trump fucking hated free expression. Do you know that they're like, like, the, the, the current Trump plan is to use executive power to further punish protest. 
that they want to like severely, severely, severely punish free protest. They want to destroy the actual thing that the First Amendment stands for, which is the ability to dissent from the government. And Donald Trump is totally in on that. He wants to use every law in his power to punish protesters as much as possible. And Joe Biden, as bad as he is, is not like that. Far reaching effects of both outcomes. Because, I mean, I mean, here's the thing, and I've always said this, and I've said this for every president throughout my lifetime, and I know that to, to a degree it's ignorant and sort of like self-absorbed and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll head that criticism off of the past. I realize it, and I'm not putting 100% stock in this. But, like, if you somehow were to cast an enchantment on me where I didn't – I just – I was incapable of knowing who the president was – and I could only judge it based on like what's going on in the rest of the country. I don't think I'd ever have realized we were under new management, I, like on just a personal level. I genuinely you know, maybe that's think like white privilege or some shit, but it is. It is white privilege. It's not, and I, and I don't mean to be mean to TJ here, but it it's not just white privilege. It's white and cis privilege. Um, let me tell you, on a very personal level a house full of trans people, the day-to-day the, the day -to -day experience of being trans under Obama, Trump, Joe Biden, has been very, very noticeable which era we've been in, okay? Very noticeable, all right? Um, when, you, when you live under a president who explicitly bans people like you from enlisting in the military, um, even if you have no desire to go into the military, the fact that you know that state institutions are turning against you is an incredible uh, negative effect on your on your day to day life. Not to mention that Donald Trump um, intentionally took moves to make it more difficult for trans people to get their documentation changed. Um, I, I, the Obama was in, was comparatively. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but Obama was comparatively incredibly good for trans people under obama my partner was able to get her name uh her name and id changed so easily it was a real change it it went from my partner being stuck because of her home state's rules uh to being able to completely circumvent that process because of a rule that obama changed a rule which joe biden put back into place that Donald Trump put, took out of place. Your day-to-day -day life as a trans person in America, it has been affected, and most trans people will acknowledge that. Now, I'm white, colored. Um, you know, I don't really strongly identify with whiteness as a structure, but um, that's, who I, that's how I'm identified by other people, okay? So there's a lot of stuff that I don't have to think about, but I can imagine that there's a lot of shit that uh, a sp that that many non-white people have had to deal with under Trump, uh, that they do not have to deal with under Biden anymore. Martian Whale with the twenty dollars. Thank you so much. As a very small political commentator, I just wanted to let you know you're a huge inspiration. Happy to inspire. More retro with the two dollars super chat says this is why the twenty two Florida election needs review. I agree. Martian Whale and more retro. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Y2 Yasmin says, Asian here, and oh my God, did my racism encounters rise heavily under Trump. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people who encountered that, who would have, who encountered that shit under Donald Trump. And that's just, that's just, that's not even to mention the broader things. Like, I mean, can you imagine, uh, can you imagine being un, uh, uh, like undocumented under Trump? Not only... Is it a matter of uh, the laws are incredibly hostile towards you, but the rhetoric is you can't you couldn't escape it. I mean, the same on on the rhetoric front, nearly like trans people were constantly being attacked under Donald Trump from the office of the president. Oh, God, it's crazy. Let's continue. We got to continue. We got to continue. Let's continue. Maybe. I think a lot of that is also because you you engage LTL says. Having experienced under Obama, Trump, and Biden, the immigration system was very different under each one. There you have it. Engage with things, as a lot of people do, I think, much to their detriment. 
from a very high level day to day news on a federal level, like perspective, which, and, and a lot of the stuff that you concern yourself with is also like inseparable from broader economic trends that would have happened under any president. So as a product of that, like the very real day, like if you want to know about the differences, don't listen to the news. The news will always sound the way that it does right now, no matter whether or not something good or bad is happening. Listen to somebody on the local level. Listen to somebody who works with administration, somebody who works with local schools, somebody who does legal work, somebody who's like uh, engages directly with like uh, uh, activists, NLRB, unions, anything. To them, the differences are massive. Right now, the culture of hope for unions in America for like what's happened with SAG-AFTRA and the UAW massive surge of hope what's been happening with Starbucks like the the in terms of like worker advocacy this is the best that we've been at this is the best we've been doing in over a half century like in for you say you can't tell the difference you talk to people whose job it is to pay attention to the differences and it's clear as day. Now, to people like, say, the Palestinians, yeah, no, I wouldn't go and ask them to vote for Biden right now. Not just because, you know, they're getting bombed, not American, blah, blah, but also because I acknowledge that there are going to be kind of common trends of suffering under Biden or Trump or whatever else. I do think Trump would have made it worse, <laughs> but still, very bad as it is now. But I, we can't toss that out. I mean, what- Yeah, I, I'm, I, I have to say that while I think that, uh, I think it's, very, very bad tactics to try and push Biden um, when discussing uh, the current Israel-Palestine situation. But I have to agree. I think that Trump would have been way worse, especially given that we we have Trump's record from when he was president. Trump's handling of uh, Trump's handling of um, of of uh, foreign affairs was fucking terrible. It was it was it was terrible. You're telling me he's that him and his cabinet aren't going to be worse on this particular issue. I think I think it's I I don't believe it. Maybe maybe, but I I can't help but feel that Trump would have been worse on this particular issue. We have got what we have done is still worth fighting for and preserving. I applauded Biden's uh, NLRB ruling. Yeah, but... true. Better for the potato. A great point. D Donald Trump literally did a Muslim ban. But let's not be let's not overvoice the positivity here. There's still a gigantic gape. You mean the guy who moved the embassy to Jerusalem to try and get clout with his base would be bad right now? Yup. Being loophole that hasn't been addressed by the NLRB. I haven't heard much talk about it being addressed by the NLRB. I'm certain Biden has been mum on it, which is the fact that. Uh, companies can still indefinitely refuse to agree to a contract. There's no, there's no like weight over their head to agree to a reasonable contract. There's no litigation process that a union can engage in. ELT, wait, E, <laughs> LTL, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Damn, I was stumbling over my own words. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate that in order to do that. And so there's still a giant loophole for corporations to be able to just dig their heels in, which they will use. And it hasn't been addressed by Biden. And it probably won't be addressed by Biden. So I mean, they can strike. Yeah, well, they can they can strike. But we've seen that Biden is willing to step in and end those strikes too, right? He he ended one strike because it was yes, right before the midterms, and then he quietly went behind the scenes and tried to get those workers he ended the strike for. So he, so he f***ed them and then gave them a reach around. Sweet. Essentially. At least, at least, hey, at least they got a nut, you yeah, know what I mean? Not yes. Well, yeah, considering the fact that no other president, to my knowledge, has ever done that, at least not since, I don't know, like the, the, uh, the like, um, Roosevelt days, I guess. Um, By the way, the contract that Biden forced on them was uh, pretty paltry in comparison to what they were asking during the strike, by the way. Yes, because it was yes. not. Yes, I agree. It was not everything that they wanted. But in terms of like if we're talking, if we're taking a look at like overall good or bad for unions, he has been better for unions than any president in our lifetime by far. The rail strike thing is unfortunate. I'm not defending it, though. I do think that he's done more to amend for that than any other president would in his stead, 
and all the NLRB decisions, the general advocacy for striking, the fact that the NLRB is like more actively involving itself in defending the rights of striking workers. These things are huge. But again, like I, I, I feel like right now I'm arguing about like the particular arrangement of confectionaries on a cake when my opponent has served me a slice of shit. Like, Donald Trump wouldn't do, you know, some of this stuff a little better and some of it a little worse. He would do none of it, and the stuff he would do would be anti-worker. Aren't you kind of arguing that you would rather eat uh, a, a turd that has a dollop of Cool Whip and some little icing rosettes on it than a, a raw turd? <laughs> Isn't I mean, that kind of like the essence of your position here? I mean, I, I'm getting forced. Giant douche versus turd sandwich. Excellent. South Park. We're back at South Park. To eat one of them is the thing. There can only be one of those. Like, like I, I don't have the choice to not do that. And I guess I would. I mean, you do have the choice to not the... do it. You've just chosen not to do it. No, 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 that's not true. See, you are being force fed the sandwich. The only people who are not force fed the sandwich are those who find a way. The only the only people who, who are forced to not eat the shit sandwich are those who find a way to build independent power. And not many of us have found a way to do that, okay? Most of us are being force-fed shit, okay? Listen, I've been reading Dune lately, so I'm in a very uh, Dune mindset, okay? Uh, the only people who aren't, uh, who, who aren't eating shit are the, are, the, are the Fremen. The only people who aren't eating shit served to you from House Harkonnen or House Atreides are the Fremen who figured out how to, you know, hide away their supplies of water under their siege, okay? That's it. Now, we all know where it goes, so we'll not get to that. But, at the beginning, only those people who found a way to hide themselves away out in the desert and build a, a, a life that is actually capable of wielding some power against the overlords are the only people that are surviving. And the reality is most of us can't do that here because we're not fucking in Dune, unfortunately. As as interesting and as fascinating as it would be. Okay, don't overdo it, Killjoy. Yes, obviously. They but whatever. Shut up, you know. Lovely promise with the $10 says, T thank you for helping me convince my family to focus on more than just national politics. We are now involved in local kitchens and homeless shelters and have done so much more for our community because of you. Wow. Well, it's you doing it, but I'm glad that I was able to help convince you to work in a, in a, in a specific direction. I genuinely mean it when I think that that does actually change the world in a seriously positive direction. Um, uh, shelters are in need. People won't get fed if the hands aren't there. You are feeding people, you are sustaining people's lives, and that is based. Thank you for supporting the show, and I'm happy that I was able to help catalyze that. More Retro says, Humble pie of crow is better than a shit sandwich without bread. Probably. Uncle Gumbald says, Dima Mama would be the most based and fearsome mother in the Bene Gesserit, and you all know it. Oh, so you think I'm a eugenicist, huh? You think I'm a galactic eugenicist? Jesus. No, I don't. There will be one president. One. Right, but you don't have to actively grab one of the turds and eat it. No, you the, can... no I, I don't grab the... The turd is being shoved in your face. There's going to be a president whether you vote or not, and that president is going to do things uh, that affect your life. The turd is going to be shoved in your mouth unless you have, unless you're telling me you're currently finding a way to keep yourself immune from the changes a president does to you, or at least resistant to it. You're eating a sandwich, bro president the president's voted in by the country there will be a turd in my mouth yeah, also i think the difference is going to be a turd in your mouth i think the <laughs> difference between the two turds is a lot more significant than what you painted out to be we're talking about the most pro union president right. in our lifetime so it's, versus it's donald chocolate trump dipped. it's chocolate dipped. no the, i know I, I like i i, you know I, I, mean? I enter i entertain these analogies because i'm not exactly like really that much of a biden fan but in reality if you can't see the significant difference between the two it's because you're ignorant politically the like there is or you're insulated for another reason like for example um there's plenty of rich people who do not have to eat 
the turd sandwich because they simply are not affected by who's president. There are plenty of rich people who live a privileged existence where they, because of the way that our system, because our system rewards wealth, that you can be insulated from political things. There are people who are like that. It's possible that some of them are in the stream. It's very possible. But I, uh, uh, but most people, the rest of us, are gonna have to be force-fed some shit if, if, uh, and, and, uh, and those of us who have to deal with it would generally prefer the less shitty shit. There's a degree of, oh, well, our Chariot says, man, I remember my old roommate watching South Park. This literally feels like being trapped in the Obama years. Yup. Yup, it is. It's, it's bad. It's just, it's just, uh, it's, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, ironic detachment, I think is the term that people use for this. Where it's just like, yeah, who cares, man? Who fucking cares, bro? Just douche in a turd sandwich. Haven't you seen what Cartman said? Come on. I just think it's very, uh, I just think it's very, uh, yeah. It's edge lordy. It's shallow. It's not, uh, there's a lot of bluster. The whole thing about the tire iron situation is like really, uh, really uh, emblematic. None of these people have power over Joe Manchin or Joe Biden or Donald Trump in any way. Their vote, as they said by their own admission, their vote doesn't matter. So there, no one's wielding any power here. It's all just a bunch of people sitting in the bottom of a, uh, sitting in the bottom of a fucking septic tank complaining. Which sucks, but... You're not really winning anything. <laughs> Arlo says, damn, the scat fetishes are eating good tonight. Fuck you. <laughs> but true. But true. Fuck you, but true. <laughs> more retro with the $2 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Uh, more retro says, there will be a turd in my mouth equals bad clip. Yup. Chariot says, I guess I think if people are going to argue there isn't a meaningful difference between the candidates, they should hold up their platforms and go issue by issue. But that would be less vague. They should. There should be an issue by issue discussion. But so much. And one of the things that annoys me so fucking much, the things that annoys me, oh my God, it, it drives me crazy about all electoral discussion is that it is just dipped in vagaries. Vagaries, not vagaries. Maybe they're both a real thing, but vagaries. There is, everybody is always so vague about everything. Everybody's vague about how much your vote counts. Everybody's vague about the, the candidates. It's all just a bunch of posturing bullshit. Let's continue. Aren't they all bourgeois parties anyway that comes across as woke when in reality what you're doing is just waving your hands at a thousand complexities that- Bruh. Apparently, like a 1950s fucking muscle car just drove by my house in ra at rapid speed. Jesus Christ, that was loud. People whose job it is to pay attention to this would be able to immediately identify and care about. Can We're I talking life or death differences. This whole shit versus shit with some frosting, reserve that for like the party era back during which Dems and Republicans were basically indistinguishable. I mean, you invoked the shit with the frosting analogy. That no, wasn't mine. You were the first one. No, no, no. I no, said a said cake with confectionaries. And, and you're served a piece of we shit. We need a replay. I said yeah. cake with confectionaries. You're arranging the confectionaries on a piece of shit. No, no, no. I the, took it the confectionaries were on a, a cake versus the shit. Uh, I think that Biden, when it comes to union right. rights, I think he's the cake. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'd go there. If, if he, if the NLRB secures the right for a litigation process for unions to force these companies to come to the table and actually gives teeth to the union movement again, well, he, then they, they have been, it's better than anything that we've seen. I drink your shit shake. I drink it up. With frosting on top of the diarrhea. Before in our life, when a company can, when a company can just, when a company can just cross its arms in front of its chest and go, nuh uh, labor labor unions cannot flourish in this country. Well, that's when this the strike happens. But again, this is still better than anything we've seen before. Uh, that that's not true. In my lifetime, we've we've seen better. Who, <laughs> I mean, which like, president in your lifetime has been better on unions? In my lifetime, Jimmy Carter. I, I uh, strongly uh, disagree. Jimmy Carter? Is that that? 
Jimmy Carter? We got a, a dissenter here, a fact checker. For $5, Parker says, fact check, Biden into the railroad strike after the 2022 midterms, not before. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When's he on the strike? I don't know if uh, that's... I don't know if that's true. Not, not, that not, not that that was a particularly... Not that that was a particularly strong excuse to ask an entire... More retro with the $10, $10 says, oh, what's the frosting? Cream cheese. Cream cheese frosting. Cream cheese frosting. Rail union, but you know. Oh, good, Uncle Gumball. That one will be valuable. Uh, Jimmy Carter destroyed the trucking union. Wait, why can I not find this? Oh, late late November. It looks like yeah. Okay, that would have been after the midterms. My I don't really, I don't really think in my lifetime matters much. When I was a kid, both of my parents were blue collar union laborers, and we lived like rich people. If only they had the uh, privilege of uh, being pro union today, they could see a lot of hope. They, I mean, they were vote blue no matter who. Democrat unionists their whole lives voted the party line campaign. Listen, it's cream cheese okay it's a it's a creamy substance and it's cheesy therefore it's cream cheese and walked the line with other unions based and you know what it got them my parents were lucky to retire that's they were lucky to retire so you they understand did. how you're like making spurious correlations right what? I'm I'm literally people are literally leaving my stream right now because the shit jokes are getting out of control. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've forced me to do. Look at what you've made me do, chat. We're alienating others with our gross humor. Oh. Like because them voting for Democrats did not make the economy worse. Like yes, do, it did. do you think they No, okay, wait, I'm sorry. So w which Republicans could they have voted for that would have made the economy better by their retirement which, date? Which which president destroyed Glass Steagall again? I, no, I'm, I I'm asking my, what, I need, who, I need my which Republicans, request. which Republicans should have won. I, I specifically want to know if you think that they had a worse why, why economic outlook. Me in... Because you are saying that their bad economic outcomes were a product of them yes. voting Democrat, and I want Cyclically. to know. Okay, okay, so I want to know which Republicans winning would have made the economy better. I didn't say that. You're trying to force me into a conclusion. Dude, come on. There was no third party option ever. None of them have ever been viable in any of the elections that you're talking about. None. They haven't even been close. Even if your parents and every other parent in 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 your parents' uh, 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 economic class voted in that direction, it still wouldn't have been enough to be a, to make a third party viable. Third parties are so far from being viable. It would take a genuine political revolution in this country to change that. Even if you were to win an entire uh, demographic, it would still wouldn't make a third party viable. I didn't make. I didn't say the Republicans would have made the economy better. I said the act of voting cyclically for nothing but Democrats, because they're the ones that show up to a labor rally now and again oversaw the same jobs that my mom, the same job that my mom worked and retired on can and and bought houses on the people that work that same job at that same fact houses factory in my hometown yeah. can barely afford the rent on a two bedroom apartment this now. is happening everywhere right now yes yes how is this the democrats because the democrats have done nothing to shore it up okay so what would republicans have done better I d I'm not saying they would have done it better. I'm then, saying that the people that are supposedly the best choice for me. They are the best choice. Presided during their time that they had, which was substantial. Yeah, it's not supposed. Nobody is disagreeing. This is the thing that is so frustrating here. No one is disagreeing that the Democrats fucking suck. It's just that you don't get to choose anything better than the Democrats in the electoral system. The electoral system limits you to two options. And until you move beyond electoral politics, you don't get to choose anything else. That's it. That's all you get. That's all you will ever get. That's all that anyone will ever get as long as you remain in that framework. And even and, and the sad part is even when you start to move out, 
you still only get those options because so many people do not and and will not in the near future have access to a base of power that can insulate them from the effects of these giant motherfucking monsters sitting on the throne of the U.S. democracy. Supposedly, they are. If a bad thing would have happened in both cases, you can't blame the better option for the bad thing that happened if it would have happened anyway. I mean, at that point, you might as well be blaming them for... I mean, you can, and this is an... I'll disagree with Vosh a little bit here. You can, but you have to do so intelligently. It is the fault of the Democrats that, um, that, that shit has gotten worse in this country. It simply is. But that doesn't mean that, that voting for Republicans would have been better. It doesn't mean that voting for a third party would have been a better option. That you're stuck in, you're trapped in the machine with the Democrats. The milking machine is being operated by the Democrats and it's milking you. And if you want to get out of the milking machine, because it's not a nice milking machine, it's a painful and ouchy milking machine, you have to, uh, you have to figure out a different structure. Well, I mean, uh, it just wind? doesn't, it just like provide like there's no push. Oh, with... don't complain about me switching to the milk, milking machine jokes. Everybody's whining about the shit jokes. So I switch to something else and you all start complaining. You can't fucking win. There's no winning. I move to a better analogy and everybody complains at me immediately. Oh. There's not really much of a choice. Like there Israel, isn't a choice where, it, on Israel. Where's our choice? You don't get on, it. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so many issues where there is no choice whatsoever. And we're just supposed to accept that well, election cycle after election cycle. And if we try to change it, I know I'm not no, saying don't the accept moment it. We try to change it. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to. Just go along with it. I'm not it's the saying best don't you can fucking possibly do. I'm not it's saying you have you to do. accept it. There are plenty of things you can do with and regards to advocacy want, and political pressure. I'm saying no, no, no. About, again, no, no. Please, again. Want, this is this is this is this is political engagement. Okay. There okay. are plenty of things that you can do to change the duopoly and change what is politically All acceptable. Right, lay it out from let's lay out the chain. How it's I called the duopoly. everything. Oh my God! I didn't know I could. I could. I didn't know I could pody more with more money. Uh, yeah, you can put more with more money. That's true. I need to upgrade from wine to liqueur. What is it milking from you? It's not cream cheese or milk. I'm not answering that question because all of you are horny enough. Thank you for the $5 more retro. Deeply appreciated. This is where their argument falls apart. Well, let's see it. Other than who you vote for on election day. What is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I miss something? This no. And whatsoever. And we're just supposed to accept that well, election cycle after election cycle. And if we try to change no, it, I know I'm not no, saying don't accept the moment it. We try to change it. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to just go along with it. I'm it's not the saying best don't you fucking possibly do. I'm not it's saying you have to do. accept it. There are plenty of things you can do with and regards to advocacy want, and political pressure. I'm saying, no, 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 about, again, no, no, please. Again, want, this Martian whale says, demon mommy, you seem very knowledgeable in milking. My hands are soft and strong but gentle that's all i can say this is, i want to change the this, is, this, is, this is this is political engagement okay there okay. are plenty of things that you can do to change the duopoly and change what is politically all acceptable right, lay it out from let, it's, lay out the chain how it's i called change the duopoly. everything other than who you vote for on election day what is it uh, advocacy uh pushing funding arguing with media organizations go to, no no hold on Go to local town hall meetings, write letters to your local Congress people, write letters to local people like mayors. Town that is a, that is a thing. Um, letters can be effective. Um, unfortunately, also, sometimes letters uh, just get added to a pile and somewhat ignored. But uh, you want to know what's really hard to ignore? Going in person to your uh, representative's office and actually lobbying them. You can actually do that. It's actually possible for you to do that. And if there's an issue that's of incredible importance, you and your friends can do that and it can actually make a major difference. You can actually go to your local representative's office. They usually have it publicly listed. You can take a piece of paper. You can go and wait in the lobby. You can hand them the piece of paper and say, hey, here's something really important to me. I want you to understand why it's important to me. And if you're in a local area, that can be incredibly impactful. Sometimes some guys are not going to give a shit. There are definitely politicians who get so much lobbying that it doesn't matter to them, but there are a lot who don't.
town commissioners, even like local city planning boards. That can do a surprising amount of good. Hey, in the Parkanon with the tier one sub, thank you very, very much. Deeply appreciate that. Past decade or so, we've seen a recent rise in legitimately progressive politicians. Right now, yes, our government may be broadly pro-Israeli, but America is more pro-Palestine than ever before. And why? Did that just happen out of nowhere? Did that just happen out of the ether? No, it's because people worked and they've been working for longer than any of us have been alive. There have been Palestinian advocates who for decades have had their cries for justice met with deaf ears for decades and only now will people listen and yesterday just yesterday john oliver a really... generally presentable yeah, like media personality presented a fully pro-palestinian take to an audience of millions of people you can do stuff and you know what the consequence of you doing good stuff is that people vote smarter in future primaries and you get better presidential candidates to pick from. Without changing the first past the post system or the way we currently do things on a structural level, it's still always going to be a lesser of two evils deal. Don't you but it doesn't mean you don't we do could, anything. We can save those Palestinians a lot faster if all of those people who say, hey, I want a choice on Israel, were like, I don't know if I'm voting for a Democrat this year. Earn my. Vote. Again, and stop with the fairy time bullshit. If all of no TJ, why'd you do it? He did the face. Oof. These How people somehow magically, Wait, magically coordinated. If some, if, if some, so, listen, in, listen. It, over, over here in reality, well, if some of these people all magically coordinated, if some of these people all magically, if some of these people all magically coordinated, and they all magically? decided Why on a single, on a single. No, magically is a good point here. I think that Vosh maybe could have worded this slightly better, but he's right. It's actually incredibly hard for someone like uh, John Oliver or me or Vosh to directly control our audience's voting habits. We don't have that ability. Even parties don't have that ability. And parties can do a lot more than we can. Controlling people's voting options, convincing a ton of people to, con to engage in a gambit to pressure the president is very difficult and it doesn't tend to work in a system where the stakes are so high most of the people listening to that are legitimately and understandably scared of donald trump they don't want trump to win and so they're unwilling to engage in a gambit that could involve with donald trump winning most people aren't willing to gamble that they would rather gamble on something else wedge Merlin issue a magic wand over if this they shit? all decided on a single wedge issue to shift what? their vote for, on yeah. one wedge issue to another candidate who would have There's to be several. developed and organized and funded and promoted entirely on this wedge issue, they would then have to have more people voting for them than the entire unified Republican Party. Ergo, what you're talking about has never happened, cannot happen. You are talking about fantasy bullshit. So you're not right. happy with how tedious ha reality it, it is. Happens you, every you are cycle. not. Political you are not are made. brave Why do you think politicians for throwing make up your arms in, in the, the air. Hopes of getting people you to vote are for them. not brave for throwing your arms up in the air. More retro with the five dollar super chat says, "Hearing TJ, uh, TJ, uh, amazing atheist." And Paul's ego give up on our real choices makes me look at all my friends who had to flee Florida. They make me want to give up, help flee, and cry. Uh, don't give up. Uh, definitely, if people need to flee, help people flee. Uh, usually, if people are fleeing Florida, it's because they belong to a marginalized group that is being actively persecuted. And you, uh, and if you can flee, uh, you should, because you are not going to be your best politically if you're trying to survive every day of your life under persecution. Um, but don't give up, okay? If you need to cry, it's okay, but don't give up. Uh, uh, amazing Atheist here and Paul's Ego here are engaging in a little bit of frustrating edgelord behavior, and I don't agree with their positions here, as I've stated multiple times. I think they're posturing a lot and not offering a whole lot of opportun a, a, a lot of concrete strategy forward. Uh, I, I just don't think it's realistic. I don't think trying to be like, yeah, let's get John Oliver to convince his audience to all agree uh, to uh, pretend to not vote for Biden when everyone's afraid of Trump. It's just not realistic. It isn't realistic at all. And I, I really wish that, that they would engage more. Don't give up.
ignoring reality and only saying you'll lift a finger off or, or, or lift your ass off the seat if some implausibly impractical, historically like unprecedented shit happens would not, that no political would analyst me. would ever say would happen, but you're like, only for this will I, politics king, get out of my seat and do shit. You're not special. And no, you are. You're special in a class sense. You're more privileged than the people liable to suffer. If this country goes under, I can leave. I'm rich, but there are millions of people in this country who not only don't have that privilege, but they work tirelessly to put the effort in where you think there's no point. Your day it, for work is not is at the election booth. Your day for based. Now this is where I have no disagreements whatsoever with Bosch. This is just based. Work is four years for before. A politician to have to earn the vote of a voter. That's you, not unprecedented. That's literally politics whining that you're not being catered to. You have it better than 90% of the people on this planet. Not talking about me personally being catered to. We're talking about the huge block of people who oppose the genocide yeah. going on in the Gaza Strip and, to be heard. And they're saying, doing yes, and they're the doing work and their lives the their lives will not get any easier if they just they don't will participate. If How those politicians have to spin on that issue to ch uh, to change on that issue in order to secure those votes. You're just you're speaking Which, for them you're that, you're, you're privileged if, you're privileged and arrogant that, and you're angry and you're using them as a shield Trump you're using them as a shield so of course these people would have a huger incentive than ever to you're want hiding to win. behind them the math doesn't change the math doesn't change math for you doesn't change. or That's for right. me Democrats for nobody can't win if unless you people who are against want, the genocide still if you vote for them want the world to get better you do the work between the elections and during the election you make the best choice and then you get your ass back to work you like he's just 100 percent right here he's just he's just 100 percent right here i have nothing i have nothing to detract from what he's saying here he's correct this is the most clear and the most the most in alignment with my positions that Vosh is right here. And also, I do genuinely appreciate the fact that he's willing to point out that basically everyone in this particular situation is in a, a uh, is is acting from a position of a, at least a certain level of privilege. Um, a lot of people aren't. A lot of people in Vosh's audience, a lot of people in my audience right now do not have the privilege that any of the people talking about this have. Even myself, where I am not even, you know, close to as financially stable as Vosh, I am not as close to uh, as socially stable and as well known as deep fat fried people are. I'm a small fry here. And even I am in a relatively privileged position just by the fact that I have a stream where I can if I need help, I can turn on my stream and I can talk to 500 people and say, help, I need help. A lot of people don't have that. So I appreciate him bringing that, bringing that up and also pointing out that a lot of people who, with, who are way less privileged than anyone involved in this conversation do work really, really, really hard. me spend a lot of our time whining online that's our jobs but the difference between you and me is that i don't think i'm special for my abstainiousness from the process that other people have lived and died and bled for trying to build a world comfortable enough that we could be dipshits in a computer chair you can do the work you have to do the work you do not have a right to complain and pretend that you are smarter for keeping your hands off the work well, why, why are you people who are bleeding you? and dying right now and we want to vote for the party that's allowing the it to people happen. who are bleeding and dying right now the most likely people to bleed and die the poorest people in this country those people vote democrat the poorer you are in this country the more likely you are to vote democrat because in spite of the fact that your average american poor or rich is a hard the most the the the, the a significant proportion of people understand if you are poor in this country there is a difference between living under a Democrat and living under a Republican, and you are trampling over that and the work that other people have made, the sacrifices. Do you think, do you think that winning is the hard part of politics? Losing is. Losing is the name of the game. It always has been for every group all the time ever. Most of life is learning yeah. to deal with compromise. Let me uh let me ask you a question. Sure. Damn, that was a that was a absolutely fire fucking response there i gotta say I, I i really don't have much to say to what vosh said there i just wanted to say you know a lot of this conversation 
has been me basically disagreeing with everyone to a certain degree. It's been me critiquing what Amazing Atheist and Paul's ego said. It's been me saying, I don't 100% agree with Vosh in this direction, but I, I just agree with him on this one. More retro with the $2 super chat. Thank you very much. I see what you mean now. Thank you. Uh, another bored person with the $5 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Another bored person says, TJ and Paul are wrong about leverage. You cannot pressure Biden to do X if X hurts his interest more than what Trump will enact. I agree. Um, most people do not have meaningful leverage over the president of the United States. And it is a, uh, a fanciful delusion to think otherwise. We don't have, like, unless you buy into the mythology of American democracy where every single voter matters to the president, the president doesn't know who you are. He doesn't fucking give a shit. Because I think that this is pertinent. You seem very agitated at the idea that publicly, oh boy, vociferously, withholding your vote from a politician can yeah, have a profound TJ. effect on their policy. That's true. Also, one thing I should say before we go any further, I will say that I do think that TJ is engaging in this more constructively than Paul's ego has been. TJ, while I still think that he's making some mistakes in his logic here and in his assumptions, I think that TJ has been much more willing to actually engage with, with, with what Vosh is saying than Paul's ego has so far. Now, um, I, from what I've heard about this debate, I feel like, I think this is the point where it starts to get really spicy and it goes downhill from here. But I will say that um, I, I do think I want to give credit to TJ here because even though I think he's made a lot of mistakes and I've spent a decent amount of time critiquing his positions, I think he's been willing to engage more, a, a lot with Vosh. And I think that's worthy of giving some credit. You're not special. Like, you, you do understand that Biden is less likely to move if Democratic voters act like you, then if he acts like us, and then, then if Democratic voters act like us, right? Well, I advocate for the ruthless harassment of Democratic politicians to get them to demand a ceasefire. And you all announced other you announced your intent to vote for Joe Biden before the election was even over the last time they don't yeah and i will continue to they don't care if you threaten to withhold your vote if vote if, yes, if, if, if voter they retention or sorry with uh if, if voter abstainiousness was something that motivated them to change their behavior the fact that this country is like 60 percent participatory in our federal elections it's, would it's have abysmal. been enough to make a difference at this point that what matters to them is which political block is most likely to respond to positive messaging when it comes to voting to us so when leftists continuously signal that we are the pickiest mother in the world and we will act against our own interests to uh, throw our hands up, to not vote, they're going to shift more with the moderates. The reason why the Democratic platform shifted to the left after Bernie Sanders normalized that shift left was because Bernie Sanders proved that there was an active, mobilized, young, left-leaning contingent of voters in this country. He proved the existence of a voting bloc that the senile in Washington didn't know about before. They didn't care about them. We need to prove that block still exists. We can be rowdy. We can argue. We can threaten. Kildre says, I'm getting really bad deja vu. I feel like it's because electoralism debates are literally identical all the time in perpetuity, but I feel like we've watched you cover identical debates like this in the past. I have, and I will continue to do so, and we will continue to get deja vu, and I'm very sorry for those of you who get deja vu from having seen me do it, but there are new people in my audience who need to hear my particular perspective because I think it's valuable. I don't have as big of an audience as Bosch. I don't have as big of an audience as Amazing Atheist. I don't have as big of an audience as Paul's ego. I don't have as big of an army as the Harkonnens, and I don't have as much influence on the Lansrad as the Atreides, but what I do have is desert power. No, I'm just kidding. What I have is imp power. What I have is the fact that um, my imps are particularly well-informed. I think that they're particularly good at making good arguments. And I think that us being right and us choosing to engage in politics in a way that's more impactful will make a difference. I genuinely believe that a lot of people who get involved in politics waste all their time on nothing. They get nothing back for it. If I can convince even a handful of people to engage with, with politics in a way that actually affects the world, if I can convince people to go do anything, something to help a real human being instead of um, uh, spinning in a hamster wheel 
of of uh, deliberately designed uh, time weight time sinks. You know, electoral time sinks. I feel like I've won. That was a rant, but yeah, sorry. A wide variety of things, but my job isn't to posture, and I'm not good at theater, so the math stays the same with me. Now I don't. True, Jesse. I guess it is a banger, isn't it? I don't have an issue with people who want to reserve the vote right now. What I have an issue with is the idea that abstentiousness from this process, a lack of participation, or 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 willful like disregarding of reality with regards to who we're going to get at the end of election day these things bother me because there is hope i'm not pitching hopelessness i hope constantly for the work of the people who do stuff in between the elections i just don't like the the idea that the the, the day to take a stand from work to complacency whether you're doing something or not is at that voting booth because i don't think that i think that it's a marginal part of uh of, of political activism <clears throat> So yeah, you don't think uh, so you think that Democrats don't care about losing, but you also think that fascism is inevitable if Trump wins. So how does that track? What's how does it track that Democrats wouldn't care about losing when our democracy hangs in the balance? I think that like, isn't this the best time possible? Alora with the five dollars says electoralism debate reacts will continue until the morale improves. Oh, you're kind of right. Oh, it's kind of true. Thank you very much. To extract concessions from the Democratic Party well, when they're so under threat. Because the incentives and motivations the Dems face are a lot more. Martian Whale says, nothing says celebrating Thanksgiving like watching Demon Mama review a debate where Vosh bodies the deep fat fried podcast. Happy to serve. Complicated than we give them credit for. One of the reasons why they're so tepid. And like that's going around, the complications. <laughs> One of the reasons they're so tepid on the Israel thing, one of the reasons why their messaging has been inconsistent and shifting is because, for example, um, Israel has a heavy degree of corporate and political coordination, both with local police departments and- with so Sophie, with the tier one sub, thank you so much. I've been enjoying your recent streams. Also, thank you for covering issues like Palestine in such a compassionate way. You're very welcome. Uh, that's that's the way I want to, con want to do things. That's the way I want to cover them to the best of my ability. Welcome with our military defense contractors, meaning that no matter how powerful the Dems are, it actually is p pretty politically risky as a president to call for a ceasefire. Still think he should, mind you, but they're, they're, they're not being a, a abstinent on this issue because they're like willfully negligent or evil. Now there are people who are drinking the Kool-Aid pretty hard, Fetterman being a good example of them, and there were the Democrats who voted to censure Rashida Tlaib. So like, I'm not arguing that they're all like unwillful participants with their hands bound. Drops a lot in YouTube chat says deep fat fried are advocates for creating a new party, not just voting any third party ad nauseum. They haven't said that in this debate. It's possible they could believe that, but in this debate, they have not said that. They have not advocated for creating a new party. What I'm saying is we have to acknowledge that there's more at stake here than just whether or not like the voters or, or sorry, the, the Dems hate their voters. You know, we, we, we even the majority of Republicans in. support a ceasefire yeah. as of the last polling Wait, I did saw. they mention yeah it? no it's... i didn't hear that if they did then i missed it they haven't said it very much if so i did not hear them say that maybe i could be wrong i'm open to being corrected on that it's a huge so... wedge and we have to be really we can be really good about this wedge too we can be really really effective in trying to drive the dems left and at the moment we're winning we are more pro-palestinian than we ever have been in all of human history well so human history it's only a hundred years since the conflict began American voters have never been this pro-Palestinian. The fact that half of Republican voters are going for that in Coconuts Julius with the tier two sub, thank you so much, means the world. This show is viewer supported, so your donations mean the world to me. And also, if you're watching this right now and having a good time, press like down below. Do you think, do you think that a vote for Joe Biden is a pro-Palestinian vote? I mean, compared to Donald Trump, I think it's a less anti-Palestinian so? vote. Yeah, I, I, Trump has, has said stuff that leads me to believe he would be much more uh, hawkish. I mean, does, the, isn't the action... Yeah, I don't think Trump's really, going to have any good policies on that. I don't think he is personally. either, but it, I, I, don't, I don't see how you could possibly call a vote for Joe Biden. I, mean, a I, don't, think there is a, I don't think there's a pro-Palestinian vote here. There I mean, isn't, and, no, that's, I, and that's I, part I of the problem. One. There are two anti-Palestinian candidates, though I do think one of them is meaningfully worse than the other. I just think it's the Palestinian thing, like I said, this is a tough time. I, mean, I don't know how meaningful it is, but uh, I'll agree there is maybe some, some difference. I agree that it's not super meaningful. 
Furthermore, ASMR says, this is only the second time I've ever listened to you, and the first time was just a travel video, and you've already inspired me. Thank you. Happy to be able to. I hope you enjoy my other stuff. Very happy to have, happy to have an ASMR artist in here, but also um, uh, happy to have someone who's been enjoying my work. I'm happy to have inspired you. Like, this is an issue where there seems to be a pretty strong bipartisan consensus to be, like, ghoulish on, on, on this specific matter. I just, um, I, I, I think Against that, the world, the American people, by the way. Yeah, no, for sure. And and that's, I think that's largely a corporate thing. I think that's because for decades, politicians have weaponized disingenuous accusations of anti-Semitism as a way of shutting up political uh -huh. opponents, not because they care about Jews, but... Beast to do with the incredibly generous five gifted tier one subs. Here's to the Vushlings reminding Paul how much Vosh handed him his ass for another two years. Shouldn't have showed his hand by complaining about that true true thank you rather because in the legacy of the holocaust people still understand fundamentally that anti-semitism is a big no-no in a way that we haven't really done with other kinds of racial or ethnic bigotry because we tend to codify those and anti-semitism gets called out for what it is or sometimes what it isn't so there's a lot of like social um agree there but the left is leading the charge on the right end of this issue right and there are meaningful consequences to that the white house is buckling under pressure we know that staffers have admitted to it anonymously when talking to the news like there Doesn't are people that support quitting... our position of withholding your boisterous immediate support for candidates and, uh, and extracting concessions by being loud and unapologetic about your opposition to their genocide b Sidhu says with the gifted tier one sub notice i said voochlings because imps only raid with love. True. I'd, I'm totally that, okay with you guys with everyone. Why don't you? Loud. Then why don't you do it? Because you have been openly just not only saying that you plan to vote for Biden no matter what, but encouraging your fan base to do it too, which kind of doesn't give you a whole lot of leverage when it comes to. It definitely dumbs down the leverage, don't you think? I think that. Um... I think that the opposite doesn't give any leverage either, because as I said before, that would just incentivize Democrats to go after a moderate voting base. I mean, I, your, I, your, your, your voice is reaching the halls of power where you were just at the White House, I weren't you? I advocate for harsh criticism and pushback, but at the end of the day, I think the best way to advocate for that in my particular position is to refer to the voting interests of others as I a just general don't. Point. I just don't see what the incentive to give a shit about the harsh, I mean, like, If, if we just. Wait, his... did Vosh go to the White House? Uh, no, but he got to talk to Ro Khanna. Um, wasn't the White House thing canceled? I think the White House thing did get canceled, but he did get to speak with Ro Khanna overlooking the White House. So, yeah. His lack of, his molasses-like lack of mobility on this issue. Yeah, I think that was Vosh's end with no sound. I didn't mute it. Yeah, they all said it was muted. If that he's that he looks at popular creators like yourself that are basically saying what TJ just said. Unless oh, yeah, Biden, Biden, Biden's Biden's whole, not watching Vosh. So. Biden, no, I'm, but I'm saying <laughs> sure like, the I've people, seen a picture the, of it. The people <laughs> that handle Biden, <laughs> the advisors and the speech writers and the wait, policy. Okay. People are saying thanks to Hassan, but I don't understand that. How is it Hassan? How is it Hassan's? thing like is Va was Vosh going there with Hassan or something I've heard people say that but uh I don't know how it worked out I don't know why people are saying it's Hassan because I mean don't Vosh and Hassan don't even get along do they so how is it I don't know whatever Wonks, they are watching Vosh. Look. They're not only watching Vosh, they're watching Hassan, they're watching Destiny. Oh, they're... Gay Fesh says Hassan's recent comments got the White House to look further into the guest list and decide to cancel on Vosh and Destiny because of that. Oof. Watching social media trends where this type of okay, shit is rampant. That ramp makes sense. That makes sense. Biden 2024, baby, before the presidency is two days old. That doesn't really engender you a whole lot of leverage when times like this pop up. The impression that I've gotten from the data that I've looked at and the tendencies in the halls of power seem to be that threatening to withhold votes does basically nothing. It does not encourage the Dems to go further left. -leaning. You just, just said. So, oh, oh. so it just helps them write us off. However, 
there are good reasons to pressure them and there are things that they can be incentivized with that aren't us directly threatening what are you pressuring them you don't what do you think democrats are threatened by like people withholding votes from them like that doesn't make sense politicians i want you to explain almost more than anything else is people to vote for them Vosh, please explain to me how you're pressuring them. Specifically, people on the left withholding votes. The Democrats. Well, I'm not talking about just the left. I'm talking about a broader movement of I, America. I know, but I am on the left. And the, sure. the, the tendency to reject the bipartisan framework can be justified differently depending on where you are in the political spectrum. If there are moderates who are withholding from the electoral process because they feel like there's no real difference no matter who wins, that's a different issue than whatever than, than this than this specific dynamic this engagement i think ultimately there are two main things to threaten with okay one is as a progressive issue becomes more popular the more legitimate the threat becomes that democrats being bad in it will lose moderate voters this has been how we've won most of the positive shifts in the dems over the past few decades not by arguing people on the left want it who cares what the left wants a bunch of college students degenerates and sodomites no what they care about is, does the median voter care? And the median voter, by default, this person doesn't exist, but we can extrapolate. If that person doesn't care at all, whatever. But if they can be made to care, like, for example, with gay or trans rights being made a majority issue rather than a marginal issue, then suddenly it becomes politically popular. Notice how Hillary Clinton went from thinking marriage is between a man and a woman to thinking that gay marriage is acceptable and Obama as well. Like that, that marker, that was the 50% marker. As soon as the median voter cares, that's what the Dems care about. That's what I threaten with. Your position on this, Well, I by scream, that standard, they should have already flipped on Israel. It's only been a month. I genuinely think something's going to happen soon. Because <laughs> it's only been a I think there are confounding factors that Vosh isn't considering here. Um, like, for example, and I'll, I think it's funny that Deep Fat, Fat Fried isn't bringing up um, climate change or, uh, or Medicare for all or any of these other issues that poll really high with the median voter, but the Democrats still don't accept them. But honestly, that's a failure on their part. Va they could have gotten Vosh really hard here by being like, well, then why doesn't the Democratic Party accept Medicare for all? Why doesn't the Democratic Party uh, accept, uh, you know, they got it. They, they kind of called the, 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 the Palestine issue, except, again, it's only been a month. They could have gotten him on another longstanding issue. There are confounding factors where I don't think that Vosh's argument is true. Um, I think that the Democratic Party is reluctant to change, and they're but they're specifically reluctant to change on things that they think will affect their income, because the party is still ultimately a money machine. Because we live in capitalism, they need money to operate, they need money to keep going, they need money to pay all their staffers, all their executives, they need money to pay all of their candidates. It's all money, 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 money all the way through. So they never they they will ignore the will of the people when it's in their moneyed interests month of the most brutal bombing campaign in modern history keep in mind we're talking more about bombs, a paradigm more bombs dropped in the first day of this war we're than talking... we dropped in the first year on afghanistan i know that we're, we're talking... talking about like a 10 mile wide strip of land I... the devastation is utterly unreal it's only been a month i know that yes it's not even something we're, we're that talking... you can say dude. about an unprecedented paradigm shift on one of the most like untouchable geopolitical issues in the past half century of american politics for in the space of a single month to go from that being like an untouched issue to there being mass protests and popularity for democrats plummeting even with moderates that can take some time I could be wrong. It's possible they don't respond well to this pressure. And that also wouldn't surprise me because, again, there's a lot of, like, corpo shit involved here. But I do think there's still a possibility that there is a move here. And also, the other big thing we threaten them with is the popularity of the issues they push for. I do agree that, on average, like, politicians want to get voted in. Like, you know, that's kind of their thing even if they sure. don't necessarily seek the far left as a stable voting base. And as a consequence... Yeah, probably that, not a great one to go for. Yeah, they're looking to edge in things that are popular. The more popular certain things are, the more comfortable they'll be supporting them, even if there's opposition. A good example of this would be climate change issues. Climate change has been a known issue for well over half a century, but only in the past few decades has the popular understanding of climate change gotten to a point where Democrats, who have always... Not always, but for a while now, known about the issue and kind of, eh, you know, teeter-tattered at the edge of it, but not really committed to it. Now, Joe Biden 
he's not perfect at it, but the shift in rhetoric from now to even like early Obama or, or hell, late Clinton, massive. And a lot of that is just because they know it's popular enough that they can get away with it in spite of the potential corporate harm. So that's Let's cancel the big pipeline and then make a bunch of little pipelines, Jack. That's, that, that, that isn't the win that I, you know, you're, you're selling here you, to me. Can you engage with the, what I've said terrible, and terrible. not with I'm engaging with what potential you said. counter example. I don't care what argument. the rhetoric from Biden is the rhetoric in the lead up to this, when he was trying to convince people to vote for his old decrepit, warmongering racist ass was I'm going to get you $15 minimum wage. I'm going to get you a you, $15 you can, your, minimum your, wage. Your indignant you betrayal at him not fulfilling every campaign promise like every other politician ever means nothing to me. His I, rhetoric I don't know and his I don't know. policies have been better on climate than were in the past. The I don't rhetoric... know what's worse, my, indig my indignant betrayal or your <laughs> placid acceptance so that no listen this fucking... is this is you this is this is the child tossing their dinner out of the off the table yeah, i am not i am not You've done accepting that one no no i am not accepting I'm anything not a fucking child when kid. i state the fact you beverly hills that biden's piece of shit rhetoric Dude, don't, don't and policies child, you oh boy oh boy here we go wait be less emotional okay we're i've all, done no i've we're done more here, fucking right? i've done more Stand up labor than your lily white Beverly Hills ass has ever done. Don't call me a child on my show. Okay, then, like <laughs> an adult, yourself. listen to what I have to say. I will right? as soon as you it agree to not... stop being a shit. Can you show me then? I need, listen, okay? I la like a child myself, I lack object permanence, so I need to witness you not act like one for five seconds while I talk. All right? Woo! You can say it's acceptance, oh! it's reality. The rhetoric and the oh, policy the have gotten better, and it's a product of public acceptance. You providing examples of Biden doing bad things or saying that rhetoric itself isn't enough, these are not meaningful counterarguments. okay? Things have gotten better. I'm, I'm arguing for hope. I'm arguing for a process that makes things You got a weird happen. way of arguing for hope. Life is suffering, and you just got to accept it and suck it up because that's just the way it is, Jack. Man, and now we have that's, weak a, that's some real thin gruel hope you've got there that you're selling and now we have weekends now now we get to enjoy the... yeah for how no, no do we really though yes. see you haven't held a f nine to five before i know i don't know what a weekend was saturday was just a day of the week to me when i worked my f jobs yeah and that's so rough. You, like, it's, what, it's you, a shame you've you you turned your back on the, the proletarian interest now we have turned my back on it because i f started my own business go f yourself okay bitch. do you what? believe that there is oh man this is this is oh man what a what a very what an incredibly goofy direction to go in value in pushing and suffering for a good political outcome even if it takes a lot of time as every bit of progress we've ever enjoyed has happened before of course absolutely okay so all i'm saying is most of the good things that we enjoy today were not born of some big decisive sweeping rejection of the status quo they were usually but this is like a uh, revolutionary fantasizing it's something that a lot of people fall into when they feel doomer what actually tends to happen is that a bunch of cynical people drop out get injured become alcoholics and die at home whereas the people delusional enough to cling on to hope in spite of all contrary evidence actually make the change people who go in every day no matter how bad it seems and work and work and work and they fight and the cops show up and they bust their union and they 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 they, they shoot their union lead but they keep coming back for more and then eventually one day there's enough public pressure that something happens but that you're process like mother is Teresa, suffering. you know that you essentialized suffering oh my god it's the people that grind their lives away while the boot is on their neck constantly with little to no relief ever better though yeah yeah you, you know lionize that a little more without ever having experienced it we all suffer some of us suffer for a reason uh okay all right <laughs> Got him. I I do think this was a bit a bit of shaky footing from Vosh, but even with shaky footing, Paul Paul's ego was unable to actually take advantage of that. Because I I do think that it kind of contradicts Vosh's general statement to believe in basically revolutionary faith that um as long as you keep showing up, maybe something good will eventually happen, despite evidence to the contrary. Is usually not a position that Vosh will argue for. Vosh tends to be pretty against faith um, as, a, as an invocation. 
I don't think that it's a wholly wrong argument. I do think that like believing in something to that degree uh, can be valuable. Um, but even still, Paul was Paul's ego was unable to to um, to like it, he he was unable to to really capitalize on that. And also, I do think that Vosh's line like we all suffer, but some people suffer for a reason. I mean, that's a pretty fucking good zinger, gotta say. Thank you, Jesus. I think, I think we all is suffer that, for is, a is that too messianic, the idea that we have to work for good political outcomes? Is that too, like, optimistic and hopeful? When, are we, when have we advocated for not working for political outcomes? We're just at, we're, we're talking about tactics here, bro. Are, you, you, seem, you seem, like, really f***ing invested in this idea that me and TJ are advocating for, like, oh, let's just sit around on our asses because nothing matters anyway. I know that's <laughs> the easier thing to argue against. But you're, the fact that you've spent such a profound amount of this appearance on our show tonight misrepresenting our position and arguing tilting against windmills, I don't know. I don't know how how to. I don't think he has. I think that Vosh is pretty directly engaged with the arguments presented. I don't think that's a fair argument against Vosh here. I do think there's been times where Vosh has gone a little bit too hard. Like, I mean, at one point he did say that he he felt like they were arguing to do nothing, um, but abstain from voting. But and and I do think that was a little bit over the line, but not too much. Like I don't think he's been sitting here like grossly mischaracterizing their positions. Most of what they've argued for is simple abstaining. That is most of what their positions have been. Basically, why should I vote for you if you're not going to give me anything? Which is simple abstaining. Tell it. I let me put it explicitly for you. I am not advocating for people to do nothing political. I am not advocating for people to sit around on their hands and do nothing. I'm not even advocating for people not to vote. I know, must be shocking, right? What I'm advocating for is to for, for people like you and I and everybody else to stop focusing so much on re-electing Democrats and to maybe think about the tactics and the power, the little bit of power that we do have within that system. Maybe start using that in a smart way and maybe start. And your conclusion is that the power that we're supposed to use is abstaining from a vote? Dude, talk about just, talk about aiming and completely missing. Aiming at the broad side of a barn. Wow, uh, electoralism is largely a gi giant time sink meant to exhaust us so we don't have time to engage in real politics. And then his conclusion is real politics like abstaining from the vote in order to extract a concession. What? Moving from the cuck chair to the double cuck chair. They're building something else. Now, if that's childlike, my apologies. <laughs> if that's <laughs> fantasy-like, my apologies. If that's too hopeful, my apologies. That's who I am. That's what I hope for. That's what I advocate for. So are, have I cleared up your confusion on my position? Look. In 1920, Lenin wrote a letter addressing and regarding British workers and their relationship to the British Labour Party. He thought the Labour Party was a bourgeois institution uh, full of social democratic cowards that weren't capable of getting the work needed done. But he advocated that people vote for them and engage in their political processes nonetheless. He did this because despite being as much of a hardline revolutionary as anyone could reasonably be called given the fact that he led one uh he believed that there was value in sheltering under legitimate political organizations that were meaningfully better than the alternatives and doing good work within them i disagree with lenin on basically everything he's ever said or done with the exception perhaps of this this is how work is done lenin knew to work with liberals in russia when fighting against the czar mao knew to work with the government when fighting against Japanese colonizers when they invaded. In all points... What about Marx? Marx said that uh, communism could be achieved in America non-violently through voting. I'm not joking. Yeah, Every... Mark, Marx also said that you were only to work with the corporatist parties when <laughs> and the outcome for workers was assured, and you could use them basically as puppets. Yes, and as we've seen... Time and time That's again. That's not what you're advocating there for. Is, you're advocating for voting for our oppressors. The difference between Republicans and Democrats with regards to workers' rights is assured. I'm not arguing for complicity or for acceptance. I'm arguing for the strategic use of the platform and the power available to us to get stuff done. 
every bit of good change that we have ever seen in this country has been a product of this strategy. Yes, Kildare. I'm not arguing for complacency. More I'm arguing less. for its opposite. I'm arguing for intelligent engagement with and deconstruction of these systems. One of these requires that fascists not win. That is a prerequisite. Under fascism, we will be killed. Not we in the broad general sense. I mean me and you. We will not live through that. Assuming that we don't just flee, which I would because I have the money to. There are lots of people watching this who would be killed and couldn't flee. I think that maintaining... Yeah, for, the, for the record, I'm not one of those people. I wish I was rich i can't I, i'm stuck here i'm stuck here so then we then yeah. we have to not shit where we eat then it is very important at the very least to maintain the baseline platform upon which good advocacy can be built if nothing else liberal democracy liberal democracy this is the battlefield socialists most flourish in this is where we make our difference if we are trying to fight within a fascist system the secret police come for us if we're trying to fight within a monarchy the secret police come for us it is only under a liberal democracy that we are given the space necessary to even argue our positions it these these positions take time to I don't like this framing that much, but he's mo he's more or less correct. Uh, I mean, liberal democracies are still, as we have, as as we can see by the fact this conversation is happening at all, liberal democracies are still incredibly hostile in many ways uh, to radical change of any type. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, a monarchy is obviously worse. A fascist dictatorship is obviously worse. Um, I just don't think it's like a, a liberal democracy is is giving uh, space to anybody. It has to be one. In fact, liberal democracies have acted. I mean, I mean, we're talking about the United States, where um, communists and anarchists at various points in history have been actively and openly by the government, as in made illegal or or explicitly uh, persecuted. I mean, McCarthyism was a real thing where. Uh, where there was explicit government policy in place that allowed a crazy guy to just, if you were suspected of communism, uh, to just persecute you, to just ruin your life, uh, because. So it's not it's not like they were given space. It's just easier to fight for under a liberal democracy. That's the only thing I have to add here. Flourish. I'm not asking you guys be happy with the Dems, and I can't force you to vote for anyone. I'm only saying that there is value and meaningful difference in a presidency under Biden versus under Trump. And that's the main thing I want to stress. Not who you vote for, but when you compare, oh, he's a shit versus he's a shit Here's with the like thing. frosted uh, if, cupcakes or whatever. If this, if this were an election that was just like, hey, this, I'm just looking at this in isolation. I'm looking only at this one election. Then I would have to agree with you. I'd have to. I think it's completely rational when there are two candidates and one is a little bit better than the other to vote for the one that's a little bit better if that's all you're looking at in isolation but my problem is down the line my problem is every election that follows because i'm just scared that like right now we're not willing to hold the democrats any standard i'm not just talking about the left here i'm talking about democratic voters across the board anybody who's ever voted for a democrat and i voted for joe biden in 2020 Oh, this? sorry. I thought you could do. Uh, no, I understand. I just don't think upset. If if it if it means threatening that the Republicans win, then I, it's a non-starter. So this is a bit of like an accelerationist position from the Amazing Atheist, and I and I just think that TJ hasn't fully thought this out. Um, and it, and like accelerationism is a giant risky gambit at the best of times. But I don't believe that there is a left infrastructure in place that can uh, uh, prove itself in an accelerationist situation. Um, I'm not saying there aren't circumstances where a type of accelerationism isn't valid. In fact, I think in some circumstances, there are types of accelerationism that um, are is the only option that you have. Um, but I just don't think this is one of them. There is no left infrastructure. The acceleration is only handing a win to the right. That's it. It's just, it's just saying... I mean, previously they weren't making an accelerationist argument. Now he's basically saying America needs the pain of Trump to be able to teach people to not accept the to accept future Bidens. But the reality is that Donald Trump is explicitly positioned to completely demolish the ability for for tons of people to actually have rights and to do permanent damage to the ability for people to have future political enfranchisement. 
It's an incredibly expensive gambit. It's not a, it's not a, and there's nobody there ready to take advantage of it. In an accelerationist situation, the ideal is that the situation gets really bad, which makes a ton of people run to the correct side. But that's not what's going to happen here. What's going to happen here is that you're handing a win at a critical moment to somebody who can lock in their power forever. If Republicans get a second shot, look at what happened last time. Donald Trump taking over got fucked the, the Supreme Court. And we're going to have to deal with that for the rest of our lives. All of us who are here and stuck in America have to deal with a Republican Supreme Court. A not just Republican, a far right Supreme Court, a Christian nationalist Supreme Court for the rest of our lives. Lives. We don't even know how bad that's going to be. So I just think this is a bad argument. I don't think he's thought through the repercussions of this right here. I like we what we're essentially doing is we're arguing but like. We're, we're, what do you mean accelerationism happens at the best of times? No, I said um I said what I meant by that is sorry I should clarify when acceleration like the ideal moment for an accelerationist movement is when you have. Um, is when basically there is a looming, and, and I'm not saying I'm endorsing accel accelerationism here, but the ideal moment for an acceleration movement is when you have a looming threat that needs to be defeated, but people can't realize. And so what you do is you, uh, you, you let a piece of that threat hit the ground so that people see the threat and run into your pre-structured uh, glove. You have a movement that's ready to accept willing volunteers or whatever uh, informed people once they see the threat. That's the like ideal form of accelerationism. It's uh, it's 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 putting the hurt on so that people realize that they need to come join your side. But there is no such thing. There is no mitt to grab them. The left is not organized in any way to take advantage of an accelerationist play like that. So the acceleration would simply be just handing a win to the right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Posadas John. Yep. We are. But my problem is this. My problem. I'm sorry. I wasn't. I was no. just hearing some audio piping in from somewhere. I wasn't sure what's coming from. Um, okay. The the thing is this. I mean, I'm just kind of scared that somewhere down the line, the uh, the Republican Party is going to win. It's going to be, I mean, look how divided the country is now uh, in terms of this vote. So I'm just scared that if it's not this election cycle, it's the next election cycle or the one after that. And they're going to be just as far right as they are right now because no one's ever showed that they need to be anything other than that. And if we can all agree, I think that the Republican Party has moved right. You agree it was a neocon party, if, uh, you know, a few, uh, an election cycle or two ago. Yes. So I, what my, my big fear is just like, you know, we've seen that the Republican Party is moving right. And, you know, the criteria being put forth is that we're just going to vote for Democrats as long as they're to the left of Republicans. So let's say this trend continues. Republican Party moves further and further right. The Democrat Party is free to move further and further right itself because as the they're not, baseline though. moves right, so can they. They're free. It's like the ratchet effect. They're free to move in one direction and there's no pressure to pull them in the other direction. So, but that's, um, that's not happening. They've been moving left like considerably. Um, I, the silent Chloe says, what the hell is a neocon? I've been hearing it a lot and I have no idea what that is. A neocon is a neoconservative. It, it is, um, it's a term that refers to a type of a type of conservative um, that tried to break from the old conservative model. Um, neocons are like um, they tended to be war hawks. They tended to be very prim and proper uh, 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 um, conservatives. A lot of people considered a uh, George Bush, uh, George Bush, a neocon. Um, then, then it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is juxtaposed against, uh, neo libs. A neocon is like George W. Bush. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was exactly saying. Um, they're the type who like, um, they, they mostly focus on, um, a, as far as personally, they mostly focus on business interests and Amer making America a business country and, you know, bringing back the American way of life versus juxtaposed against the, um, the, uh, hyper-Christian 
um, type of conservative that that used to be. They're they are the business focused conservative uh, versus the Bible bread and Bible conservative. Um, in truth, there's not really that much of a difference between the two positions, um, but uh, uh, there is, there's an aesthetic difference and there's a slight different tactical approach. Yeah, they're the they're yes establishment conservatism. Um, a lot of a lot of neocons became never Trumpers because they felt that Donald Trump was a threat to them. Corporate conservatism. Yep, exactly. Um, in. I, I say that they have a little bit less focus on the bread and Bible, but in truth, they still do a lot of that, just not as much. You will see like a, um, a neocon is much more likely to be willing to like work with a bunch of like secular corporations as long as it's for the good of America. Um, whereas traditional conservatism is like, if you're not Christian, get the fuck out. I guess you could maybe argue yeah. on a few fronts. I mean, for in in I mean, this, this is an issue where for, I will invoke complicatedness and say like whether the, the Democrat Party has moved left or right is kind of a complicated issue because I think they've they've moved left on depends some on the and issue. They've moved right on others. Well, it depends on the issue. Like gay marriage, I mean, overall America's and then it depends on, on where you're starting from because if you're starting sure. from Clinton, you could say well maybe they've moved left considerably on a few things. If you're starting from pre Clinton Democrats. You know, you'd have to to say they've moved right on a lot of stuff. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a frame of reference. Economically, yeah. of course, like Roosevelt is to their left. I'm not denying that, but the current shift is towards the left. I don't think that there's like a broad like people are more po uh, polarized now than they have been before. For me, it's like it's 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 like you're on a very narrow cliff edge. You're like you're like shimmying along with your back to the wall, and you're trying not to fall in front of you. And falling mm -hmm. forward is the Republicans, and continuing to shimmy is the Dems. And you would do anything to get out of that situation, but the only thing that works right now is continuing to shimmy. Maybe down the line, the cliff uh, abruptly slopes out, and there's not a big drop. Maybe if you go far enough, the uh, ledge that you're shimmying on is it widens and you can walk normally. There's maybe things can happen in the future. Maybe circumstances change. Like you see like a, a, a rock embedding that you can climb onto and you can like escape the situation altogether. Right now, there's only the ledge and a very long drop. I don't think that nothing can be done while operating within this duopoly. I think that even if we just accept the idea that Democrats have to win because Republicans victory is unthinkable, you can still get a lot of good work done. And I think that we should all be wary that in the the future there might be like a wedge that can be used there might be a point but right now like every trend is pointing towards the strength of the duopoly we can rage against that all we want we can say oh if only people would do this but they're not like we we operate in like if only everyone would just be communist like we we, we operate in probabilistic trends we have to understand what people are likely to do and operate within that because if we do the opposite you know, we're throwing ourselves off the ledge prematurely. If we're, consigned to, if we're consigned to a duopoly, then shouldn't we advocate for the strongest Democrat, the strongest Democrat, the Democratic Party that's the most uh, uh, in line with our values as possible? With well, well I mean, and, and embracing some really there's popular lots of ideas that most Americans agree with. Now, obviously, there are some ideas on the left that most Americans don't agree with, but there's plenty that they do. So why not try to get the Democratic Party to embrace those ideas specifically? Ooh, yeah, primary and why not try to do that by saying, hey, if you... I stubbed my toe. I stubbed my toe on the way back from the bathroom and it hurt. My, my toe hurts now. Huh. If you want my vote, you have to earn it because that's the thing you want the most from me. Well, for sure. You've got to primary them. So the yeah. time to do that is just in the primaries. And then when the general election comes along... No threat there. I'm just yeah. That, no, literally, yes. Forever. That's the that's the point of the primaries. Yeah, that's that's the time. Okay, but there will be no primaries this year. Sorry. Yeah, I just, that's I just, why. I, I don't, I don't think that the the presidential vote, the presidential vote is very uncomplicated and very important. It's like choosing to keep the lights flipped on. Basically, you can do all the electrical work in your garage that you want. You can build whatever you want. You have all the time in the world. But every four years, you have to keep the light switch on. And right. now, this is basically, I agree with this argument. If, if hit, yep, I agree with this. Yep. Now, like the darkness, if we ever allow it to overtake us, might not be fixable. I mean, given enough time, anything is fixable. You know, the Third Reich only lasted, what, 15 years? But it's, I really, really don't think that would be like an effective vehicle for positive change. Yeah. Um, you know, I.
Oh man, 12 years. That's horrifying to think about. I can't, oh my god. Can you just like, I know that a lot of people spend a lot of time drawing comparisons between uh, um, America and Nazi Germany, but can you imagine living, trying to live and survive for 12 years under the Third Reich? Holy shit, horrifying to even think. 12 fucking years. Jesus Christ. Horrible to think about. Just, just nightmarish. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, a little bit more alarmist, but I feel like the woods are burning and we need to immediately intercede in every way that we possibly can. And that doesn't preclude not voting for Democrats. That doesn't preclude not trying third party options. Um, I think everything's on the table because I think that now more than ever, the uh, the the substantive like the most substantive issues in my mind that we face are not being addressed. Climate change is, you know, you you kind of tried to backpat Biden on that, but I don't think he's been great on the environment, despite despite what overtures he might have made. Only said he's been better. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't think better uh, matters right now. It does, I think we need a paradigm shift. The no. Johnny Bravo says, what do you say to the argument that Donald Trump is not smart enough to be a fascist and he wouldn't be competent enough to get his agenda passed? Um, he already did. He already did in so many ways. Um, the fact that he got uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, of uh, Christian nationalists onto the Supreme Court, which are lifetime appointees, shows that uh, you don't have to be that smart to get your agenda through. Um, a lot of Donald Trump's uh, focus... Um, and this is also true, by the way, of the German fascists, um, is focused on, um, basically expediency. Uh, it's, it's doing whatever they can to force through changes that are favorable to them. Um, and in the process, damaging things that were there before that functioned in a different way before that may have been more equitable in a way before. And once they're damaged, it's really hard to get them back. Um, uh, it is true that Donald Trump um that Donald Trump lacks certain um like I don't know cold hard calculation um but that's true of all fascists um you know like uh and he he carries with him a lot of followers who are smart enough to make the plays that he's not smart enough to do Donald Trump is the sort of ideal figurehead for their movement. He has an, a devoted cult of followers. He's incredibly bombastic. He's incredibly chaotic. He's very difficult to counter for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, I just don't buy it. Um, he has a lot of uh, people in his movement that are perfectly intelligent and capable of uh, putting, you know, putting into place fascist politics. They don't need. He doesn't. He personally doesn't have to be a genius. Adolf Hitler wasn't a fucking genius. Uh, Adolf Hitler was a dumbass on a lot of things and also really weird. He was just insanely charismatic and carried with him a whole lot of really, really smart and sinister people. So, yeah. Rakanis with the tier three sub. Oh my God, thank you so much. Just a silly European getting ready for a day of busy work, sending some love to our brimstone mother. I should make some fan art one of these days. Tr tr trans rights. Thank you so much. <gasps> thank you. I love, how you doing? You doing okay? I love you. I'm going to be done as soon as we're done reviewing this thing. I love you. Um, thank you so much, Rakanis. And Taco Face Fart with the $2. Hate seeing streamers I love be mean to each other. I know, generally, but don't worry. I think they'll get over it. Let's continue. Look at what I got. Doe just brought me ice cream and brownies. One brownie and a little bit of ice cream. Ow! Let's continue. No, it doesn't. The other, well, every climate activist in the world would disagree with you. Like, you can check their Well, every, every biologist and uh, geologist and climatologist in the world would disagree with you. No, they, they wouldn't. Band-aids Band -aids aren't... Wait, no, they would. Wait, why would you say that? They would absolutely advocate Trump over... Or uh, Biden over Trump, like 100%. Yeah, like, with, with no, almost no, no exceptions. Uh, they, they might advocate for Biden over Trump with no exceptions. I'm saying they wouldn't agree on like little bit better being meaningful at this I, point uh, well hold, first of all i didn't say that second of all it's not a little bit better trump flat out denies the existence of climate change 
And third of all, I think they would argue that even if things don't go perfectly, it's better for things to be a bit better than it is for them to be not better at all. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really see it from that perspective. Then don't, then don't invoke theirs because, because they do care. Maybe my understanding of the, the seriousness of climate change is incorrect. It is serious, which is why we shouldn't accept worse people being the president on it. I mean, that I've heard with that. The ice cream is, um, Tillamook French vanilla, which is fantastic. Tillamook has, has basically become my favorite ice cream brand. Um, they're just really good. It's a it's a Pacific Northwest brand, and their ice cream is just phenomenal. Um, normally, I I don't love just vanilla ice cream most of the time, but with brownies, it's the best. You just get a, a really good, flavorful vanilla ice cream with brownies, and you can't beat it. Yeah, Tillamook is is fantastic. I feel very lucky that um, I get to have Tillamook ice cream because it's so. It's so much better than all other ice cream brands, and it's also not expensive. Oh my god. Matthew McConaughey. It's the uh, Marionberry pie flavor, and it's really good. Sam is advocating for change now. That's the main thing I've heard when I've, when I've read articles, and they've interviewed people who are really into this issue of climate change. That's they, mainly they what I hear. They have dramatic change now. Yes, like and limiting, and limiting, limiting emissions and trying to stop it from raising two degrees Celsius or, you know, or the catastrophic consequences that, you know, the planet's going to bear. Or, well, I guess humanity. I mean, the planet itself will probably be. Uh, well, I, I, I agree. And they also want Biden to win. A lot, many climate advocates and, and organizations are, or sorry, uh, advocates and organizations are like uh, almost militantly pro-Democrat because the difference between. That would surprise me. And no, like, really, you can look between it like the republicans don't even believe in science like the official perspective from republicans isn't just that climate change isn't real they just flat out do not believe in any federal engagement with science oh, i've, as I've a talked concept. to plenty of them i i know they they say climate change is like so-called climate change and you're like it's not so called <laughs> it's far from it yeah i mean democrats are still a pro-corporate party but at the very least they a conversation can be had with them like there are there are interviews that have been done with like climate scientists or like epa uh, administrative experts who are basically like yeah, the Dems don't do enough. But when I worked under the Trump White House, like if you went to talk to them, they would just flat out like not listen. Like you would talk to them and they go awful. like, yeah, they go like, uh huh, uh huh, and then you just get turned away. And your job was just to sit there collecting a paycheck and desperately trying to keep data as the world ends. Biden's a huge step up from that. I know the bar is low, but again, like that's why we can't hit that low bar. You know, like, the, like the, I, I don't the think bar we is low. Afford, let's not hit it. I don't think we can afford how low the bar has dropped i i we're it, we're in the midst of a we need james cameron and yeah it needs to like there needs to be catastrophic oh another south park reference oh no they really are just stuck in south park brain oh no oh man god damn it cataclysmic change and it needs to happen like 20 years ago we can't fucked. we can't time travel and there's only going to be two presidential candidates in 2024 so we, we do what we can with what we have it's i mean there's going to be more than two presidential candidates in sorry the, the, the final two yeah, viable, viable, viable yeah viable, viable presidential yeah. yeah but i mean let me just see this only like, two in all of america only well, two people on, let me ask you this, though. yeah there's there's, ask you this. there's a lot of so wackos they, that think they're going to be president of course let me just ask you another question here uh you might understand i mean you, you definitely have a better understanding of civics you know stuff like that so um, I just want to ask, so let's say all of America lost its mind, right? Everybody in America lost their mind, and we all just decided, like, we're all going to go vote for Jill Stein, and she wins in a landslide, right? Um, at that point, yes or no, does Jill Stein become president? You mean if she legitimately won the popular vote? Yeah. If she um, won the Electoral College. Well, the, she, the Electoral College, yeah. yeah, I, think, yeah all... I think so. I don't think she'd get very much done, but I, I think that the corporate superstructures that, like, 
that keep the lights on in this country. I, I think they can operate mostly without the president. Like, e even if the so president what, just flat out doesn't Well, my only general. question is, like, how is, it, it how is the case that only well. Democrats and Republicans are viable then if the voters could choose something else? Because that's who people vote for. They're popular because they're popular. It's, 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 it's tautology. So it's all, like, you admit it's, it's just... It's self-reinforcing. Nobody will vote for a third party because they don't want the opposing side to win. Republicans aren't going to vote for a third party because they don't want Democrats to win. Democrats aren't going to vote for a third party because they don't want Republicans to win. And there's way too many people <clears throat> who are already invested in those structures. Is it, it technically possible to convince a ton of people to perhaps jump ship? Yeah, but that's a massive, that's a massive challenge. It's just a massive challenge. And it has not happened ever. It's like an Ouroboros of shit for every eating. It's like a turd for every eating itself. Yeah, it's historical inertia. I mean, that's the case okay. with pretty much all political parties. I, I don't think there's gotcha. like, most of human history. Yeah, yeah, they they root themselves in like they they have like specific um Damn, like corporate relationships and like they're you know name recognition is a big one. Like well, maybe like, that's something we could try to change though. Well, that maybe do see, a little differently. I don't that know. I agree with. I think that like this is one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of independents running Democrat in main elections because i think that in that way you get you benefit from the soapbox but at the same time you can be like yeah and if you want more like out there populist takes you know take take a look i may have missed your uh, dono let me double check on it real quick let me check the dono real quick orthris or orthris dork with the five dollars hey i just found out my sibling is a trans girl i'm trans too and fought tooth and nail to get my parents to accept me i'm very happy for her really it just hurts i idolized her when i was younger too well i hope everything goes very very well for you uh, i can understand feeling pain um to some degree when um when someone um, well, I don't know if they're older or younger, but someone who comes after you doesn't have as hard of a struggle because you had you, you had to struggle that much. But always remember, that just means you made the world a better place. Thank you very much for the for supporting the show and congratulations. And I hope that you'll stay strong and don't let it hurt you too bad, okay? Because um, hopefully she'll watch out for you too. Yeah, you were the trailblazer and that's something to be proud of, even if it hurts sometimes. I, I think you can legitimize it a lot that way. Like that's why Bernie ran as a Dem. Of course, if he ran as an independent back in 2016, he wouldn't have, you know, he wouldn't have come even even right. close because he wouldn't have gone to the debates. He wouldn't have thrown Hillary Clinton to the left. In in, in it was clearly a deliberate choice. I mean, he, he's an independent and he caucuses with the Democrats. It was clearly a deliberate choice. Yeah, I think it's it's like being a leech to the power. Really, I mean, that's what Lenin advocated for. You know, like he distrusted the Labour Party, which I guess he should have, considering what it turned out to be. But like in the meantime, you can go to their meetings show up at their debates, change people's minds. And, you know, that doesn't put you on top immediately, but it makes you a lot healthier than you used to be. It was only 20 years ago that the socialist movement in America was dead and silent. I mean, properly, like the closest thing we had to populist left-leaning activism back in the early 2000s was like the anti-Iraq war protests. And that wasn't leftist. That was just left of center, really. In terms of leftist engagement, it was dead quiet. And now, like, you're, you, you go go into any downtown city street and you are tripping over flyers and pamphlets from local like Antifa or socialist organizers. Like it's crazy. And, and it's happened not just in your lifetime, but like in like modern teenagers lifetimes, like it, it's happening so quickly. I just think we've, we've got some momentum going. We got to keep, we got to keep at it. And a lot of that is like extra electoral engagement. And a lot of that is also the fact that the squad in the Dems, you know, by operating under their wing, taking shelter a little, they can get a lot of uh, messaging out that wouldn't otherwise be heard by so many people. Like like, like AOC and her little um, Insta stories, or Rashida Tlaib censuring probably will open her up in the long run to a lot more positive press than the negative press she's getting now. As a quick pause, I want to thank you all for being here with me. We are currently at seven hours into the stream and we still have 523 viewers. This stream is growing, and that is awesome. And it makes me feel very good. My Throughout this year, which has been a difficult year, this stream has continued to grow all the way through the year. No matter how rough it's gotten, no matter 
all of the challenges we've had this year, the show has continued to grow. And I want to thank you for watching my show and for supporting me. Thanks for being here. Seriously. And if you're watching this as a video and you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe because Demon Mama's channel is rising. This is where it's happening. And I know you want to be in on it. What the heck, Dexmex? What the heck? Dexmex says, I can't believe Demon Mama did a better commentary understanding and explaining both sides of the argument than even Lucy. And I thought Demon Mama was an idiot who hang out with Xander Hall. Well, I, I am. I do hang out with Xander Hall, but I don't think I'm an idiot. Anyway, I'm really happy that you think my commentary is good. I've done my best here. I really do my best. Zan is great. Don't don't hate on Zan. Listen, he's great. Okay. Peaceful Warrior says, uh, it was awesome to see that you had over 700 viewers earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we've been doing really good on that front. Our peaks have been very strong this year. Um, we've had a couple of streams that have that have uh, gone over 1k this year. Um, most of them are still drama, but um, We've been having a lot of other streams that have just been regularly getting higher viewers. The viewer average has grown. What that means is, uh, I don't want to distract on this too much, but what that means is that my core audience is growing. There are more regular imps who will show up and check out all of the cool stuff that I do, and that makes me happy. I think. <laughs> it's entirely possible. I mean, oh, it does. It oh, it raises your profile. I mean, for sure. I mean, having that action. I mean, AOC's profile has been nothing but raised by Republicans attacking her, constantly invoking her. Martian Will says, out of all your friends that are other stre streamers, it seems like Xander Hall might be the person you disagree with least. Um, yeah, there's a couple. Of, I mean, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, mostly because um, Zan doesn't. Zan still does a lot of politics, but da Zan doesn't do as as much politics as he used to. Um, most of his political stuff is, uh, trying to, uh, is trying to introduce a lot of, like, his gaming audience and his normie audience into political concepts. So there's not much that I disagree with him on on that. Constantly. Yeah. It's and a shame she hasn't done jack shit with that profile. Same she hasn't spent that political capital in a meaningful way. I mean, she's but... one of the most popular politicians in the country, and she... Has been popularizing left leaning perspective. Jarrett Lowery says, Would you go on their show? Would I go on Deep Fat Fried? Absolutely. I would love to go on Deep Fat Fried. I've I've talked to TJ Kirk multiple times on my channel. You could actually just search TJ TJ on my channel and you'll find our conversations. Uh I really like TJ and I would love to talk with them. Um we'd probably disagree on certain things, but yeah. Gives on basically every political issue she talks about. But when the chips are down, she gets told how to vote. Yeah, she does get bullied. Yeah. We all saw that vote with the Iron Dome and Pelosi, which is at this I point. I mean, that was devastating. I mean, and that just goes to show you that this hope of getting I mean, I think she's a great advocate, but I don't think she's really all that great of a... Yeah, I mean, I, we don't... Uh, unfortunately, we don't need great State advocates. Person? We need great know. actors. We need people in I mean, We do need great advocates, but we don't need them when they act you don't need yeah. them in the halls of power you no. know it's, it's if she wants to be a cheerleader that's one thing but she's just one congresswoman midst about 400 i mean you know i yeah but there I, have been times i mean you know there was a time when the the, the margin was, was a, razor thin and no, their I, little yeah. enclave could have affected a uh, more change well i'm not oh, i'm not way. a force which, which, i Oh yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, which you were against by the way. Yeah, the, the, the Yeah, because force the vote was fucking stupid. I was not against in, the tactic. I was against the no, issue. No, no, no. I, I, was talking about, I was talking about Vosh. I know, Vosh I was, was voice. Uh, amazing atheists. Again, one another thing I appreciate about TJ is that T, even TJ could acknowledge that force the vote was uh, was a bad idea. I, where I yeah. stand on it. Vosh okay. was vociferously anti force the vote. Yeah, anti, it was, it was uh, fucking terrible. You know, basically, the squad doing what we were told they were going to do. I think it's more anti force the voters, you know, the Jimmy Dore crowd. Um, people weaponize that issue pretty, pretty maliciously. The fact of the matter is, no matter how. Oh yeah, I forgot. Some people don't know what force the vote was. Okay, force the vote was basically a scheme that was cooked up by some people that would uh, take advantage of the um, 
of the very thin margin of uh um of the very thin margin of advantage that the Dems had in the Senate, um, and or no in the House, right? Because um, yeah, because it was Pelosi. Yeah, it was it was a of the House. Um, it was it, the it's slight advantage in the House. Sorry, it's been so long now. Um, they, it would basically take advantage of this very thin margin of advantage the Dems had over the Republicans. And the idea was basically to um, to uh, threaten to not vote in favor of Democratic Party positions, uh, members of the squad, so that they could depose Nancy Pelosi. Um, and uh, the problem, of course, with this is... It's really funny because we've kind of seen that happen with the Republicans. The Republicans have now had their own little force the vote situation, and it's been a giant fucking disaster for them. It's all just been a giant waste of their time and uh, hasn't really accomplished anything. But the force the vote idea was basically to be able to threaten Nancy Pelosi and show that the progressives have some power. But it was a bit of an ill-fated venture. Uh, and the reason be, and they ultimately decided not to do it. And the reason why they decided not to do it is because they realized that it would potentially threaten them and make genuine enemies among people in the, in, uh, in the party that they already have, um, that they had some favorability with. It would basically mark them out as enemies and that they would struggle an uphill battle against their own party for, for the rest of time, essentially. And also that immediately after that, if they didn't want to run into a situation like the Republicans ha have had, where they have 900 votes for Speaker of the House, um, that they would need to, um, they would ultimately end up having to then vote for whoever Nancy Pelosi picked. So it wasn't a very good strategic calculation. Um, and... Uh, yes, people say the, the, the force of the vote was to expose people vo voting against M4A. Yes, but it wasn't a good tactic, and the costs, out, the costs outweighed the benefits. Um, and, of course, the reason why force the vote has become a meme all these years later, because, Jesus Christ, this was in 2021, if I remember correctly? It's almost 2024? Um, people are still talking about it because a section of the online left, the online left, um, basically made it their only thing that they talked about, and they made it, like, almost like a cult of personality. It was around Jimmy Dore and Bad Faith Pod and a handful of others who basically continued to talk about Force the Vote even after the window for Force the Vote passed. And they were basically salty about it for so long that it became a rallying point for a bunch of idiotic grifters who couldn't move on. Um, really pathetic. So. The good thing about Force the Vote is that it would have put Congress on the record for whether they support universal health care. That's true, but that's a major gamble. It's a major gamble. Hey! Happy Thanksgiving! It just ticked over for those of us on the... West Coast, it is now officially Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Let's continue. We got to finish this up. I'm starting to get a little tired, and I got a lot to do tomorrow, so. Good a politician is or may seem, they will make mistakes. Bernie's made mistakes. He's not even calling for a ceasefire right now. If we lowered our margins, if we if we narrowed them only to people with whom we will never take issue, we will I mean, never find... Even FDR had the uh, the internment camps and shit. So. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, yeah. I, get, I tend to be pretty permissive of mistakes made by advocates and allies in positions of power because they're bound by so many invisible chains that we can't see as audience members. Like, a, who the f*** knows what conversation Pelosi had with AOC? Obviously, I would like AOC to have, like, puffed out her chest and gone, like, no, Pelosi, and then, like, slammed the no vote down, which wouldn't have done anything because it was, like, five million to one uh, to yes in favor of the I mean, funding. I'm, but, uh, like, I don't know for an absolute fact, but I'm pretty sure I can give you a, a fairly succinct summation of what that conversation was. Um, probably was, that we would malign you for being anti-Semitic. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, no, it's, it, it was basically this, you're, you're, a, you're a bit of a rising star in the democratic party and that star will fade. If you don't vote with us, you think you're getting any kind of support. You think your profile is just because of your charisma. Okay. I'm sorry to pause here. I know I said, I gotta, we gotta get through this, but wow. 
TJ Kirk and Paul's ego really do sound extremely similar. And having listened to this for now two hours, my God, it can be very difficult to tell them apart. When I was looking away and I thought that was TJ talking, I'm like, this doesn't sound like an argument TJ would make. And I look over and it's not TJ. TJ was literally drinking from a cup. So it, I'm, I, now I'm sure it can't be TJ, but I could have sworn. Your profile is at my behest. You will bow to, to my desires and my whims and you'll vote how I tell you if you care about your career. And she does. I don't think that was exactly what was said to her, but I'll admit that I, I or neither of us <laughs> well, know. Who knows so we can make sure. Yeah, I have no cool. idea. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the big reasons why um, Bernie Sanders was so careful when he ran uh, both in 2016 and 2020. He knows the standards set for him are higher, so he has to be more careful. It's not fair that he has to be more careful, but he was smart and he navigated that environment pretty effectively to the extent that while he was shit on by a lot of people unfairly, he's also generally accepted to be likable. A tribe called Quest says, the squad is supposed to go against the Dem leadership, not be their friends. You missed their point. That's true, but that doesn't mean, okay, um, if, if you are, if you are internal party opposition, um, you don't win any favors, nor do you prolong your time in that position by just like take every single morning going and shitting on the desk of the person that you're, you're opposed against. You have to be strategic with it. It is true that they're not there to be friends, that they are, they do have certain level of competing interests, but they also have shared interests, which means you have to be careful with how you do that. And in my opinion, force the vote was an ill-fated strategy from the very beginning. The wins were very low, um, and the risks were very high. And clearly they agreed. The squad didn't think it was a good call either. And that's not a big betrayal for them to not think it's a good move. It just means they didn't conclude it correctly. Let's continue. Well, like, there was a lot of browbeating from the DNC and a lot of unfair play, but they never succeeded in making him a reviled figure. Not even close. He did too well, he's too likable, he's too much of a crotchety grandpa. So, he, but he, he smartly leveraged that, that image and was able to push his message to so many people. And now there are literally millions of Americans who've been inspired to left-leaning politics based on, like, their, their access, their, their exposure to what he said, you know? I, I, I just, um, literally, I, we're, sorry, we, we have not, to be like the little, the little <laughs> fish that eat the plankton off the big fish, except in this example, one day we become the big fish and then we eat the other big fish. Yeah, well, I don't think that day is coming under the current auspices. It's getting uh, better. Over sapiens, but no one, literally no one has said that, dude. Literally not. I mean, I, not as we've dead. pointed out several times, it's getting better and it's getting worse. In terms of, populist left advocacy in mainstream media it's getting massively better very quickly and in terms of economics it's getting a tribe called quest says you're right they didn't conclude it correctly because they didn't do force the vote i mean that's not a very i mean just i mean yeah that's what happened but i don't I, you're not making an argument as to why they didn't c conclude it correctly your ba your argument is basically that getting getting democrats on the record just knowing where they stand on Medicare for all would have been like a sea change issue that would be worth potentially jeopardizing the squad's positions at all. Um, I don't think that's true. I think the squad is more valuable than finding out which Democrats support Medicare for all, especially given that we know which ones do and don't generally anyway. And the voters, while they like Medicare for all, aren't that motivated towards Medicare for all. It's a vaguely popular policy, but people aren't like, it's not like Israel-Palestine where people are going to be in the streets about it at this point. Anyway, it happened three years ago, so uh, cope. Massively worse, True, very quickly. But that's not a product of the Democrats shifting right and economics. Yeah, and see that you're giving them a huge pass for well, saying that. No, no, it's but it's not. I'm not giving. They provided them a pass. no meaningful pushback and oversaw the undoing of some of the most important legislation i agree but that's not them shifting massively right that's a continuation of the huh? party duopolis bourgeois them interest. deciding them deciding to allow conglomerates and robber barons to come back and uh like completely and utterly obliterating the legal protections that prevented that isn't the, a shift to the right in uh, terms of I thought politics. we're mostly talking Biden's administration but even if we go back no we're talking we're talking about the 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 whole 
output of your very, very well-known and very, very well-worn tactic of vote blue no matter who. I don't of know. lesser of two evils. I, I don't know what these things have to do with one another. It's a fact because of the matter. Because you were just talking well, about how much for... better everything was, but, so, but so, a whole generation of people can't buy a house. So one, again, again, this is, spurious, this is spurious conflation. You would fail out of a college stats course. The economy is getting worse, not only between decisions made in Republican and Democrat administrations, but globally. As a matter of fact, America's weathering it better than most. Basically, every Western European country and most other countries that are even developed enough You know enough why, to have, right? You know why? There are a lot. Okay, if you're if you if you're about to boil down why the global economy is faltering to um, Democrat policy, you're not right. I'm I'm going no. I'm going to boil it down to the absolute uh, inability of Democrats and Republicans <sighs> to steward the economy. Yes, I agree. 2000, because 2008, it's a 2008 was allowed to happen because regulators were asleep at the wheel. And I, both parties, and that's what that's what caused the current global economic downturn that's never recovered from. It's, that's a huge part of it. Yes, absolutely. No, that's 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 the part of it. Yes, that's that, what that's 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 the it, that's it. Yeah, it's yes, it's a huge part of yeah. it. And as you said, it was a product of a shared bourgeois tendency in both parties. Therefore, it's not really relevant to the conversation when talking about Democrats versus Republicans or whether or not Democrats have shifted. Well, it, it is relevant when the position is, shouldn't we expect more from our Democrats? We should always expect more. What I'm talking about well, is... I don't know if you're expecting more if you're going to give them your vote no matter what they we, do. I, we're, we're cycling. We've talked about this. Yeah, we, I, it's, it's going in circles. I don't think that that attitude <laughs> accomplishes anything. I think there's a lot of evidence that my attitude does accomplish things. I think that we've seen... Recently, especially, but broadly over the past few decades, a rise in the prominence of left-leaning voices, both in America broadly and in the Democrats specifically. And I think a lot of that is because of institutional savviness that some of those actors have engaged in specifically. I think that savviness requires compromise and sacrifice because there's no way to be some kind of hard-lined, principled, like super uh, zealous advocate while also being politically effective. You kind of need to draw lines somewhere. And as a consequence of that, some Sometimes they do stuff that disappoints us. I get disappointed too by Bernie now with the ceasefire, by AOC then with the Iron Dome stuff. But well, I'm still I, I mean, heartened. I can hand, look, don't I'm be still, wrong. I'm, I'm not expecting. I'm not expecting perfect politicians here. Their politicians promises will be broken, deals will be made behind closed no doors. No one any politician. I'm not that advocating was, for some like what perfect, expecting? ultimate, wonderful Democrat that's like, oh my God, they're glorious in every way, and they shit gold because that's never been a thing. That's never going to be a thing. Uh, I don't think anybody's advocated for that. Right. Yeah. I'm not expecting the perfect Democrat to come along and just be like this wonderful, magically good candidate. And anyone who falls short of that, I'm not going to vote for. What I do expect is a little bit better than this. This well, isn't good enough. Well, the Democratic Party as it stands right now, not good enough. Needs to be better. The Democratic um, Party or Biden? I don't think that's a reasonable standard because it's been better in the past. Biden he is the be Democratic Party. He's the head of the Democratic Party. Well, sure, but you know, there's hundreds yeah. of federal members of the Democratic Party with regards to just elected officials. There are different sure. people, and you know, the. I, I, I mean, course. I think I think there's value in distinction here. Um, for example, we know that there are probably um, a lot of left-leaning people in the Dems who keep kind of quiet because like most politicians, they see an incentive and in sort of holding the cards close to their chest. They're playing the game. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. The more popular left-leaning perspectives get, the more likely they are to get louder. I, I, it's just a matter of process. We don't disagree that the Biden's not enough. We don't disagree that the Dems need to do better. I just think that this strategy for making them better and for providing better outcomes, in addition to the existential threat the Republicans pose, uh, like is different like we differ on that but i think it's a meaningful difference and i feel like you've consistently tried to equate the dems and the republicans in a way that i find very irresponsible now i i think that the two parties are very similar in geopolitics and in uh, their bourgeois tendencies so economically Economics. yeah economically and foreign policy wise i still think there's a difference i still think biden's better practically ended the drone war so that's cool at least um but again Genocide now he Gaza. just sell, now he just sells those drones to other countries or lends them to other countries to do it. I don't know if he ended the drone war. I think he just abdicated responsibility by giving it to somebody else. Right? Well, we sold weapons previously, but whatever the case is, yeah. like I, I agree yeah. certainly yeah. that there's a, a closer parallel there when it comes to 
preserving the stability of democracy in this country. There's no comparison. And we need that democracy because, again, they will kill us if we lose. Uh, we won't get a chance. Economics, economics are, is social justice. People, uh, people that are LGBTQ are vastly overrepresented in poverty st statistics. The same is true for minorities, immigrants, and migrants. These are all the people that desperately need our help right now. And by allowing these feckless Democrats to sell our fucking, to sell our, what do you mean I keep not engaging? What do you want me to engage with? You keep Give saying, you keep saying in response to me, I literally just said, I don't think Democrats are enough, but now you're saying, well, Democrats aren't enough. I know that. I agree with you. I am proposing a strategy that I think not only works, but has worked, visibly worked in recent times with regards yeah, to making things better. I don't, I don't better. agree I think with the class reductionist shit. I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to conclude that he's a, a total class reductionist, um, though I will say that does sound like class reductionist rhetoric. Um, uh, no, uh, there is not. You cannot simply fold economic issues into general social justice issues. There are things that persist um, uh, even if you uh, settle some economic issues. Um, I mean... There are so many examples of this throughout history uh, that just solving an economic issue doesn't necessarily. I mean, there are like what if you have like a what? So like if we create like Christian communism, you don't think that um, you don't think that like there's going to be an ideological predisposition to discrimination against gay people. Um, obviously, they're not e simply conflatable. But I will ag I will agree that a lot of social justice issues do fold into uh, or are exasperated by um, economic issues. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Yes, a lithium, you're correct. You do need both at the same time. There are meaningful differences we can push for. All I'm advocating for is the right way of doing this. And I also don't think the Republicans can win. Again, they will kill us. They will end democracy. We will not even get another chance. It is like like the, proposing any solution to our problems how, that mean, encourages how Republicans. How do you really believe that is? Well, no, I, I fully believe. It. I think there's a real chance. So you think Trump wins, it's done. Democracy's over. Full stop. There's no, like, there's the no, camps, the I camps mean, fire up. It's very possible I mean, like, what, that what, he doesn't fully I mean, like, succeed. From where I'm sitting, where I'm looking at it, I, I mean, like, am I denying that Trump has those ambitions? See, Obviously. this, this yeah, is well, what I uh, mean by uh, the death of the revolutionary I think he would uh, 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 practicality. I, I don't know. I feel like it's pretty unlikely. Lenin knew to ally with liberals against the fascists in Tsarist Russia. Mao knew to ally with the government against the Japanese. We have to know which the greater evil is. You need to know both which the lesser and greater evil is. In your case specifically, yes. I don't think it's guaranteed. Like, it's not 100%. Nothing is, but well, I think there's a very that? reason. Like, gut I mean, like gut feeling or analytical feeling or whatever you want to want to call it. Trump wins. I think, I think TJ... If this was just a Vosh versus TJ conversation, I think that Vosh and TJ could right, right here in this particular moment, Vosh could basically say, okay, TJ, let's go through issue by issue on Biden and let's see if you're actually correct at, at how close Biden is to Trump. And I think TJ would be willing to acknowledge, okay, uh, maybe I have overstated my case a little bit too much because there are so many issues where Biden just is better than Trump. I'm not going to say that Biden's super great. I think Biden is doing fucking terribly on Israel-Palestine right now. But there are a lot of issues where Biden is way better than Trump. And I think it's pretty easy if you go issue by issue to come to that conclusion. But this is complicated by the fact that this is a, a 2v1 and it's a 2v1 where they uh, they can't really go down that path and don't. Yep. Uh, chances that there's not enough, uh, chances that we're not getting a 2028 election if Trump wins. What's the what's the Bosch forecast there? Total random guess, but I'd say like maybe thirty percent. Thirty percent chance there's okay. no there's no twenty twenty eight election. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I it's, it's a very um, a, I, unqualified I mean, I, yeah. guess, of course. That's the best uh, yeah. I can do. Sure. Yeah. I, well, I, I asked for that. that. I'm not. I'm not going to. It's a ballpark. Fire on it. I I understand. I asked. For Obviously, a there's aspirational kind of in the thing. in the Republican Party to that's make a, that happen. That's, that's a, also that's a far cry from the.
constant fear mongering of like the camps will open on day one and democracy well, I mean, is in over. In fairness, thirty percent is a pretty scary number. Thirty percent is a scary number, but you know, you you want to know what I think? You want to know what my prediction is? More yeah, the I should same. Okay, more of the so what? Same. So more again, this is wealth. And, and here's the bu- here's oh, that's so bullshit. It's not more of the fucking same. Shit sucked under Trump. Trump did so much shit that we're going to be dealing with forever. Like I said, if you just talked about Supreme Court alone, Trump succeeded. Trump was like a Republican wet dream when it came to the fucking Supreme Court. No fucking Republican candidate has had as much of a Supreme Court victory as Trump. Uh, And not only that, but Trump's, Trump's normalization of aggressively using... Um, executive actions out of control. The way that Trump uses executive actions to sow political dissent to cause absolute chaos, to baffle the efforts of um, of his political opponents and some of his supposed political allies alike. Uh, Donald Trump was incredibly aggressive, rapid, and careless on foreign issues. He completely tore up the Iran nuclear deal, which could have been a really serious and major uh, 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 step in the right direction for global uh, uh, global diplomacy. Dude was completely chaotic, and and this guy's just downplaying it. This is just delusion right here. This is just Paul's ego. Just I think he's out of line. I think he's just completely out of line. From this is this is what I mean. This is what I mean by reactionary politics through abstemiousness. You think you're being elevated, smart enough to see the bullshit, like a South Park character. You are um, failing to identify the broadside of a barn. Like every successful socialist movement ever has been able to tell the difference, and every one that ended up dead couldn't. The Stalinists in Germany back during the 1930s couldn't tell the difference between the Nazis and the Social Democrats, the Social Fascists. Which mass graves do you think they were buried in? We can't afford to make these mistakes. We, th- th- this is, it's pivotal. The Republicans are screaming from the top of their lungs what they want to do. There is no equivocacy. They have been calling for the removal of the FBI as an institution. They have, they have been since I was born. What's your point? No, no, they have, no, you are not no. paying attention if you no, think that. No, dude, th- that is so not true. The, 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 that, oh my God, that's so ridiculous. The idea that they were calling for the disbandment of the FBI because they were mad at it because the FBI dared to investigate Trump uh, under Bush is ridiculous. That is just not accurate. He's just, he's not living in reality. Vaguely gesturing, you're waving, oh, uh, I vaguely remember them being that. No, you have no, no idea. I don't vaguely remember No, it. you're va- then you don't, then you. Demex, Demex Bala says, Demon Mama, what do you think that Biden fundamentally does better for every American? Um his approach to labor issues even considering uh uh biden's uh biden's intervention on the rail strike um the fact that joe biden has been willing to show up in person and support the united auto workers um strike is actually a really big deal the fact that he was vocally supportive of the hollywood strikes has been an incredibly that has been beneficial to all americans because it, it 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 has strengthened unions in a way that that no president in recent memory has that's a big deal uh secondly the fact that joe biden has uh stopped and begun to reverse um the damage that donald trump did to the epa the environmental protection agency that alone even if joe biden just didn't do anything even if he just stopped the negative changes that donald trump uh, did against the epa that affects all Americans. Uh, Donald Trump did severe damage to the Environmental Protection Agency to the degree that Americans are now from their own environment in more danger than they have been in uh, in decades. And Joe Biden didn't just st- slow that, but he actually reversed course. So he began to re-empower the EPA, which is actually really important as it turns out. As it turns out, having a body that can counter the power of a bunch of chemical companies that want to dump chemicals into the rivers and into the groundwater um, is actually really, really important. So there's two. Um, yeah, you said for all Americans. I was going to say that that Joe Biden is so much better on trans issues, but I guess that doesn't count for all Americans. So there's just two. Uh, let me think. Um, 
Oh yeah, the fact that the fact that Joe Biden um, actively supports some level of democratic process instead of actively wanting to dismantle it in lieu of Christian nationalism that benefits all Americans, even the ones that think that they want a Christian nation. A uh, uh, Christian nationalist would not be happy or healthy under a Christian nation. They're just too stupid to realize it. There's three. Um, let me think. Uh, is there any else that I want to hit on? Um. Hmm. I think that's pretty good. Oh, Department of Education. Yeah, the fact that he's that the fact that Joe Biden hasn't been dismantling the Department of Education like Donald Trump was um, is a massive improvement. Uh, and once again, uh, that Joe Biden has actively worked to undo the damage that Donald Trump did to the Department of Education is beneficial to all Americans. Um. Donald Trump has been talking about how he wants to deport all communists, socialists, and radical left-wingers in Antifa. Uh, Joe Biden's not doing that. So there's a handful. Trans issues do affect all of us. I agree, but it's a little bit harder when, when the question is, uh, what are the things that Joe Biden has done that immediately affect all people? I do agree that um, laws passed against trans people are ultimately weaponized to remove all people's um, bodily autonomy. But let's be real. Um, when, when Donald Trump banned uh, trans people from the military, it was trans people who were affected by that, not at really anybody else. Uh, it, those That's... That's why they're so discriminatory. So, yeah, anyway, let's continue. Wait, did I, um... Okay, let's continue. Remember yeah, nothing. Remember then your mind on this subject is a void. This is incomparable. This is like you. You think the 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 the, the Patriot Act being passed compares in any way to the protracted multi-year long campaign on every level of the GOP coordinated to delegitimize the election? They did well, an insurrection. The, the 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 creation of unitary executive theory and its application by both parties since George W. Bush is another thing. I, I mean the fact the fact that the president can declare war without congressional approval is a modern okay construct. just again for 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 clarity's sake here okay right now we have a democracy where you can vote and the person you vote for can win the world that he wants to build is one in which every single member of government that is either elected or appointed fundamentally cannot accept a victory from a democrat they were pushing to rewrite state laws and election counting that yes. would allow them to throw out opponents votes Can I ask both they don't even need to do that they a, a question i understand gerrymandering you can't you can't keep a quick you're like you're describing the difference between like stubbing your toe and getting bricked with a hammer as like well they both hit me you have no idea what you're talking about what you're engaging and right now is not enlightened leftist perspective you're engaging in bottom of the barrel south park cartman ass tier zero yeah. iq centrist yeah, right. moderate hasn't learned a thing about politics in their entire life bullshit equivocacy how dare you you claim to care about the legacy of your union parents you would literally preside over a death camp and go well you know, Biden probably would have done this too. Like, it's like, disgusting. What? It's it's senseless. <laughs> if you genuinely fuck, believe bro? that there uh, is a comparison to be made, I beg you to educate yourself because there is none. It is not comparable. I think I think I think that there's a uh, an obvious comparison to be made, and I've brought up the reasons why over and over tonight, and you seem to get more and more frustrated every time I do, but I don't hear an answer to it. You keep saying things are getting so much better. I'm saying while things got better on one hand, they got far worse on another. You're gonna, and you you're seem not to want to divorce that again. You seem to want to divorce your tactic from that problem. When the truth, Vosh, you don't need to is, divorce two things that were never the, the, married. The truth is, I don't have a hazy memory when what it comes when it when it comes to what it was like to live under George W. Bush or Barack Obama. I'm not 12, bro. All right, I was a tax paying only nine to five worker during both of those presidencies. So let's let's be real about this shit. You, okay? you're, you're literally doing the bit too right now. You're like, well, I wore my blue jeans. To yeah, work. Well, you don't know I, shit, dude. You're, you're, well, maybe you're, I remember how, how it went. Yeah, I know. You, that.
you think is people. wise oh, cynicism. Like, you think you're like, wait, 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 Rick Sanchez? You just don't know shit. You do not know. Got this it. is why you keep running back to the same, well, Biden's bad. I know. Great. Tune into my streams. Find out more reasons he's bad. You think you're 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 brave or evocative for pointing out that things have gotten bad. That the you need to write a book worse? like everyone how knows Biden this. Is, how Biden is the worst thing to ever exist and why you should still vote for him. That would be 99 <laughs> percent. Be Hitler, a hot buddy. Take seller. Look, yeah, it, I know. I, the, it's it's fundamentally disqualifying in a is conversation a about politics for you to pretend that there's an equivocacy between previous and current Republican attitudes towards the dissolution of democracy. This is like this is not a this would be like you saying, well, they're both equally bad on climate change when one of them doesn't believe in it, except you did do this, of course, I'm making fun of you. W one of them doesn't believe in it and the other person is just not good enough on it. There's no point in making comparisons. You clearly have a very strong emotional attachment to being a disillusioned, doomer, like cynic who, for whom nothing will ever be good enough. And that's as fine, are, but don't so pretend was, it's politics. As I am, so you shall be, my friend. I, I'll I'm be whipping here around to like... Bazinga. Fake when you give, after freaking out when I called you a when kid you give, isn't when going you, to make hey, people forget about the earlier part. I know, I know that relegating lived experience to some dude with no teeth sitting on his porch going, back in my day, the blacks weren't so uppity or whatever is the easy way to do this. And I also understand that it's the easy way to do this to just go like, oh, you're fucking retarded, bro. Like, I could do that too, Vosh. I, I could sit here and call yet. you a f Yeah, you did. You said I was <laughs> stupid and simplistic and didn't learn anything yeah, I didn't from my say life. The word and, by the way, by my years, civility politics. my absolute, my decades of political advocacy. I didn't learn anything. And I got no idea how nothing worked. You just think because you lived through a bunch of shit, you got a fuzzy memory about. This is the least. This is the least compelling thing that you could possibly do right now. Making a, a making a weird, goofy, annoying voice, and going on a weird rant. Uh, trying to do like a like an impersonation of your opponent it's, oh man it's bad and i know that vosh has dipped into this a couple of times but he's kept it very brief this has been like like 15 straight seconds of impersonation Oof. don't do this at thanksgiving dinner yes exactly don't do this at thanksgiving dinner okay out of curiosity do you genuinely think that being like I don't know what, 45, 40, whatever, means that you have, like, some hidden insight into politics that isn't possessed by people who are merely 30? Like, do you, is that, is that, like, the bar you fall into where you're legitimately doing the, like, well, no matter how wrong I am, at least I have slightly worse knees. Like, what, what, what are you getting at? I'm making, I'm making the position that, uh, people, when you live through something, you might have something to speak to that a person that didn't live through something wouldn't. And I think you'd agree with me on pretty much any other subject, except like if I was a f Hiroshima survivor, you wouldn't be here going like, oh, you think you think you know more about getting a nuke dropped on you just because you had a nuke dropped on you? You know what I mean? This is uh, this is this is this is reaching nostalgia critic tier. Are we? Uh... <laughs> Do you think do you think having do you think having a nuke dropped on you instance. gives you like no, a degree in physics? No, I don't think you would disagree. I don't think you would disagree in that instance. But for some oh, reason, oh no, no, I would happily tell a Hiroshima story. This is so this is so silly too because his argument is just bad. Even if he remembers what George Bush was like and it was bad, it's just there's just so many fronts on which Donald Trump was worse. Donald Trump was everything that George Bush did and worse. Obama was not everything that George Bush did and worse. Obama was some things that George Bush did and some things better. Biden has been some things that George Bush and Trump did, but better on other things. His argument is just, he's just mad. He's triggered now. It's so ridiculous. He's lost in the sauce and he's gone full nostalgia critic. Fiber to their face the facts, that they were wrong. Hold on. Well, hey everybody! Don't you know how dumb it is? If I talk like this, my argument must make sense. Ooh, George Bush wasn't as good was was wasn't as bad as Trump. Look at how dumb you sound. Come on, I understand that the fact that well, I've lived much. I've lived through your uh, stated goals and your vaunted.
uh, uh, bullshit my whole life. Vote, you think vote blue no matter who is some kind of like edge lord bread tube thing that you came up with? Just Mother mad. I lived it. I was you 20 years ago. I canvassed for John Kerry. Okay, I will I say one thing I like about Paul's ego, okay? One thing I like about Paul's ego is how hard he says his B's, okay? When Paul's ego says B, he says, bruh. Bullshit. Bullshit. Bro. 